Mayans MC season one began with a member of the Mayans Motorcycle Clubs Mexico, named Ezekiel Reyes, or EZ, riding down a desolate road along the border. He was wearing a jacket with a word prospect written on the back of it. It meant that he was a new member of the Mayans Motorcycle Club. At a dress shop, the president of the Mayans Motorcycle Clubs Mexico, Bishop, was supervising his club members packaging heroin. After they wrapped the heroin, they hid those packages in wedding dresses. Then, Bishop and a club member were discussing about their new member, Ezekiel, who had killed a corrupt police officer. They heard that the court had reduced his sentence by six years. His club member said that he liked Ezekiel because he was smart. Bishop then asked Ezekiel's brother, Angel Reyes, who was also a member of the Mayans, about where his brother was now. Angel said that Ezekiel was with their father. Turned out, Bishop wanted to ask Ezekiel to join them in their new mission in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Ezekiel was driving past the school he used to attend. When he saw that school, he reflected on his own school days eight years earlier where he was happy and dating a girl named Emily Thomas. After that, he went into the butcher shop that was owned by his father, Philip Reyes. He came to that place to give a package to his father. When he got out of that butcher shop, his brother Angel had arrived and waited for him. Angel asked him to go with him. He promised his father that he would watch over his brother. On their way in, Angel and Ezekiel were talking about the incident that happened to their mother eight years earlier, but it wasn't revealed yet about what happened to their mother. At night, all members of the Mayans were riding down a highway and escorting a truck that carried their drug packages that were kept in the wedding dresses to Las Vegas. But suddenly, two cars approached them and attacked their truck. The Mayans and that gang then got into a gunfight. After a while, the Mayans finally managed to defeat them. Bishop warned those gangsters that those heroin belonged to the Mayans and the cartel they were affiliated with, the Galindo Cartel. He threatened that the Galindo Cartel would kill and behead them if they stole those heroin. But those gangsters weren't afraid of his threat. They even threatened him back by saying that he would kill the members of the Mayans. Bishop then put down his weapon and let those gangsters steal their heroin. While those gangsters were getting the heroin, Ezekiel noticed the tattoo on a gangster's hand. Before leaving, those gangsters shot the tires of the Mayans' motorcycles so they couldn't follow them. After that, the Mayans helped get their fellow crew out of the truck as it caught fire. The next day, Bishop and the Mayans met the boss of the Galindo cartel, Miguel Galindo. They told him that they had been ambushed by a gang, but they didn't know who they were as they came out of nowhere all of a sudden. But Miguel didn't believe them. He suspected that there was a traitor within the Mayans who had a contact with that gang. But Bishop didn't think that his member could be a traitor. Ezekiel then said that he saw a tattoo on a gangster's hand. He remembered that that tattoo said BTT. Bishop told him that BTT was an acronym for the Basetown Tribe, a Simone American street gang that based out of San Bernardino, California. That gang was known to be involved in prostitution and selling marijuana. A club member said that it was impossible that BTT was the one who had ambushed the Mayans. Miguel urged the Mayans to find the perpetrator soon because the Chinese gang would be mad if they found out that they had lost 12 kilograms of heroin. He threatened that if the Mayan didn't find the perpetrator from that Simone American street gang by the next day, he would kill one of their member. After Miguel left that place, Bishop punched Ezekiel in the face. He was mad at him for speaking without his permission. Afterward, the Mayans went down an underground passage that led to a massive tunnel. That tunnel went under the border and led into California, so it was usually used to smuggle heroin from Mexico to California. When they arrived there, a member of the Mayans named Creeper was being examined by a doctor. He was wounded in the gunfight another night. Meanwhile, Angel and some members of the Mayan were going into a clubhouse. When they were about to enter the clubhouse, they told Ezekiel to wait outside. While waiting, Ezekiel saw a boy trying to run away from a vendor after stealing his food, but that vendor managed to capture that boy. When he tried to beat that boy up, Ezekiel suddenly stepped in and paid for the food that the boy stole. That kid's mother, Adelita, saw it and thanked Ezekiel. After that, she left that place with that boy and other young children. The president of the Mayans Motorcycle Clubs, Oakland, Marcus Alvarez, 
came to Mexico to meet Bishop and his fellow crew. Later, a Mayan named Gilly was carrying a black bag. He planned to deliver that bag to somewhere else. Ezekiel was also still outside of the clubhouse. When he prepared to ride with his crew, he suddenly saw his ex-girlfriend, Emily, there. Eight years earlier, Emily visited Ezekiel in the prison. She was upset with him because he didn't respond to her letters. Ezekiel decided to end his relationship with Emily because he didn't think that their relationship had a future. Emily was heartbroken when she heard that. When she left that place, Ezekiel saw a picture that she left on the table. It was a picture of ultrasound that showed that Emily was pregnant. Back to the present time, at the clubhouse, Ezekiel introduced himself as a prospect to Marcus. But Marcus ignored him and ordered him to clean up his motorcycle while all the other club members went into a meeting. During that meeting, a club member asked Angel if Ezekiel really saw the tattoo of the rival gangster. Bishop said that it didn't matter if Ezekiel really saw it or not. The only thing that mattered for them now was that they should get the Samoas or else Miguel would kill one of them. Another club member said that it was not easy to fight against the Samoas, it was like they were entering Tiger Cage. Bishop asked Marcus if they could ask for help from Luth Parker, the leader of S.A. and D.I. Know. Marcus said that they could do that, and they ended their meeting. At Philippe's butcher shop, Philippe gave a package that Ezekiel gave him earlier to a man that visited his shop. Then he received a note that contained an instruction about that night. The next day, the Mayans confronted the Samoas at their base camp in a cemetery. Bishop asked the leader of the Samoas, Afa Lafiti, to return the heroin that he and his gang stole from them another day. He threatened that the Galindo cartel would send all his gangsters to kill the Samoas if they refused to do what he asked. But Afa wasn't afraid of his threat. Apparently, he had had his crew ready. More of the Samoas arrived in that place. The Mayans then pretended to walk away but suddenly they opened fire. A fierce gunfight between the Mayans and the Samoas then happened in that place. With the help of their sniper, Coco, the Mayans managed to defeat most of the Samoas there. Alpha and the remaining Samoas then attempted to leave, but the Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club that was led by Les Parker came to that place and blocked off their escape. After that, Alpha was brought to and interrogated by Miguel. He admitted that he only received text messages and calls from a woman who he didn't know the identity of. That woman gave him some location and ordered him to rob the money and the heroin. Miguel also asked Afa about the black bag that he found in his car. That black bag was the one who was carried by Gilly. Afa swore that he didn't know that that black bag belonged to the Mayans. He said that all he knew about the person who gave him order was that she was a young Hispanic woman. But Miguel refused to accept that answer. He still ordered his subordinate to chop off Afa's arms. After losing his both arms, Afa finally revealed that the rebels were the ones who took their heroin. The rebels were the members of a Mexican vigilant organization named Los Alvedados. Miguel then asked the Mayans to find that young Hispanic woman and take their heroin back. Then he ordered Ezekiel to help get rid of Afa's dead body by wrapping it up with plastic. After that, he said that he had to go to dinner with his family and left that place. Apparently, he was married to Emily. Afterward, Ezekiel went into his father's butcher shop. He met Philippe's customer earlier, Jimenez, in that place. Apparently, Jimenez was a DEA agent who was working with Ezekiel. He asked Ezekiel about what the Mayans did in the Route 111. Ezekiel informed him about everything, but Jimenez said that it wasn't enough. Apparently, Ezekiel had killed a police officer and went to prison, but he made some kind of deal to get out early. The deal was that he became an informant for the DEA. In the tunnel, Angel told Gilly and Coco that his brother knew they were doing something else because he was smart. He then asked them to get his brother involved in their secret activity. At the clubhouse, Taza and Trank informed Bishop that the rebels had carried out several attacks on the Galindo cartel. One of those attacks was robbing the cartel's armory. After Bishop heard that, he became more curious about the people behind that organization. At night, Ezekiel, Angel, and some members of the Mayans went to a desert where they met a bunch of people who were wearing masks. Turned out, those people were the rebels, the members of Los Alvedados that was led by a woman named Adelita.
Ezekiel remembered seeing Adelita earlier. She was the mother of the boy who stole from a vendor. Apparently, the Mayans came to that place to help Adelita and the rebels. Adelita and the rebels had suffered because of the Galindo cartel, so they planned to bring them down. The cartel began to hunt her and the rebels back, but Adelita wasn't afraid as she knew the consequence of her action. At the restaurant, when Emily and her son left, some of Adelita's crew were following them right away. Angel told Ezekiel that he helped Los Alvedados because there was no future with the Galindo cartel and it was the only future for the Mayans. He said that the Mayans were still working with the Galindo cartel because of the relationship between Marcus and Miguel's parents. After Ezekiel heard that, he agreed to get involved in his brother's plan. In another place, the rebels managed to attack Emily and her family. They shot her bodyguard to death and kidnapped her baby. The next day, Angel, Ezekiel, Taza, and Coco were tasked to find a member of Dogwood. They were looking for a man named Louis. They came to his house, but they could only find his son there. At home, Emily urged her husband Miguel to find their son soon. She didn't care about what was going on between her husband and the rebels. She just wanted her son back. Miguel promised her that he would find their son soon. He said that he would ask the Mayans to help them. The Mayans visited an animal shelter that was owned by a beautiful woman named Gracie to find Louie. But it seemed to be more of a shelter for people than animals. Not long after that, Louis showed up at that place. But he ran away from that place immediately when he saw the Mayans there. The Mayans chased him right away and finally managed to capture him. Apparently, the Mayans was looking for Louis because Louis had been selling pornography that featured Coco's sister. After they talked, they eventually came to an agreement. Bishop wanted Louis to pay the Mayans twice the street tax of their drug profits. He also asked him if he knew any Hispanic woman who sold their heroin to them. He told him to inform them soon if he found any information about that Hispanic woman. After they left Louis, it was revealed that the woman who got featured in Louis' pornography was actually not Coco's sister. They only lied to Dogwood to trick them. After that, the Mayans were heading to a place to meet Miguel. Miguel came to that place with his right-hand man, Devant, and the head of security for the Galindo Cardal, Nestor. Miguel told the Mayans about what happened to his son and his wife. He said that his son had been kidnapped by the rebels, and he asked them to help him. Ezekiel was worried when he heard that. He asked Miguel about how Emily was doing, and Miguel said that his wife was doing all right. Before the Mayans left, Nestor told them about the description of the kidnappers and the car that they used, which was a station wagon. Ezekiel, who heard that, whispered to his brother about the location of that station wagon. He was worried about Emily's baby. When Miguel was about to leave, he was shown a video posted by the rebels declaring war on him and his cartel. Afterward, Nestor met Miguel in his office. He informed him that a street vendor was involved in the kidnapping of his son. Miguel then went to see that man and interrogated him. While he was interrogating and torturing that man, the Mayans came to that place. That street vendor admitted that he didn't know anything, so Miguel had his subordinate threw another bucket of hot water into his face. When that thing happened, Ezekiel whispered something to Angel. Miguel saw that and asked him to say it loudly. Ezekiel then said that if Miguel didn't treat those people horribly, then he wouldn't have lost his son. Miguel was angry when he heard that. He wanted to beat Ezekiel, but Bishop stopped him right away. Miguel then took his anger out on the street vendor's son. He ordered his subordinate to torture that poor child in front of all Mayans in that room. Suddenly, Angel said that he received a call from Dogwood. He said that Dogwood had found the station wagon. Bishop then promised Miguel that they would find his son soon, so Miguel didn't have to torture that poor child for nothing. After the Mayans left Miguel, Bishop gave Ezekiel a slap on the back in approval for speaking up against Miguel. Ezekiel was relieved when he heard that because he expected that Bishop would be mad at him again. Not long after that, the security team of Galindo Cartel rushed to the location where the station wagon was reportedly seen. The Mayans panicked when they realized that the Galindo Cartel would attack the animal shelter that was owned by Gracie. Because of that, they chased them right away. At that animal shelter, the Mayans stopped the Galindo cartel from torturing the women there. The Galindo cartel was annoyed by what they were doing to them. So, 
both of them decided to get into a fight. In Miguel's office, Devante informed his boss that the station wagon was dumped by the side of the road and the kidnappers probably had another car ready to take them to Mexico. That old man asked Miguel to focus on his business, but Miguel said that he couldn't do that because his son was very important to him. Then, Devant took a picture of Miguel's brother who died when he was only a baby. He said that he wanted to tell something important to Miguel. Then, Miguel's mother entered that room. She finally told Miguel a story of how his brother died. She said that back then, she and Miguel's father received a call from a colleague. That colleague betrayed them by kidnapping Miguel's brother because he was working with their rival cartel. Sadly, Miguel's brother died because Miguel's father refused to submit to the rival cartel. Miguel's father was really saddened by the death of Miguel's brother. But in three months, Miguel's mother got pregnant again, and Miguel took his dead brother's place as if nothing ever happened. Meanwhile, Adelita and Angel were walking down the street together. Adelita said that Miguel's baby was safe with them. Angel then told her that Emily and Ezekiel were once together, just like how he and her were together right now. But suddenly, they saw people gathering in the center of town. They were shocked when they saw the bodies of two burned food truckers in that place. Apparently, it was a message from the Galindo cartel to Adelita and her gang. After that, Ezekiel returned to his father's butcher shop. Suddenly, Emily came to that place to meet him. Emily asked him to help her with her son, and Ezekiel promised that he wouldn't let anything happen to her son. It seemed that Ezekiel still really cared about her. While Coco was tracking down his mother, he found out that her mother was working as a prostitute. The next day, Adelita and her crew, which mostly consisted of young children, were camping in the mountain. But suddenly, a fleet of Hummers were roaring toward them. Turned out those guys were Nestor and other Galindo subordinates. They came to that place to hunt Adelita down. After Adelita put those children in a safe place, she immediately took her firearm and prepared herself to attack Galindo's subordinates. But turned out, Nestor and his co-workers didn't come to her campsite. They went to another campsite instead. A car that approached her camp turned out to carry Angel and the Mayans. While Nestor was looking around that place, he only found a panada there. He broke that panada and found a skull toy with the name of Christopher written on it. At Adelita's campsite, Ezekiel was carrying Emily's baby. Meanwhile, Angel told Adelita that they had found someone who wanted to buy their heroin. Their buyer was a Chinese man named Jimmy Yen. In another place, the Mayans told Miguel that they would have a meeting with the Chinese at a casino, and they would make sure that their business would be going well. They told him not to worry even though they had lost their heroin. Not long after that, Nestor and other Miguel's subordinates came to that place. Nestor informed Miguel that they had failed to raid the rebels' campsite because they came too late. Because of that, they could only find a skull toy in that place. Nestor then gave that skull toy to Miguel. At home, Emily was watching a new video that was released by the rebels. She became more anxious when she watched it because she hadn't found her son yet. In another place, Philip and the DEA agent Jimenez were having a conversation. Jimenez wanted to make sure that his informant was safe. He asked Felipe to tell Ezekiel to call him soon. In the tunnel, Ezekiel had another flashback of an incident that took place eight years earlier. Back then, he was chasing someone and getting a gunfight with that person. During that gunfight, he accidentally shot a police officer. Back to the present time, Nestor and other members of the Galindo cartel raided a house that was used as a base camp by a group of young men who had been shaking down Hidalgo Square. One of those young men admitted that he didn't know anything. Nestor and his colleagues then took those young men with them. The Mayans were heading to a Native American casino that was managed by Adam. They came to that place to make a heroin deal with the Chinese. Since the Chinese hadn't arrived yet, Bishop and his crew decided to enjoy the casino while waiting for them. Angel was secretly sneaking out of that place and meeting Jimmy Yen. He offered him the six kilograms of heroin that had been stolen by Adelita. Jimmy thought that it was nine kilograms of heroin, but he still wanted to buy it as long as Angel could bring it to him to Las Vegas. At the casino, a visitor harassed Ezekiel by saying that the Mayans were only a bunch of punks. 
Ezekiel ignored him and asked the waitress in Spanish about the man who had harassed him. That waitress told him that he was just a local corrupt police officer who were looking for a bribe. When Ezekiel was leaving, that corrupt police officer tried to provoke him again, but Ezekiel ignored him. At home, Emily told her mother-in-law that she would go to the town square where the two food truckers were burned. She believed that her son was being held captive there. In another place, Nestor brought one of the young men to Miguel. Miguel approached that man and asked him about his name. Then he cut that man's hand and smeared the blood on his face. It was a symbol that that man had been officially accepted as a member of Galindo cartel and had made the sacred vow that he couldn't break. After that, Miguel let that young man go. But turned out, Miguel only did that because he wanted to use that young man and his gang. He wanted them to become his informants. At the casino, the Mayans greeted two corrupt officials who helped the cardal to smuggle drugs into prisons. Those officials joined the Mayans and the Chinese in their meeting. During that meeting, they were discussing about their heroin deal after the rebels stole their heroin. Adelita and her crew came to the town square. Not far from them, Emily and her mother-in-law also arrived in that place. One of the rebels, a girl named Little Moss, approached a boy who was sitting there. Back to the meeting, the Chinese worried about their drug shipments because of the trouble from the rebels, but Bishop reassured them that such incident wouldn't happen again. He also said that the Chinese would get the 12 kilograms of heroin by the end of the week. At the town square, Little Moss asked Adelita to take the boy, Andres, with them because Andres had lost his parents. Turned out, Andres' parents were the two food truckers who were burned alive by the Galindo cartel. At the casino, after the two corrupt officials left the meeting, the Chinese asked the Mayans to share a drink to celebrate their partnership. While they were sharing a drink, Bishop suddenly shot Jimmy in the head. Turned out, Bishop killed him because he knew that Jimmy had been selling his gang's drug for his personal purpose. He said that Jimmy violated the rule and called him a traitor. Afterward, the Mayans found out that the order to kill Jimmy came from Miguel himself. The Chinese was the one who was supposed to kill him, but they ordered Bishop to do the job. Angel, Ezekiel, Gilly, and Coco exchanged glances when they heard that. They were worried if the Mayans and the Galindo cartel also found out about their betrayal. At home, Feleb opened his old tool chest that contained some guns. He checked that chest because he somehow had a feeling that something bad was going to happen. While heading out of the casino, the Mayans saw the corrupt police officer who harassed Ezekiel earlier. Trank asked Bishop to allow Ezekiel to deal with his unfinished business with that police officer. Even though that asshole was a police officer, the Mayans wouldn't get in trouble because that place was considered a tribal land. Ezekiel then walked toward that police officer and punched him right in the face. When he did that, he remembered the time when he killed a police officer in the past. At home, Philip aimed his shotgun at a DEA agent named Santiago Martin, Jimenez Kali, who was following him home. Santiago said that he was watching over Ezekiel, but there was a bigger problem that they needed to worry about. He said that Miguel had sent his men and money to the border and prepared themselves for a war. When Ezekiel returned home, he put some cash that he earned from the clubhouse inside of a bag. Meanwhile, Marcus told Bishop that he suspected that there was a traitor within their gang who had informed the detail of their heroin shipment to the rebels. In another place, after Andres had a dinner with them, Adelita took him to their campsite. Adelita noticed that there were cuts on Andres' hand. At home, Philip covered his sons who were sleeping on the couches with blankets. When the Mayans spent some time together at a brothel, three snipers were spying on the brothel from the top of the nearby hill. They targeted someone in that brothel and shot him. A police officer named Frankie was also having a good time in that brothel. When he left that place, he found the dead body of the victim. Before he came there, the three snipers approached their victim and shot him again until he died. They ran away from that place immediately when they heard the police car siren. The next morning, the mayor of Santa Padre, Antonia, visited the crime scene. Not long after that, the Mayans also arrived in that place. Bishop talked to Antonia and found out that the man who had been killed by the three mysterious snipers were the fifth victim in six months.
Antonia said that the victim was shot from a distance with a high-caliber gun. She also said that the killers were very skilled and had trespassed the Mexico-United States border. Bishop promised Antonia that he would help to find the killers and their network. When the Mayans asked Bishop about the victim, Bishop said that the victim was a Mexican drug smuggler. At the Mayans MC's headquarters, Marcus told Ezekiel that they weren't supposed to allow brothers to join their club because they were afraid that it would destroy the loyalty if there was a problem between them. Then, Angel received a message from Bishop. He told his fellow crew that Bishop ordered them to go to Vicky's brothel. Before they left, they noticed that Coco received a letter from a woman, but Coco refused to tell them about the letter. At the butcher shop, Santiago asked Felipe to tell Ezekiel to call Jimenez soon. The Mayans visited a house where they met a group of people whom Bishop suspected were the killers. While they were talking to that group, Ezekiel saw a man coming out of the house. He remembered that he met that man in the prison. Bishop confronted Elise, the woman in charge of that group, and said that she and her group killed their victims because they were street drug smugglers. Ezekiel told Bishop that the man he recognized from the prison was a shot caller. From his tattoo, he judged that that man looked more like a military officer than a member of Aryan Brotherhood. When that man left, Bishop ordered his fellow crew to follow him right away. At the campsite, Andres tried to use the communication device. But suddenly, Adelita came to that tent and asked what he was doing. Andres said that he was just playing hide and seek. At home, Miguel and Devante were discussing about their plan to move their headquarters to the border. Not long after that, Emily came to that place. She showed her husband some documents that she took from the media, military, and academic websites. Those documents were about how Taliban and ISIS infiltrated the city. Emily said that Los Alvedados was doing the same thing in the border. After she did some research, she found out that Los Alvedados recruited their members by pretending to be vigilants and persuading them by using primitive ways and high technology. She said that the strategy that Los Alvedados used was far much better than the strategy that Devant and Miguel used. All this time, the Galindo cartel had been using fear and power for control. As the result, the public had never liked them. She suggested them to use smarter method and approach to win over the public, such as changing the public's opinion about the rebels and making them look like the villain. She said that that place was a good place to do it. At the campsite, Andres borrowed a phone from a man. He used that phone to record Adelita, who was carrying Emily's baby secretly. In another place, the Mayans and Ellie's group got into a fight. The Mayans wanted to see how good a member of Ellie's group was since he was a former military officer. That man was named Dennis. They ordered Coco to fight against him. At the Mayans' headquarters, Philette gave Santiago's message to Ezekiel. At home, Miguel received the recording video of Adelita that Andres took. He noticed that the nun in that video was a Dominican and a part of a church that the Galindo cartel bankrolled. In a car, Jimenez's superior urged Jimenez to capture the Galindo cartel soon. He ordered him to use Ezekiel to get close to Emily as the strategy. He threatened that he would make Ezekiel go back to the prison if he refused to do it. Before leaving, he informed him about his grandfather. Then Jimenez told Ezekiel about the DEA that ordered him to get close to Emily because Emily was the only way for the Galindo cartel to legitimize their business. He asked him to make Emily be on their side. Ezekiel didn't like that order. He said that he'd rather lose the deal and go back to the prison. At a restaurant, Coco met his mother and his sister, Leticia. Just like her mother, Leticia was also working as a prostitute. But apparently, Leticia was not his sister, but his daughter. Coco didn't want people, especially the Mayans, to find out about this. So he told everyone that Leticia was his sister. Leticia was angry when she found out that Coco was his father. She stormed off and climbed into a truck that was driven by a man. Jimenez visited Felipe at his house and said that he knew that Felipe was not Ezekiel's biological father. Jimenez threatened that he would arrest him for faking his identity and threatening a DEA agent unless he would change Ezekiel's mind to follow their order. At night, the Mayans began to surround the house of Ellie's and her group. While they were about to attack that house, a gunshot suddenly came through the door. 
Angel and Ezekiel chased the shooter immediately while Bishop and the rest of the Mayans went in the house. When they stepped in the living room, they found out that everyone there had been murdered. Angel and Ezekiel finally managed to capture the shooter, Dennis. Dennis said that he shot them because he thought that the Mayans had murdered his family. But he later found out that a man named Cole was the one who did it. He admitted that he and his group had been hunting down illegal immigrants who trespassed the border. But when they killed their fifth victim, that man turned out to be a drug smuggler. Angel killed him immediately when he heard that. Meanwhile, Ezekiel chopped off his finger so he could access his phone. At home, Philippe opened an old box and dug through some old papers and pictures there. One of those papers was a birth certificate of his son. While digging a grave, Ezekiel and Gilly accidentally fell down into a deep tunnel. At the town square, Miguel and Emily attended a festival. They attended that festival as a part of their plan to change the public opinion about the Galindo cartel. But suddenly, the situation in that place became tense after a nun was found dead and the local church was trashed. Emily got in the church, but she was soon trampled by people who rushed to the exit. Miguel quickly rescued her and took her home. Ezekiel rushed to the hospital to visit Emily after he heard that Emily was hospitalized. But when he tried to enter the hospital, Frankie stopped him right away because Miguel and his bodyguards were with Emily. Frankie then helped Ezekiel to arrange a secret meeting with Emily. In that room, Ezekiel seemed very worried about Emily. Emily said that it was her own fault because she got in the church. She told him that the rebels were the ones who murdered the nun in that church. But Ezekiel said that it didn't make sense that the rebels killed a nun because Los Alvedados was also fighting for the convent. Emily then asked him if he received any information about her baby, but Ezekiel said that he didn't know anything. When Ezekiel and Emily left that room, Nestor, who was around, saw them. At home, when Angel woke up from his sleep, he noticed that there was someone in his house. He grabbed his gun immediately and went to investigate. He was surprised when he saw a severed head of Ellie's there. Turned out, Cole was the one who sneaked into his house and brought that severed head. Cole admitted that he killed Ellie's and her entire gang because they knew too much about his illegal drug business. He came to Angel's house to make a private deal with him. Angel told him that he had six kilograms of heroin and Cole agreed to make a deal. Apparently, the Galindo cartel was the one who murdered the nun, but they pretended that the rebels were the ones who committed the murder. Turned out, they had begun to execute their plan to build their reputation and destroy the reputation of their rival, Los Alvedados. While Miguel and Devant were talking about it, Nestor suddenly came and told Miguel that Ezekiel and Emily had talked to each other. In another place, Philip advised Ezekiel to tell everything to Emily. After that, Ezekiel left that place with his motorcycle. While riding away, a car suddenly approached him and told him to follow them. Turned out, those people were Miguel's subordinates. At the butcher shop, Philip closed his shop and grabbed a gun. It seemed that he was planning to do something. At the Mayans' headquarters, Angel told Gilly and Coco that Cole visited him in his house. He told them that Cole was a drug dealer and an ex-Special Forces soldier who had drug trafficking network. Angel said that Cole asked the Mayans for a favor. He asked them to help him to smuggle his Afghan friend to the United States. Cole needed that Afghan man because he was a translator who helped him to run his business. Angel then asked Gilly and Coco to help Cole so they could find their buyer in return. Not long after that, Marcus arrived in that place. Turned out, Miguel's subordinates took Ezekiel to the border to meet Miguel. In that place, Miguel asked Ezekiel if he met his wife at the hospital and Ezekiel didn't deny it. Ezekiel said that he was just worried about Emily. Then, Miguel told Ezekiel about his plan to move his headquarters to that place. He also threatened Ezekiel to stay away from his wife. In another place, Marcus was looking at Adelita's picture. Miguel was the one who sent her picture to him and ordered him to kill her. In the tunnel, Angel tried to calm Ezekiel down. He asked him to be patient and convinced him that they would bring down the Galindo cartel soon. Meanwhile, Adelita was talking to a priest named Father Rodrigo. Father Rodrigo knew that Adelita and her group were not responsible for the murder of the nun, but he was worried if the public believed that they had committed the murder and lost their trust in them.
Adelita said that he didn't have to worry because she had many people who supported her. In another place, Angel told Ezekiel that when Adelita was a child, she saw her entire family being murdered by the Galindo cartel. That was the main reason why Adelita was so persistent to bring down the Galindo cartel. Not long after that, Angel and Ezekiel arrived at a house. They planned to smuggle Cole's Afghan friend through the massive tunnel that went under the Mexico-United States border. But when they entered that house, the Mexican police officers suddenly captured them. The corrupt police commander asked them to give him $100,000 if they wanted to take those illegal immigrants with them. He even threatened to kill all of them if Ezekiel didn't return by the next morning. When Ezekiel left that place, he quickly called Coco and asked him for help. Coco left with his motorcycle immediately when he found out about their situation. Not long after that, Chucky told Bishop that he saw Coco meeting with a young woman another day. But he said that he didn't remember that woman's face. Bishop wondered if the young woman was Adelita, the woman in the picture that Miguel sent to him. Because of that, he sent Trank to follow and watch Coco to find out. At a bar, Philip was talking to his old friend. Philip told that older man that he met his son another day. It wasn't revealed yet about who that older man was and what was his relationship with Philippi. Meanwhile, Ezekiel and Coco went to see Adelita to ask for her help. They asked her to help Angel and Cole's Afghan friend so they could find a buyer who wanted to buy their heroin in return. Coco suggested that they gave some of their heroin to those corrupt police officers because he didn't have $100,000 to give to them. Adelita finally agreed to help them. At the hospital, Devant said that he knew that Emily didn't like him, but he promised that his intention was only to protect the family. Emily told him that Miguel was smart and compassionate, but he could be ruthless, especially after their son was kidnapped. She said that she just wanted her husband to return to his old self. Not long after that, Ezekiel and Adelita arrived at a house where Angel was being held captive by the corrupt Mexican police officers. There were many young people outside of that house. Meanwhile, Trank called Bishop and informed him that he lost Coco in the tunnel. Gilly, who was with Bishop, secretly listened to their conversation. Back to Ezekiel, the Mexican police commander agreed to accept the heroin, but he refused to let Adelita go because she was a fugitive. But suddenly, the rebels entered that place and killed all police officers there. Cole was very pleased when he found out that Angel managed to rescue his friends. To thank him, he would pay him $50,000 for each friend whom he had rescued. Meanwhile, Philip was watching a mother and her two children from his car and taking their picture secretly. At night, Antonia informed Bishop that Miguel ordered her to manipulate the zoning law and fake some documents. She said that Miguel threatened to hurt her if she refused to do what he asked. Bishop promised her that he would protect her and keep her informed. After that, he asked Trank and Taza to watch Coco and Angel. At home, Ezekiel got an unexpected visit from Emily. Emily told him that when he was in the prison, she purposely had an abortion just to hurt him. Because of that, now she felt like her baby being kidnapped was her punishment. Suddenly, Angel came to that place and interrupted them. Emily left immediately and Ezekiel tried to get her, but Angel stopped him right away. Those two brothers then got into a fight. Apparently, the older man who talked to Philip at the bar earlier was Jimenez's father. That night, Philip met Jimenez to tell him about his true story. He said that he was an inspector for the Mexican Federals, and he had done many bad things to bad people. He threatened to do bad thing to Jimenez too if he still messed with his family. At the campsite, Adelita and the rebels were monitoring their operation. They looked at the list of people who had donated to their organization. Meanwhile, Angel, Coco, and Ezekiel were on their way to that place to give Adelita the money that they earned from selling the heroin. Ezekiel was worried if the Galindo cartel eventually found the rebels' campsite, even though they always moved from time to time. Then, Adelita wrote down an address on a paper. She then gave that address to her crew who needed help. When she left, Andres secretly read that address. Not long after that, Angel, Ezekiel, and Coco arrived in that place. After Angel gave the money to Adelita, he asked her to tell him about her plan, especially for the Galindo cartel. 
He said that he needed to know her plan so he could convince his friends and protect his own club. Adelita finally told him that her real name was Luisa Espina. She said that there were thousands of people who pinned their hopes on her. At the Mayans headquarters, Trank informed Bishop that some Mayans were on their way to deliver their package to Las Vegas, and they were accompanied by four bodyguards from the Galindo cartel. Bishop then told him that he wanted them to keep watching Angel and Coco for a few more weeks to make sure that there was no traitor within their club. Trank planned to take Coco to Brawley and introduce him to a man named Benny. At a market, while Adelita and the rebels were shopping, Andres quietly went to the telephone booth and called Miguel. He informed that man about the location of their campsite. Adelita approached a vendor and gave a package to him. When Coco returned to the Mayans' headquarters, he was surprised to see her daughter waiting for him there. Ezekiel and Angel were also surprised to see her because Coco had never told them about her. Since Trank asked Coco to go to Brawley with him, Coco asked Ezekiel to keep an eye on Letitia. After Coco and the others left, Letitia told Ezekiel that she needed help. She showed Ezekiel a dead body of a man in the trunk of the car. She said that she killed that man because he beat her up. Ezekiel said that he would help her to get rid of that man's dead body and any trace of her in that man's truck. In another place, Philip met with Jimenez. Philip told Jimenez that when his wife was pregnant with his baby, Angel, he got out of Mexico. Jimenez apologized to him because he had threatened his family. But he hoped that Ezekiel would play his role to get close to Emily so they could bring down the Galindo cartel soon. Philip said that they couldn't do anything about that because Ezekiel refused to hurt Emily again. In Miguel's office, Nestor informed Miguel that his informant gave him the recent location of Adelita's campsite. Because of that, he suggested them to make a move before they lost Adelita and her crew again. But suddenly, Miguel received a call from Adelita. On the phone, Adelita told him that he needed to give her 7 million pesos if he wanted his son back. Those 7 million pesos should be transferred in cryptocurrency to her digital wallet. Adelita also asked Miguel to come to the border alone at 4 p.m. She said that she would send him the precise location of his son after she received the money. After Adelita hanged up, Miguel ordered his subordinate to prepare the money that Adelita asked because he wanted his son back. He also told Nestor to attack Adelita's campsite and kill everybody there. Ezekiel and Letitia arrived in a location of the abandoned truck. In that place, he had a flashback after he saw a car with a Wildcat sticker. He remembered the time when a car with the same sticker leaving his house. That time, he found his mother lying dead on the ground. Back to the present time, when Ezekiel tried to move the abandoned truck, two men suddenly approached him and accused him of stealing that truck. Ezekiel and those men then got into a fight. When one of those men tried to attack Ezekiel with a crowbar, Letitia suddenly stabbed him with a screwdriver. After that, Ezekiel and Letitia left that place. Ezekiel called Angel and asked him for help. He told his brother that he wanted to get rid of any trace of Letitia in the abandoned truck. But instead, he left his own trace there too. Angel then took Letitia with him while Ezekiel drove a car that Letitia used to keep the man's dead body. Turned out, Letitia stole that car from Coco's mother. Because of that, a police car chased and stopped Ezekiel. When the police officer approached him, Ezekiel suddenly ran away from him. He didn't want the situation to become worse if the police officer found a dead body in the trunk of the car. While driving off, he remembered the time when he was chasing the person who had murdered his mother. But now, he was the one who was being chased by the police officers. He then drove through a field and filled the car with water to get rid of his trace. Meanwhile, Miguel was heading to the Mexico-United States border alone, as instructed by Adelita. At the Mayans' headquarters, Coco thanked Ezekiel for helping his daughter. After that, he met his daughter in the office. He said that he wanted to fix their father-daughter relationship and start everything from the beginning, but Letitia had to stop working as a prostitute. After they left that place, Bishop and Trank asked Chucky about the girl who was with Coco. They asked him if that girl was Adelita. Ezekiel, who was in the restroom, heard their conversation. Chucky told Bishop that he didn't know who the girl was but she was very important to Coco. 
At home, Philip showed Jimenez his old pictures and told him more about his background story. One of those pictures was a picture of him and a man named Espina. Adelita was watching Miguel on the camera. After she heard that Miguel had transferred the money, she directed Miguel to his son. As soon as Miguel reunited with his son, Tavant called Nestor and ordered him to do his job. But suddenly, the security officers asked Miguel to follow them to their office. Emily, Devant, and Miguel's mother were confused when they saw that. In the office, the security officers took Miguel's baby and opened the blanket. Apparently, some drugs had been smuggled inside it. Nestor and the Galindo cartel arrived in a location that Andres gave him. But turned out, Adelita knew that Andres had betrayed her. Andres also lied that he was the son of the two truckers who were burned alive by the Galindo cartel. Little Moss was very disappointed when she found out about that. She pushed Andres off the roof and Andres died instantly because of that. At night after Ezekiel burned the abandoned truck, he told Angel that Bishop had been watching Coco because he suspected that he was the traitor within their club. Adelita and Little Moss were relaxing by the fire. It seemed that Nestor and the Galindo cartel had failed to attack them again. Meanwhile, Miguel stayed in the prison after the security officers found the drugs inside of his son's blanket. While Ezekiel left the mine's headquarters, he noticed that there was a suspicious man who was lingering outside the junkyard. In the meeting room, Angel informed Bishop, Trank, and Taza about the tunnel that he and Gilly found when they chased Dennis a week ago. He said that Gilly fell down into a deep tunnel that was connected to Mexico and Riz's house. He was worried if it would make the situation worse. Bishop appreciated Angel for informing him about this, but he asked him to keep this information from anyone. Then, Angel left the meeting room and received a text message from Angelita. Meanwhile, Angel was still staying in his holding cell in the prison. Angel and Ezekiel drove Angelita to the United States, but they didn't know where they were heading to. While driving off, they were talking about their father. After that, they returned to the Mayans' headquarters. When Angel, Coco, and Gilly were discussing about their plan, Letitia came to that place. Then, the Mayans had a meeting to discuss about Miguel, who was still in the holding cell. Bishop ordered Riz to stay at the headquarters in case they received any information from the Galindo cartel, while the rest of the Mayans would do their business. After the meeting ended, Coco introduced his daughter to the club, including Bishop and Trank, who suspected that Letitia was Adelita. Bishop asked Chucky if Letitia was the girl who was with Coco another day, and Chucky said yes. Bishop felt relieved when he heard that. At home, Philip was surprised to find Adelita there. He asked who Adelita was, but Adelita aimed her gun at him and told him to sit down. Then, Adelita showed him a picture that she got from her father. That picture matched one of Philip's pictures. Adelita told him about her story. She said that she saw the Galindo cartel murdering her entire family. After Philip heard that, he realized that Adelita was the daughter of his friend. Adelita said that she found his address from Angel and Ezekiel, who were working with her. She came to that place because she thought that Philip had betrayed her father by telling the Galindo cartel about his hiding place. Philip told her that he had something to show her. In the office, Jimenez's superior told Jimenez that another agent would be taking charge of his case and he would be moved to San Diego because he had failed his case. He also said that he would arrest Ezekiel and send him back to the prison. Jimenez was surprised when he heard that because it meant that Ezekiel's status as a DEA informant would be revealed. He was worried that the Mayans would kill Ezekiel when they found out about the truth. At home, Philip showed a picture of him, Adelita's father, and their mutual friend to Adelita. He told her that the person who betrayed his father was probably their mutual friend, another man in the picture. Apparently, their mutual friend was Father Rodrigo, Adelita's associate. After Adelita heard that, she apologized to him and left his house. Meanwhile, the Mayans were doing a business deal with the Sons of Anarchy. In the middle of business, Ezekiel suddenly received a call from an unknown number. Turned out, it was Jimenez who called him. Jimenez informed him that his deal was being pulled by his superior. Ezekiel then told him that Miguel was being detained at the border. Before Jimenez hanged up, he warned Ezekiel to be careful because the police were after him.
In the cell, a prisoner harassed Miguel and asked him to hand over his shirt. When Miguel pretended to give him his shirt, he attacked that prisoner right away. Coco took his daughter to see his mother. But when they arrived there, his mother was upset because Leticia stole her car and there was a dead body in the trunk of the car. Then, Coco gave his daughter some money and left that place. But Coco's mother forced Leticia to give the money to her. She told her if she wanted some money, she had to go back working as a prostitute. Leticia was mad because of her grandmother's mistreatment. Then, she rushed to the bathroom and began to smash her head against the toilet. While the Mayans were riding away, a police car suddenly chased and stopped them. The Mayans were worried because they had just purchased illegal weapons. Ezekiel was also worried because he was a fugitive now. If those police officers caught him, then the Mayans would find out that he was a DEA informant. Because of that, Ezekiel decided to taunt the police officers so they would chase him. Meanwhile, Philip was driving somewhere. He took his gun with him. Back to Ezekiel. Unfortunately, the police officers managed to capture and beat him up. At the FBI secret headquarters, Jimenez's superior joined the meeting that was led by Lincoln Potter. But in the middle of the meeting, Jimenez suddenly barged in. He informed Lincoln and other agents in that room that Miguel was being detained at the border. Lincoln and other agents were confused when they heard that because none of them had given an order to arrest Miguel. Lincoln then decided to remove Ezekiel from the most wanted fugitive list. In the border facility, the security officers took Miguel to a room. Apparently, Adelita had been waiting for him there. She said that Miguel's son and family were safe. Then, she began to tell him about her story. She told him that the Galindo cartel had murdered her father, mother, and infant brother. Because of that, she could kill Miguel easily if she wanted to, but she didn't come to that place to kill him. Instead, she wanted to offer him a deal. She showed Miguel the various parts of his enterprise on a laptop live feed. With a single phone call, she managed to destroy his properties in real time. Miguel smiled when he watched that because that enterprise meant nothing to him. Adelita then showed him his other enterprises. She threatened that she could destroy all of them with her command. She knew that the Galindo cartel's biggest rival, the Lobo Sonora cartel, would take its place if Miguel's enterprises got destroyed. Because of that, she couldn't destroy cartel if she only destroyed the cartel in power. So, she needed to work with the Galindo cartel and directed it to the right path. Adelita said that let the evil feed the children and heal them, and let the devil save their future. Miguel quickly replied that he was the devil. Adelita then claimed that the rebels were everywhere. With more than 2,000 members of Los Alvedados, she promised that they would become Miguel's ears, eyes, and biggest weapon. She said that she and her organization only wanted a part of the Galindo cartel's profits that she would use to help those in need. To earn Miguel's trust, she revealed her real identity to him. She told him that her real name was Luisa Espina. Before leaving, she suggested that they included a third party in their business to help keep them honest. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop and the others saw Ezekiel showing up beat up. Bishop said that Ezekiel was smart, but his action earlier was brave and reckless. Turned out there were still eight months left for Ezekiel to become an official member of the Mayans. Then Riz told them that he was going to Vicky's brothel. Bishop, Taza, and Trank began to feel suspicious when they heard that. They remembered about the information that Angel gave them. Not long after that, Leticia came to that place. Just like Ezekiel, she also showed up beat up. She told Coco that she was beaten up by her grandmother. Coco was angry when he heard that. He told Ezekiel and the others to help to clean her up while he rushed to his mother's house. In the border facility, Miguel finally reunited with his son. He and his son were allowed to go now. Emily was very happy when Miguel and their son returned home. In the tunnel, while Riz was trying to smuggle a person, Bishop and some members of the Mayans suddenly came to that place and caught him. Coco finally arrived at his mother's house. Full of rage, he finally decided to kill his own mother by drowning her in the bathwater. Ezekiel returned home, but he didn't find his father there. He only found Philip's box on the table. He checked that box and found some papers and pictures.
At Miguel's house, Emily was surprised when some DEA agents came to that place and arrested Miguel and his subordinates. Ezekiel went through the contents of Philip's box and caught a glimpse of his father's past. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop and the others were hearing Riz's confession. Riz told them that the tunnel was established when his grandfather was still young and Vicky only used that tunnel to help her girls. Bishop said that even though Riz didn't commit any crime, his action could put the club in danger since that tunnel was illegal. Meanwhile, the DEA was raiding Miguel's house. Not only Miguel, they also arrested Emily for not reporting the kidnapping of her baby. Apparently, Philip came to see Father Rodrigo to pay off his debt. They discussed about their old friend, Pedro Espina. Back then, not long after Philip left Mexico and the cartel life, Pedro also wanted to follow him to leave the cartel life. But Father Rodrigo said that it was hard for Pedro to leave the cartel because he was greedy. Philip wondered how the Galindo cartel could finally find Pedro and kill him, his wife, and his youngest son. He said that Pedro's oldest daughter, Adelita, was coming for her because she thought that he was the one who betrayed her father. Father Rodrigo was surprised when he found out that Adelita was Pedro's daughter. Philip suggested him to prepare and protect himself because it was obvious that Adelita would be coming for him. With that information, he considered that his debt to Father Rodrigo fulfilled, and they were even now. Leticia asked Ezekiel to take her to her grandmother's house because her father hadn't come to pick her up. She said that she needed to check on her grandmother because her grandmother did nothing to her and the injuries were all her own work. In the interrogation room, Miguel was surprised when he found out that they arrested his wife too. Lincoln Potter, the assistant U.S. attorney, told him that they arrested Emily for not reporting a kidnapping, which was categorized as a federal crime. At Coco's mother's house, Ezekiel was surprised when he found out that Coco had murdered his own mother. He remembered the time when he found his mother lying dead on the ground. Coco said that he didn't regret anything because killing his mother was the only way to solve his family's problem. Suddenly, Ezekiel received a call from Angel. Angel asked him to tell Coco to come to the Mayans' headquarters soon. Before leaving, Coco asked Ezekiel to keep an eye on his mother's dead body and said that he would bury her at night. In another place, another agent informed Jimenez that Lincoln had arrested Miguel in his house on the order of Department of Justice to clean up the mess in Mexico. Jimenez was worried if Ezekiel's role as their informant would be revealed because of this. In the interrogation room, Lincoln admitted that he had no strong evidence to send Emily and her husband to the prison, but he would do anything to force Emily and Miguel to work with the DEA. After that, he came to another interrogation room to talk to Miguel. Lincoln told Miguel about the RICO case and the story of the real IRA who smuggled weapons with the help of its distributor, the Sons of Anarchy, or the SOA. Back then, Lincoln said that he was forced to let the IRA smuggle the weapons because the Galindo cartel needed those weapons to keep dominating the drug trade in Sonora. Miguel's father was working with the CIA back then. This time, Lincoln wanted Miguel to work with him. He knew that Laws Ovidados had destroyed several parts of Miguel's enterprise and had a plan to destroy his other ones. For that reason, he thought that Laws Ovidados was more dangerous than the cartel, but Miguel could destroy them if they were working together. Miguel rejected his offer right away because he had promised to work with Adelita. At Coco's mother's house, Ezekiel had another flashback about his past. He remembered the time when he found the car of his mother's murderer. After waiting for a while in front of a store, the murderer finally drove off and Ezekiel followed him immediately. Lincoln returned to Emily's interrogation room. He tried to persuade Emily into working with him to stop Miguel. Turned out, Lincoln knew that Emily had an abortion when she was pregnant with Ezekiel's baby. He tried to use that information to threaten her. Meanwhile, Jimenez was protesting against Miguel's arrest because it would put Ezekiel in danger. He blew up and said that he had plenty more intel and they would find out about it. Then, he left the office and visited Felipe in his house. Felipe called Ezekiel and asked him to return home soon because there was important information for him. At the Mayans' headquarters, during the meeting, Bishop and the others finally decided that they would take 10% profit from Riz's tunnel and close it permanently afterward. 
Riz was upset when he heard that decision and left the meeting immediately. Despite that, Bishop insisted on keeping their decision and the rest of the Mayans agreed with him. Afterward, Riz met with Angel and Coco and lashed out at them because of what happened. Coco was surprised when he heard that. He was soon angry at Angel too for betraying Riz. Riz scolded Angel because he didn't talk to him first about the tunnel and reported it directly to Bishop instead. At Philip's house, Jimenez told Ezekiel that he was in danger because the assistant U.S. attorney might reveal about his role as a DEA informant. Because of that, he suggested Ezekiel to flee abroad and start a new life with new identity there. But Ezekiel rejected his suggestion because it was not only him who would be in danger, but also his brother Angel. He said that he would protect his family no matter what. In the interrogation room, Lincoln showed Emily documents about the crimes that had been committed by the Galindo cartel. He also threatened that he would get custody of Emily's son because Emily had failed to protect her own son. Then, Lincoln gave Miguel a letter of agreement that stated that Miguel would keep becoming a cartel boss who took charge of Sonora and the border of the Eastern California. In return, he would provide weapons and troops and Miguel had to use them to destroy Los Alvedados. He threatened to send Emily to the prison for neglecting her baby if Miguel refused to sign the letter of agreement. If that happened, Lincoln said that he would take care of Emily's baby while Emily was attending court. He was trying his best to pressure Miguel into accepting his offer, and it worked. Miguel finally gave up and signed the letter of agreement. In the interrogation room, Emily was reading the testimony from an informant who witnessed the murder of Afa, the shot caller from the BTT that was committed by Miguel. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans had a meeting. They were discussing about Miguel's arrest and how it would affect their club. Not long after that, Ezekiel arrived there. When the Mayans called him to a room, he was worried if they had found out that he was a DEA informant, but turned out they only ordered him to change the motorcycle oil. Ezekiel called his father and told him that the Mayans hadn't found out that he was a DEA informant. Philip was relieved when he heard that. Afterward, according to the Mayans' tradition, Angel and Riz had a fight inside the ring to resolve the conflict between them. All Mayans gathered outside and watched them. When Angel and Riz were both severely beat up, Bishop stopped their fight. Angel and Riz then hugged each other. Emily and Miguel finally returned home with their son after Lincoln released them. In another place, Father Rodrigo told Nestor about a death threat that he received from Adelita. Later at night, Angel and Ezekiel kept Coco's mother's dead body in the trunk of the car. They planned to take her dead body to the desert and bury her there. But on their way there, a police car suddenly stopped them. One of those police officers turned out to be Frankie, but his co-worker forced Angel and Ezekiel to get out of the car. That police officer also checked the Reyes brothers' car and got surprised when he saw a dead body there. He and his co-workers then took Angel and Ezekiel to the police station. Those Reyes brothers spent the night in their cell. The next morning, Lincoln visited them in their cell. Ezekiel remembered that he saw that man before. He was the suspicious man who was lingering outside the junkyard near the Mayans' headquarters another night. Lincoln introduced himself as an assistant U.S. attorney to them. He also told Angel that Ezekiel was a DEA informant. He said that the Galindo cartel was no longer the DEA's priority, which meant that Ezekiel's deal was being pulled and he was in serious trouble. If the Galindo cartel or the Mayans Motorcycle Club found out about it, then they would surely kill Ezekiel. Lincoln said that he could release Angel and Ezekiel from the prison, even though they carried a dead body in their car. But he wanted Angel and Ezekiel to do something for him in return. Angel and Ezekiel were finally free to go. On their way home, Ezekiel asked his brother to give him a chance to explain about everything. Eight years earlier, Angel visited Coco and Angel. That time, Coco had just returned from Iraq. Turned out, Coco was a Marine veteran. That was why he became a good sniper for the Mayans. Ezekiel came to that place to ask Angel to give him a gun. He told his brother that he wanted to hunt their mother's murderer who drove a car with a Wildcat sticker on it. He knew that the Wildcat sticker was from El Centro High School. Back to the present time, at Philip's house, 
Angel was mad and disappointed with his father for not telling him about the deal between Ezekiel and the DEA. Philip defended his action by saying that Ezekiel deserved a second chance because he didn't kill a police officer on purpose. Angel was mad because he got dragged into this problem. He told his father that Lincoln wanted to use him and Ezekiel to take advantage of the Galindo cartel. When Philip said that this problem was about the border and the rebellion, Angel finally realized that Lincoln's real target was Los Alvedados. In another place, Miguel and Devant were discussing about Miguel's deal with Lincoln. Miguel said that the deal made him suffer a lot. Lincoln knew how to destroy Miguel's enterprises, so Miguel didn't have another option but to do what he asked. Even though his business was legal, Miguel said that he planned to make shadow reports that consisted of real reports and fake reports. Emily suggested that they provided as little information as possible to the FBI. Miguel finally decided that he would still work with Los Alvedados, but Devant warned him that he was not Escobar. He warned him that Lincoln would eventually find out about their lie. Miguel said that he was not making any mistake, but Devant still disagreed with his plan to play in the both sides. Then Miguel saw his X-ray image. Devant said that he would help Miguel to convince the Mayans and their customers that their business would go as usual and the Galindo cartel didn't have any problem with the FBI. Meanwhile, Angel was heading to Adelita's campsite to give important information to Adelita. He tried to call her, but she didn't answer his call. When he arrived at the campsite, he saw that place was already emptied. Apparently, Adelita came to meet Father Rodrigo. When she arrived there, she still pretended to have a casual conversation with him. She didn't mention anything about the murder that happened to her family because of his betrayal. But suddenly, Nestor came to that place and asked Adelita to leave right away. At the Mayan's headquarters, Angel told Coco and Gilly that he didn't find Adelita's campsite. They were worried if the Galindo cartel had done something to Adelita and her crew. While they were talking, other Mayans suddenly asked them to join them. They told them that Miguel needed them somewhere. The Mayans finally arrived at a casino and met with Miguel. In that meeting, Miguel told the Mayans about what happened to him recently, including the arrest, intimidation, and threat that the FBI and the judiciary did to him and his family. He also told them that he was being arrested by the border security officers and meeting with Adelita in the border facility. Bishop was surprised to see Adelita there, as he knew that Adelita was the common enemy of the Galindo cartel and the Mayans motorcycle club. Devan was even more surprised to see Miguel inviting Adelita and treating her like an important guest. Adelita told them that Los Alvedados only wanted a part of greed, bureaucracy, and change of this country. Miguel explained that he was now working with Los Alvedados, and he wanted the Mayans to become the third party in their business to help keep them honest. Then, Emily gave them the letter of the agreement. After Ezekiel read it, he destroyed the letter immediately. Angel, Gilly, and Coco, who walked past Adelita, pretended that they had just knew each other. At night, Jimenez came to Philip's house to say goodbye to Felipe because he would move to San Diego for work. At the casino, Emily met with Ezekiel secretly. She told him that she knew that he was a DEA informant. She said that whatever he was doing for the FBI, she hoped that he wouldn't cause any trouble for her family. In the car, on their way home, Devane asked Miguel why he wanted to work with Los Alvedados. Miguel refused to tell him that he actually didn't have any option because Los Alvedados was very powerful and dangerous and could destroy his business in a second. So he told him about Adelita's story instead. He told him that Adelita was the daughter of his father's former supporter. But one day, the Galindo cartel murdered Adelita's entire family because Adelita's father wanted to leave the cartel life. Adelita's father's friend was the one who betrayed their family and revealed about their hiding place to the cartel. That friend was now working as a bishop. Turned out, Devant was the person whom Miguel's father ordered to kill Adelita's family. Miguel then let Adelita to take revenge on Devant and said that their debt was now settled. Adelita promised that he had her word and walked toward Devant with a mashit. Not long after that, she also came to Father Rodrigo's house and hanged him. At home, Angel said that he would forgive Ezekiel and keep his secret, 
but Ezekiel had to leave the Mayans Motorcycle Club and get out of that city. While they were talking, they suddenly received a call from Lincoln. They were surprised when Lincoln ordered him to kill Jimenez. At Miguel's house, Miguel told his mother that he had killed Devant for the crime that he had committed in the past. He knew that it was hard for his mother, but they needed to move on. At Philip's house, Ezekiel told his father that Lincoln ordered him and Angel to kill Jimenez. Even though Jimenez was his cousin, he and Angel decided to obey Lincoln's order or else they would be sent to the prison. Lincoln also threatened to tell the club that he was a DEA informant if they refused to obey his order. Philip asked his son to wait until they heard news from Jimenez. After that, Ezekiel visited the Mayans' headquarters. Bishop and the others asked Ezekiel to prepare meals in large portions because they would throw a party that night. Not long after that, Angel, Gilly, and Coco arrived in that place. Angel asked Chucky why Ezekiel left that place, but Chucky said that he had no idea. It seemed that Angel was worried if his brother went to kill Jimenez. Jimenez's superior came to the DEA office to see Lincoln. He wanted to know why he couldn't access the document about the deal between Ezekiel and a DEA agent Jimenez. In another place, Jimenez received a call from Felipe. Felipe asked him to come to his butcher shop. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans had a meeting. Marcus thought that the deal between the Galindo cartel and Los Alvedados was a good move for their club. He said that Nestor had a contact in Israeli military who helped him to supply weapons for the Galindo cartel and the FBI knew about this. He also told them that he still had a good relationship with Jax Teller from the Sons of Anarchy. Bishop said that he wanted the Mayans to become the third party for the business between the Galindo cartel and SAMCRO, and all Mayans in that room agreed with him. At Philippe's butcher shop, Philippe asked Jimenez to talk to him in the private room. When they arrived there, Philippe asked Jimenez why Lincoln hated him. Jimenez admitted that he lashed out at that assistant U.S. attorney and disobeyed his order. While Jimenez was talking, Philip quietly reached out to his gun. He planned to kill Jimenez in that room, but he couldn't do it. Jimenez said that he planned to go to the South with his family. Not long after that, Angel also came to that butcher shop. He knew that Philip had heard that Lincoln ordered him and Ezekiel to kill Jimenez, so he asked his father to tell him about Jimenez's address. Angel said that he needed to kill Jimenez to protect his brother. But suddenly, he received a call from Lincoln. Ezekiel, who was driving his car, also received the same call. Turned out, Lincoln had found Jimenez's address and gave it to them. Angel rushed to that address as soon as he received it. Not long after that, Ezekiel also arrived in that place. Angel entered Jimenez's house and aimed his gun at Jimenez. Turned out, Jimenez's superior was also there. During that confrontation, Jimenez suddenly attacked Angel. Ezekiel came in through the back door and killed Jimenez's superior right away. Angel then finished their job by shooting Jimenez to death. Not long after that, Lincoln arrived in that place. He didn't mind that Angel and Ezekiel killed Jimenez's superior too, even though he only ordered them to kill Jimenez. Then he ordered them to clean up the crime scene and bury Jimenez and his superior. In Miguel's house, Miguel showed Nestor a picture of 15 years old of him and Nestor's brother. He then told him that he would begin an organizational overhaul in response to his partnerships with both Los Alvedados and Lincoln. He said that Nestor would still become the head security of the Galindo cartel, while the Consejero would take care of all problems that might arise. It meant that the Consejero would become Devant's successor as the advisor of the Galindo cartel. Miguel didn't choose Nestor as the next advisor because he thought that Nestor still lacked experience. In the tunnel, Angel and Ezekiel were carrying the dead bodies of the two DEA agents by using a trolley. Then, they buried their bodies in a location. While burying those bodies, Angel told his brother to leave the club, tell the truth to Bishop, pack his things, and leave this city and never come back for his own safety. After that, Angel visited Adelita and the rebels' new campsite. Adelita asked Angel to stay overnight, but Angel politely rejected that offer because of everything that happened to him that day, especially his brother's departure. Meanwhile, Ezekiel came to see Lincoln to show him the picture of him and his brother burying the dead bodies of Jimenez and his superior. 
After Lincoln saw that picture, he opened his laptop and called the officer. He ordered someone on the phone to execute the command 9 to 29. In a second, all crimes that Ezekiel had committed was cleaned from the system. Lincoln told Ezekiel that all doors had been opened and all eyes had been closed now. Even though everything had been settled, it seemed that Lincoln thought that Ezekiel owed him a debt. After that, Ezekiel returned to the Mayans' headquarters. He told him that he had something to tell him. Turned out, Philip also showed up in that place. Angel approached his father and told him that their problems had been solved. He also said that Ezekiel's criminal record had been cleaned. Then he asked his father to help Ezekiel to pack his things. In the meeting room, Ezekiel said that he had discussed about this problem with his brother. It wasn't revealed what Ezekiel said to them earlier. Not long after that, two members of the Sons of Anarchy arrived at the Mines' headquarters. In the meeting room, Marcus gave important information to Bishop. He seemed sad when he was telling that information to Bishop. Then, he took off his vest. Meanwhile, Ezekiel was putting his vest back on and returning to the headquarters. When Angel was talking to Bishop, he found out that his brother didn't follow his suggestion to leave the club. Instead, Bishop told him that Ezekiel suggested that they made a special rule for brothers who joined the club. Apparently, Marcus decided to leave the Mayans Motorcycle Club because he had been appointed by Miguel to become his next advisor. Miguel chose him to become his next advisor because he was close to his father. When Angel asked Ezekiel about what he was doing, Ezekiel told him that he didn't want to run away from his problems, and especially to leave the club. He said that he would be responsible for anything that happened in his life. Then, he had another flashback about his past. He remembered the time when he was chasing his mother's murderer. After he accidentally killed a police officer, he saw the murderer's face for a moment. He remembered that man's face, and that man turned out to be a member of the Sons of Anarchy. Mayans MC Season 2 began with Ezekiel driving some children to a school. Turned out, that school was a secret drug factory. Meanwhile, Miguel and his wife, Emily, were visiting a drug factory that had been destroyed by Los Alvedados' network on the order of Adelita before the Miguel Cartel and Los Alvedados decided to work together. As Miguel's new advisor, Marcus was now always seen working with Miguel. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans were discussing about the delay of their drug shipment because Miguel's drug factory got destroyed. During that meeting, Bishop also mentioned about the fight between Angel and Ezekiel and wondered why those Ray's brothers had a fight in the first place. At school, Ezekiel and Coco were tasked to collect the drug in that drug factory and deliver it to some place. Meanwhile, Angel and Gilly were busy with their work as humanitarian volunteers to help Adelita and her crew. Apparently, Miguel ordered the Mayans to pretend to work together with Lincoln's mercenaries to destroy Los Olvidados. He needed to convince Lincoln that he was on his side, despite he was working with Adelita, the leader of Los Olvidados. His strategy was to hunt down the human traffickers in that area and pretended that they were the rebels. After the Mayans and Lincoln's mercenaries raided the house and killed all human traffickers in that house, they found a document about Los Alvedados in a room there. Turned out, that document had been prepared by Bishop and Coco, so Lincoln's mercenaries would believe that they had just attacked the rebels. In another place, Angel received a call from a girl named Minnie. That girl was tasked by Adelita to watch the fake mission that were carried by the Mayans and Lincoln's mercenaries. Minnie told them that everything went well, but unfortunately, a Lincoln's mercenary who was spying on the location suddenly caught her. He saw her carrying weapons, so he brought her to the Mayans. At Philip's butcher shop, Philip received a sudden visit from Lincoln. It was unclear why Lincoln came to that place. Lincoln just told Felipe that he knew that he used to work as an inspector for the Mexican Federals that were affiliated with the cartel. At the human traffickers' house, the Mayans were worried if Minnie revealed about the truth to Lincoln's mercenaries. They were worried if Lincoln would find out about what happened. Afraid that this would create a big problem, they finally decided to make a new plan. They began to kill all Lincoln's mercenaries in that place. Ezekiel killed the last mercenary by strangling him with a rope. At the Mayans' headquarters, Happy and a member of the Sons of Anarchy came to give weapons to the Mayans. While Chucky was receiving those weapons, Philip arrived in that place. 
He asked Chucky about where Ezekiel was. A member of the Sons of Anarchy, Happy, turned out to be the murderer of Ezekiel's mother. Happy saw Felipe in that place and recognized him immediately. The next day, Philip told Ezekiel that Lincoln came to his butcher shop. They believed that Lincoln was onto something, but they hadn't figured out what his intention was. Then, Ezekiel joined the Mayans in a meeting. In that meeting, Coco complimented Ezekiel's heroic action for saving Marcus, but Angel had different opinion about him. He thought that Ezekiel was his father's golden boy, and he didn't like it. In another place, the mercenary commander reported to Lincoln about the massacre of his soldiers that was committed by another party during their attack on the rebels. He also regretted that they lost Minnie because that girl could reveal to them about Adelita's whereabouts. In a spiteful manner, he said that he would hunt down Angelita and take revenge for the death of his soldiers. The Mayans had a meeting with other charters. In that meeting, they were discussing about their concern about their drug smuggling into the prison because three of their members in the prison had an overdose. Ezekiel was the one who delivered the drug, so he remembered that the label of the charter on the package was put on the wrong place. They then tested the drug to see if the drug had been adulterated or not. Turned out, the results showed that the drug turned into blue, which meant that the drug had been adulterated. Bishop urged the perpetrator, a member of the mine's charter Tucson, to tell them about the truth but that man tried to draw his gun instead. The Mayans then decided to hand him over to the leader of the charter. After the meeting was over, Bishop and Ezekiel were having a conversation. Bishop told Ezekiel to resolve the conflict between him and Angel soon because he didn't want their family problem to affect their club. Meanwhile, the Mayan who adulterated the drug was going to be punished with death penalty for betraying the club. At Miguel's house, when Miguel returned home, Emily asked him about the father of Adelita's unborn child. Miguel was surprised to hear such question. He admitted that he didn't know, and he thought that Adelita would refuse to tell it to anybody. The next scene revealed that Miguel's mother, Dida, had a scar from her head to her back. In another place, Happy opened a chest and went through its contents. Turned out, there were documents about Ezekiel's parents there. Ezekiel knocked on Angel's door, and told him that he found the murderer of their mother. He said that the murderer of their mother was a man named Happy, a member of the Sons of Anarchy. Angel finally stopped being mad at Ezekiel after they talked about their mother. He began to understand his brother. After that, he and Ezekiel decided to visit the brothel where Adelita and Minnie were hiding. The Mayans were happy to see those raised brothers getting along again. Ezekiel then asked Bishop to allow him and his brother to take care of several parole files that they would send to the Stockton prison. Turned out, the father of Adelita's unborn child was Angel. Until that day, nobody knew about that fact except Adelita and Angel himself. Adelita told Angel that it was impossible for them to tell everybody that they were expecting baby together because of the situation that they faced right now. In her room, Minnie was packing her bags she decided to run away from that place. At the butcher shop, Philip was also happy to see his sons getting along again. In the office of the mayor, Emily barged in and launched a protest. She was mad and disappointed because Antonia accepted six offers from other companies. All this time, Antonia had been prioritizing Miguel and his company to have the important projects in the city. While Ezekiel and Angel were riding away, Two motorcyclists who rode sport bikes suddenly overtook and provoked them. But those two brothers decided to ignore them. In another place, Marcus and the Mayans were talking about Minnie who had ran away from them. They decided to search that city and the nearby cities to find her. Meanwhile, Lincoln's mercenaries were looking for Adelita and Minnie. They visited places and asked people there if they had ever seen them. Turned out, Minnie was not far from their location. At the gas station, Ezekiel received information that Happy had a house outside the town. Suddenly, the two motorcyclists who provoked them earlier arrived in that place. Those two men kept harassing them and insulting the Mayans. Angel was annoyed when he heard that. He drew his gun and threatened them with it. At the hospital, Miguel received a call from Emily. Emily told her husband about what Antonia was doing to them. Miguel was surprised when he heard that. He asked Nestor to take care of his mother and rushed to Emily's place immediately. While Marcus and the Mayans were looking for Minnie, 
they suddenly saw Lincoln's mercenaries doing the same thing in that place. They hid immediately when they saw them. Back to hospital, after Miguel's mother returned from the examination room, she didn't find her son in the waiting room. She then decided to leave the hospital by herself. In another place, Ezekiel and Angel got a problem. The Swole Boys Motorcycle Club, the club of the two motorcyclists who harassed them earlier, came to that place and surrounded them. They were mad at them for threatening their fellow crew. They attacked them, but Angel and Ezekiel attacked them back and left that place immediately. The Swole Boys didn't give up. They chased Angel and Ezekiel right away. While they were chasing them, the patrol officers saw them and chased them too. The Reyes brothers and the Swole Boys finally decided to solve their problem another time. Because of their action, the patrol officers crashed into each other's car. Back to the Mayans after Lincoln's mercenaries left, Coco finally found Minnie hiding in a truck. The mercenary commander suspected the Mayans after they saw them looking for Minnie too. At the butcher shop, Philip received a sudden visit from Dida. It seemed that Felipe and Dida knew each other well. Angel and Ezekiel finally arrived at the Mayans' headquarters in California. Meanwhile, Philip was driving Dita home. It wasn't revealed yet about what actually happened between them two. Miguel and Emily, who had been worried about Dita, were finally relieved to see her home. But they were soon confused when they saw Philip driving her home. They wondered what relationship that Philip and Dita had. In another place, a Lincoln's mercenary was secretly installing a tracking device on a car. While the Mayans were having a dinner, two detectives who had been spying on the Mayans killed a Mayan named Medina after he caught them. After that, the Mayans had a meeting and discussed about Medina, who was murdered by the two corrupt detectives, Pollen and Grady. They found out that those detectives killed Medina because he caught them with a prostitute named Hope. Fortunately, the Mayans had one of those detectives' phone which contained the evidence. They finally decided to capture Pollen and Grady and hand them over to the Mayans who were called the God Killers. They helped Hope to hide in their place and planned to use her to capture the two corrupt detectives. Bishop was saddened by the death of Medina because he had a close relationship with him. He was the one who asked Medina to join the club. The next day, Lincoln and his team came to Miguel's house. They asked Miguel to go with them without his bodyguards. Before leaving, Miguel asked Marcus to check on their queen. He was aware that Lincoln was dangerous and they needed to be very careful of him. It was still unknown where Lincoln was taking Miguel to but they had driven past the border now. In the evening, Marcus came to Adelita's campsite. He checked on Minnie and saw many wounds on her face. He then sat beside her and encouraged her to stay strong like a snake. He showed her his leg that full of scars. The Mayans took Hope to an abandoned building and prepared her to lure Pollen and Grady into that place. They then introduced themselves to Hope to earn her trust and convince her that they would protect her. On their way to their destination, Lincoln and his team suddenly stopped and switched their car for a station wagon. They took Miguel to their destination by using that car. After a while, Grady finally came to the abandoned building to take his phone. Unfortunately, Pollen didn't come with him. Hope asked him to come inside the building. Grady felt suspicious when he heard that. He drew his gun and threatened her with it. When Grady entered the building, the Mayans surrounded him right away. Bishop told Grady to put down his weapon or his sniper Coco would shoot him in the head. Emily came to the city hall to meet her friend, Ileana, who was working as a planner for city hall. She wanted to bribe her to get an advantage in an agricultural park project. In the abandoned building, the Mayans took Grady hostage. After they went through his phone, they finally managed to find Pollen's address there. Grady told them that Pollen didn't live with his child and wife in that address anymore. He said that Pollen now lived with his mother in Tahoe. In the car, Emily gave a check to Eliana. She said that she knew Eliana was borrowing some money from the mayor. But that money was actually her bribe for Eliana, so the Galindo family could win the agricultural park project. At first, Eliana was hesitant to accept the money, but she finally agreed to accept it. Turned out, Lincoln and his team took Miguel to a desert where Palomo, a member of the Mexican government, was delivering a speech in front of the locals. Lincoln told Miguel that Paloma was working with Los Alvedados and their leader Adelita. He suspected that Paloma was one of their sponsors. 
but since he hadn't found the evidence, he asked Miguel to investigate it. At his mother's house, Pollen received a text message from Hope. Hope said that she was in front of the house and wanted to give him the phone. Turned out, the Mayans had surrounded that location. They then entered the house through the back door and met Pollen's mother in the kitchen. Pollen's mother screamed when she saw them. Pollen got inside of the house as soon as he heard his mother's screaming. When he tried to pull his trigger, Hope suddenly smashed his head with an ashtray. Pollen's mother was angry when she saw that. She choked Hope immediately. Coco finally decided to finish that problem by shooting Pollen's mother to death. On the order of Miguel, Marcus came to Philippe's butcher shop to give Felipe the last warning to stay away from Dida. Back to the abandoned building, the Mayans said that they would give Grady a chance if he kept his mouth shut about his kidnapping and Pollen's murder. After that, they executed Pollen as his punishment for murdering a Mayan. The next day, all members of the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy paid their last respects to Medina by attending his funeral. Happy, the member of the Sons of Anarchy, who was being targeted by Angel and Ezekiel for murdering their mother, also attended that funeral. At home, Philip read his old letters. Turned out, Philip and Dida had a history together. In another place, Eliana gave some documents that were related to the construction of the Agricultural Park Project to Emily. Meanwhile, Angel and Ezekiel were heading to Happy's house. When they arrived there, they attacked and captured Happy. They'd forced him to tell them about the person responsible for the death of their mother. At home, Miguel prepared himself to do the task that Lincoln asked him another day. After he and his bodyguards left, Dita called Felipe and asked him to meet her. Back to Happy's house, Ezekiel told Happy about the incident that took place nine years earlier, where he found his mother lying dead on the ground. He said that he remembered the car that was used by his mother's murderer. One night, he followed that car to a construction site and saw Happy's face clearly. Angel knew that nine years earlier, Happy was still working as a hitman and hadn't joined the Sons of Anarchy. So, he beat him up and forced him to tell them about the person who had ordered him to kill his mother. Despite being severely beaten up, Happy still refused to answer him. Angel then drew his gun and tried to kill him, but Ezekiel suddenly asked if the Galindo cartel was the one who ordered him. Angel was surprised when he heard his brother's question. Meanwhile, Miguel was taking Adelita up to Palomo. He needed to bring Adelita there to convince Lincoln that he was doing his job well. In the car, Miguel admitted that he didn't know how much Lincoln knew about them because that man was very smart and cunning and always communicated in ambiguous, high-level language. In the office of the mayor, Eliana told Emily to go see an employee named Marlin who would take care of her new submission for the Agricultural Park project. Back to the Reyes brothers, Angel asked Ezekiel about the meaning of Isabel and Ignacio's names that Ezekiel wrote on a paper. Ezekiel told him that Ignacio was their father's real name. He also said that their father used to work as an inspector for the Mexican Federals that were affiliated with the Galindo cartel. Angel was mad because Ezekiel had just told him that information now. Because of that, he and Ezekiel got into a fight. On their way home, the Mayans stopped at the gas station to take a rest. But when they were there, they saw the Swole Boys Motorcycle Club starting their engines while staring at them as if they were challenging them. When they left that place, the Swole Boys also left and followed them right away. One of their members even messed with Riz that Riz fell off his bike. The Mayans was mad when they saw that and attacked them back. When they began to shoot them, the Swole Boys finally ran away. After that, the Mayans checked on Riz who was lying unconscious on the road. Fortunately, Riz only suffered from a small injury. Bishop was confused when he heard that the Swole Boys said that this action was a payback. At Happy's house, Angel and Ezekiel finally stopped fighting after they were battered. Angel said that he felt that their father didn't really care about him and never thought of him as his son. After that, he tried to make Happy open his mouth again by removing his skin from his stomach. The president of the Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club San Bernardino Charter, Isaac, and his crew came to help the Mayans. Angel began to feel frustrated because Happy still refused to open his mouth even though he had tortured him for several times. He was getting even more frustrated because Happy's dog kept barking. When he threatened that he would kill that dog, Happy finally spoke to him. 
That man begged Angel not to kill his dog. Angel and Ezekiel then realized that Happy's weakness was his own dog. It seemed that Happy loved his dog so much that he didn't want anyone to lay their finger on it, like a father who didn't want anyone to hurt his daughter. According to the tracking device that Lincoln's mercenaries installed in Miguel's car, they found out that Miguel was heading to some place. Hobart, the mercenary commander, and his crew then decided to follow him. Happy told Ezekiel and Angel to get the document about his targets in his room. According to that document, he was ordered to kill both Angel and Ezekiel's father and mother. He said that he got the order from Packer, a man who was very careful about his client's information. He told them that he could only find their mother at Philip's butcher shop back then. Their father, Philip, had left the shop when he arrived there. Happy admitted that he didn't know if the Galindo cartel was the one who gave him the order or not. He also said that he was afraid back then because he thought that the Galindo cartel sent Ezekiel to kill him. After that incident, he finally decided to join the Sons of Anarchy. At the hospital, Dida and Felipe were having a conversation. Turned out, the scar that Dida had from her head to her back was from her attempt to commit suicide in a fire. Then, Dida revealed that Miguel was actually Philip's biological son. She said that nobody knew about it except her and Felipe. The Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy visited the Swole Boys' headquarters. The Mayans confronted the Swole Boys and wanted to know about their problem with them. A member of the Swole Boys said that he didn't see the two Mayans who messed with him. Bishop then realized that he was talking about Angel and Ezekiel. Nevertheless, the Mayans decided to teach the Swole Boys a lesson because they had hurt their member, Riz. Riz then shot the leg of a member of the Swole Boys as a punishment for messing with him. Bishop was mad when he heard that Angel and Ezekiel were the ones who caused all this problem. Before leaving, he asked Coco to find those Riz brothers soon. Miguel and Adelita finally arrived in a village. They were waiting for Paloma there. Miguel still hadn't realized that there was a tracking device that was installed by Lincoln's mercenaries in his car. After Angel and Ezekiel finished interrogating Happy, they discussed about what they should do to that man now. While they were discussing, a prospect of the Sons of Anarchy suddenly came to that place and knocked on the door. When the prospect entered the house, Happy said that he had an accident and Angel and Ezekiel came to save him. It meant that Happy agreed to work with the Reyes brothers and help them to find more information from Packer about the man responsible for the death of Angel and Ezekiel's mother. While Emily was picking her mother-in-law up at the hospital, she saw Philip's car being parked not far from that place. Miguel's subordinate saw Hobart and his crew's cars heading to that place and warned Miguel about it immediately. Miguel panicked when he heard that, but Adelita quickly made up a fake scenario where Miguel and his subordinates were hunting her in that place. It was important for her and Miguel keep pretending that they were against each other so Lincoln wouldn't find out about Miguel's betrayal. Adelita then entered a shop and began to shoot in every direction. Not long after that, Marcus entered the shop and pretended to capture her. Turned out, their strategy worked. They managed to deceive Hobart and his crew and make them think that Miguel came to that place to track and hunt Adelita down. But unfortunately, Hobart and his crew took Adelita with them. Miguel couldn't do anything to stop them. At home, Emily sneaked into Dita's room and searched her drawer. She found a picture of Dita and two men inside that drawer. Angel and Ezekiel decided that they let Happy go and return to the Mayans' headquarters. Lincoln and his assistant came to Hobart's headquarters to see Adelita. Lincoln planned to take Adelita across the Mexico-United States border to the U.S. federal prison the next day. He said that he would interrogate Adelita there and wouldn't hesitate to use her unborn baby to make her tell them everything about her organization and network. At home, Miguel told Emily about what happened to him and Adelita earlier. He said that Adelita had sacrificed herself to save him. He was afraid if Lincoln would threaten and pressure them again into doing what he wanted by crossing legal boundaries like he usually did. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop told Angel and Ezekiel, who had just arrived there, that the Mayans got a problem from the Swole Boys because of the fight between them earlier. Angel and Ezekiel were surprised when they heard that. 
Even though Angel didn't think that he and his brother did anything wrong, he didn't want to defend themselves. He was ready to take the blame if he needed to. Suddenly, the Mayans received a call from Marcus. Marcus told them that the Galindo cartel had important news for them. At the same time, Philip also came to that place. Ezekiel thought that his brother was still angry and going to hit their father, but turned out Angel hugged Felipe instead. In the underground tunnel, Miguel introduced the Mayans to the Mexican politician Cedrica Palomo. After they had a discussion, they agreed to work together to save Adelita. Meanwhile, Angel, Ezekiel, and their father were sharing a drink and talking about their problems. Suddenly, Chucky came to that place and told the Reyes brothers that Bishop ordered them to join the other Mayans at the headquarters. Before leaving, Chucky said something that made Angel laugh. At home, Emily went through a storage room in that house to find out about the relationship between Dita and Philip in the past. The Mayans and the Galindo cartel prepared weapon and ammunition that they needed to free Adelita from Lincoln. They suspected that Lincoln held Adelita captive in a safe house that was used by Hobart and his crew. During their mission, Miguel would keep pretending that he was working with Lincoln, as usual to avoid that assistant U.S. attorney from suspecting him. Bishop told Angel to stay in the tunnel, but Angel refused and asked him to send him to the location so he could save Adelita. Bishop was mad because Angel disobeyed his order. He and Angel then got into a fight. When he tried to beat him up, Angel suddenly said that he was the father of Adelita's unborn child. Bishop was surprised when he heard that and decided to forget about their problem. The next day, the Mayans came to the house next to their target's house and spied on that house before they decided to raid that place. In another place, Lincoln gave a green light to Hobart to start transferring the prisoners. He then told his assistant that he would see Miguel afterward because he thought that Miguel was hiding something from him. He wanted to see if Miguel, in quotation marks, was blinking. At Hobart's headquarters, Hobart and his crew prepared two pregnant women who resembled Adelita to deceive their enemy. While Taza and his team were spying on the target's house, they saw Hobart and his crew taking a pregnant woman with them. Since that woman wore a black mask, they couldn't make sure if she was Adelita or not. When Miguel got out of a store, Lincoln suddenly greeted him. Lincoln came to see him to see if that cartel boss was hiding something from him or not, but after they talked for a while, Lincoln couldn't make any conclusion. After Miguel left, Lincoln called his assistant and told her to do the third scenario to make sure that Adelita's transfer went successful. The Mayans were still spying on Lincoln's mercenaries who were taking a pregnant woman to a place. They finally believed that that pregnant woman was Adelita. Then they prepared themselves to follow the car that took the pregnant woman. Before leaving, Ezekiel saw a station wagon arriving at the target's house. The Mayans then followed the car that Lincoln's mercenaries used to take the pregnant woman. Emily visited Felipe at his butcher shop after she found a little information about him. She found out that Felipe used to work as an inspector for the Mexican Federals that were affiliated with the Galindo cartel. She knew that Felipe's real name was Ignacio and he was close to Miguel's father. Emily asked him to tell her more about his story as the personal bodyguard of Miguel's father, but Philip refused to do that because he was afraid if he would hurt everyone around Emily. The Mayans were ready to stop Lincoln's mercenaries, who took a pregnant woman whom they suspected was Adelita. But in the car, Hobart's crew got a problem because the pregnant woman who was with them had her water breaking. Because of that, they stopped their car and took that woman outside. After they removed her mask, the Mayans finally found out that that woman was not Adelita. The Mayans were mad and disappointed because Hobart and his crew managed to deceive them. Ezekiel then remembered the station wagon that arrived at the target's house before they left that place. He suspected that Lincoln's mercenaries took Adelita by using that car. When they checked the route, they found out that they could chase and stop that station wagon before Marcus came. In the station wagon, Lincoln's subordinates were taking a woman with them. Lincoln arrived at the border and made a big hole in the border wall so his team could take Adelita to the United States through it. Meanwhile, Marcus and his men were preparing themselves to attack Lincoln's mercenaries if Bishop and his crew failed to find Adelita again.
Angel and his crew then began to shoot Lincoln's subordinates in the station wagon and finally managed to defeat them. Since that station wagon had lost a driver, they needed to stop that car from crashing into something else. They didn't want something bad happen to Adelida, whom they thought was inside of that car. Fortunately, they managed to stop that car and save the pregnant woman there. That pregnant woman turned out to be Adelida. But when Angel helped her to get out of the car, Adelita complained because Angel and his crew saved her. She said that she needed to be captured by Lincoln so that Los Alvedados and the Galindo cartel would be freed from that ruthless assistant U.S. attorney. Adelita promised Angel that she and their unborn baby would be all right. The next morning, Angel woke up because he heard the bird chirping outside his house. He grabbed his long gun and tried to shoot that bird with it, but unluckily that gun only shot jets of water. Ezekiel heard his brother screaming in frustration and quickly checked on him in his room. In his office, Lincoln and his assistant were wondering about the identity of the group who had killed two of their men to save Adelita. They were even more confused when they saw Adelita just standing in the crime scene. At Miguel's house, Nestor asked for his boss's permission to pick Marcus up because his car broke down. While Marcus and his men were waiting for Nestor, a group of men in masks suddenly came to that place and attacked them. That group managed to defeat them and took Marcus with them. On his way to pick Marcus up, Nestor saw that group's car driving past his car. When he arrived at the location, Marcus's men told him that Marcus had been kidnapped. Nestor panicked and chased that group's car immediately. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans cheered Angel up and approved Adelita's decision to sacrifice herself to help Los Alvedados and the Galindo cartel. Emily visited Eliana at her house. She was surprised and mad when Eliana told her that a Chinese company named Chinagra had taken over the agricultural park project. She wondered why such thing could happen even though she had bribed her. Eliana told her that Marlin was the one who had the right to make the decision. After Emily heard that, she planned to bribe Marlin too with some money that she had prepared. While Nestor was chasing the car that took Marcus, a tow truck that belonged to that group suddenly crashed into his car and made him fall off cliff. He got wounded because of that accident. Before that truck leaving, he wrote down some numbers on that truck that were not covered by the sticker. In another place, Happy gave Angel and Ezekiel the latest information about their investigation. Happy told them about an ID code that was related to the branches in Hermosillo, Sonora, and Mexico. From the pattern, it seemed that the Galindo cartel was behind this, but they couldn't make any conclusion yet because they didn't have a lot of information about this. When Angel and Ezekiel returned to the Mayans' headquarters, they found out that Marcus had been kidnapped. They then joined other Mayans to go to Miguel's place. Turned out, the group that kidnapped Marcus was Howard's crew. They took Marcus to an abandoned building and tortured him there. They forced Marcus to tell them about the person who had revealed about Adelita's location to him. In Miguel's place, Miguel and the Mayans had a meeting. In that meeting, they discussed about Marcus whom they thought was being kidnapped by Hobart's crew. But suddenly, Emily came to that place. She asked her husband to help her with the agricultural park project. But Miguel ignored her request because he was still busy making plan to save his advisor. Not long after that, Nestor also came to that place. He told everyone about the numbers that he saw on the tow truck that hit him. Meanwhile, Hobart's crew were still trying to make Marcus open his mouth by torturing him. After they removed his nail, Marcus finally told them that the people who told him about Adelita's location were brothers. He said that they could send them a text message and lure them into that place. Miguel told Lincoln's assistant that Marcus had been kidnapped. He hoped that Lincoln would respond to his request for help. Not long after that, he received a text message from an unknown number. It said that the message was for the Molino twins. Turned out, Bishop also received the same message. Angel told them that the Molino meant windmill in Spanish. He said that the Molino twins was a code word for a wind turbine location in a farmland. Emily came to Philippe's butcher shop to meet Ezekiel. She wanted to ask him for help. She told him about the agricultural park project that she attempted to win and how she believed that the Chinese company had bribed Marlin. She asked Ezekiel to help her to threaten Marlin. Back to the abandoned building, Hobart finally took off his mask. 
He was mad because he hadn't received any reply after sending the text messages. Because of that, he stabbed Marcus's hand with a nail. Apparently, the Mayans and the Galindo cartel had surrounded the abandoned building where Hobart's crew held Marcus captive. Angel then began to sneak into the building to see the situation inside. Coco was spying on the situation outside by using his sniper scope. He managed to defeat another enemy who guarded that place in a second shot. After that, the Mayans and the Galindo cartel began to attack that place. They finally managed to defeat Hobart and his crew and save Marcus. Before leaving, they took revenge on Hobart for hurting Marcus by torturing him with a wrench. After that, Marcus received medical treatment for his wounds. He thanked Nestor for giving a clue to the Mayans and the Galindo cartel, so they managed to help him. In his office, Lincoln tried to call Hobart and his crew, but they didn't answer his call. He got anxious because of that. He still had no idea that his mercenaries were already dead. Then, he ordered his assistant to find information about Ignacio Cortina or Felip Reyes in the database of NSA, CIA, and FBI. Ezekiel came to Marlin's house and said that he knew that the Chinese company had bribed Marlin to give the agricultural park project to them. But Marlin denied that he had taken any bribe. Ezekiel asked him to give him his phone and laptop so he could see if he said the truth, but Marlin refused to do it. Marlin then drew his gun and tried to attack Ezekiel with it, but Ezekiel attacked him right away. When they got into a fight, Marlin suddenly shot himself in the head. He died instantly because of that. The next day, the police came to Marlin's house and investigated the crime scene. At home, Emily tried to call and text Ezekiel, but Ezekiel didn't answer her call or return her text message. She was worried if something bad happened to him. Leticia asked her father to help her friend, Gabriella, whose family was being kidnapped by a group of smugglers because they couldn't pay their fee to cross the border. Turned out that group of smugglers was a motorcycle club called the Vados Malditos. Coco was surprised when he heard that. He then took Leticia and Gabriella to the Mayans' headquarters. The mayor Antonia came to Marlin's house to see the dead body of her former employee. The police informed her that they found many notices about debts and credit cards in his house. They concluded that Marlin took his own life because he couldn't pay his own debts. At home, Ezekiel left his brother with their father in the kitchen to have a talk together. Then, Angel began to tell Felipe that he was going to be the father of the baby that was carried by Adelita, the leader of Los Alvedados. He also said that Adelita was being held captive by Lincoln now. After Felip heard that, he told Angel that Adelita, who was also known as Luisa Espina, once tried to kill him because she mistook him as the person who betrayed her father. He said that back then, Adelita's father, who was working for Jose Galindo, tried to leave the cartel life because Adelita's mother was pregnant. Felip believed that even though Lincoln was very smart and cunning, there must be a way to defeat him. At the Mayans' headquarters, Coco told his fellow crew about the Vados Malditos Motorcycle Club that was actively looking for people in dire need to immigrate to the United States. While waiting for Coco, Gabriella met Ezekiel. It seemed that they were interested in each other. In the meeting room, Tassa told his crew that the Vados Malditos was a motorcycle club that didn't have sense of pride and prioritized money and power over anything else. They used their members to commit crimes, such as stealing cars and selling drugs. Taza knew all this because he was once a member of the Vados Malditos, but he quit the club when El Palo became the president. He said that the club became increasingly darker under El Palo's leadership as the club began to commit human trafficking too. The Mayans were horrified when they heard that. They agreed to stop that club. After that, the Mayans went to investigate the location of the Vados Malditos' base camp. With the help of Louis, they finally managed to find the base camp. After they spied on that house for a while, they began to approach it. Ezekiel was sent to pretend to become a food delivery courier. When the door was opened, the Mayans entered the house and attacked the members of Vados Malditos right away. After they killed all members of Vados Malditos there, they checked the house and found many elderly people being held captive there. But unfortunately, they didn't find Gabriella's family.
A hostage told them that Gabriella's family had been taken to a cage near the border. Another hostage seemed to know about their location as well, but he refused to tell them anything because he was afraid of the Vados Malditos member, who was still alive. Coco then killed that Vados Malditos member. After that, that man was finally willing to take the Mayans to the cage. Miguel and Emily came to the office of the mayor after Antonia called them. Antonia wanted to discuss about Marlin's email that was sent to her before he died because of suicide. In that email, Marlin admitted that he had taken a bribe from the Chinese company. Because of that, Antonia decided to give the agricultural park project to the Galindo family. After Miguel and Emily left Antonia's office, Miguel asked Emily if she had something to do with Marlin's death. Emily said that she didn't know anything. She only said that she was happy that they got the agricultural park project because it meant that they could stay away from the border and avoid the unnecessary bloodshed. But Miguel still suspected his wife. He ordered Nestor to watch Emily whenever and wherever she went. The Mayans arrived in location where the Vados Malditos held many immigrants captive. The Vados Malditos placed those immigrants in a cage and treated them like animals. They barely gave them water and food. After spying on that cage for a while, the Mayans began to attack that place. They finally managed to kill all members of the Vados Malditos in that place before those gangsters burned those immigrants alive. They also managed to save all hostages in that place, including Gabriella's family. After that, the Mayans returned to their headquarters. Gabriella was happy when she saw her family again. She thanked the Mayans for saving her family. When Gabriella hugged her family, Coco hugged her daughter too. He was proud of her for reaching out to him to help her friend. In the car, Emily called her husband and told him that she returned to the office of the mayor to meet Ileana. Turned out, she met with Ezekiel there. She was worried about him and wanted to check on him. Ezekiel told her about what really happened to Marlin. He said that he had set up the place so it looked like Marlin had committed suicide. Before Emily left that place, Ezekiel gave her a document that he received from Happy. He asked her to help him to investigate the person responsible for the death of his mother. At home, Emily went through a storage room to find any clue that was related to the document that Ezekiel gave her. After that, she met with Ezekiel again and asked him about what this case was related to. Turned out, the ID code in that document was a proof of money transfer from the Galindo cartel for killing the hitman who was ordered to kill Ezekiel's parents. Ezekiel suspected that Miguel was the one who did it, but Emily refused to believe it and slapped Ezekiel's face instead. She also refused to tell Ezekiel about what she had found in the storage room. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop and his crew discussed about their next meeting with some members of the SAMCRO and Charming. In that meeting, they were going to make an agreement with three other charters of the Mayans Motorcycle Club. After that, Angel and Ezekiel received a message from Lincoln. They then came to the location where Lincoln asked them to meet him. Lincoln wanted to know about what happened to his mercenaries. He forced those brothers to tell him about the history of the Mayans with the Galindo cartel and Palomo. He threatened to deport Felipe, reveal about his dark past, and send him to jail if Angel and Ezekiel refused to tell him about the truth. Angel was angry when he heard that. He wanted to kill that cunning man immediately, but Ezekiel stopped him. Ezekiel calmed him down by saying that they needed to find a smarter way to defeat Lincoln. The Mayans from another charter arrived at the meeting location. When two members of that club saw Ezekiel, they confronted him about what he did to them. It seemed that Ezekiel and them had a problem in the past. Not long after that, the president of the SAMCRO, Chibs, and his crew also arrived in that place. After all of them gathered in that place, their meeting began. In that meeting, Chibs told them that his firearm business with Ireland was facing difficulty because the harbor that they usually used to load and unload their firearms in Mendocino was closed. Because of that, he asked the Mayans to help them to take their firearms in the south and cooperate with the club that dominated that area, the Vados Malditos, or the VM, that based in Tijuana. The Mayans were surprised when they heard that. Bishop told Chibs that they had a problem with the VM. Chibs said that they could solve their problem in that meeting. In the tunnel, Miguel met with Palomo. Palomo showed him a picture of a female immigrant named Sofia. 
She told him that Sophia and Lincoln once had a special relationship, that they even had a child together. Palomo then gave the document about Sophia to Miguel and suggested him to use that document to attack Lincoln and save Adelita. At the meeting location, the Mayan from another charter who confronted Ezekiel earlier messed with him again. Ezekiel began to feel irritated by him, so he punched that man right away. At home, Emily found the proof of money transfer to the hitman. According to that transfer receipt, she found out that Dita was the one who transferred the money. Not long after that, the president of the VM, El Paulo, and his crew arrived at the meeting location. Chibs invited them there so they could solve their problem with the Mayans. He would become the middleman for their deal. After that, the meeting between the Mayans, the SAMCRO, and the VM began. In that meeting, Chibs discussed about the profits that each group would receive for helping his firearm business. While discussing this, the Mayans and the VM got into an argument because Chibs mentioned about his nine members who had been killed by the Mayans. Chibs asked them to calm down and stay focused on their business. After they came to an agreement, Chibs and his crew left that place first. When they left, it seemed that the VM was still holding a grudge and plotting something against the Mayans. At night, Emily came to Philippe's butcher shop and pretended to buy some steak. But actually, she came to that place to ask Felipe if he and Dita had an affair in the past. She then told Felipe that Ezekiel told her about the hitman who was ordered by the Galindo cartel to kill Felipe and his wife. She also mentioned about the transfer receipt that she found in her house and said that that receipt was signed by Dita. Emily said that she needed to protect her family and so did Felipe. Felipe promised her that they would find the way to protect their own family. But suddenly, Miguel came to that place. He wondered about what his wife was doing at that butcher shop. While the Mayans were hanging out, the VM suddenly came to that place and attacked them. The Mayans grabbed their firearms and attacked those gangsters back immediately. A fierce gun battle between them then happened. After a while, the members of VM finally decided to run away. During that gun battle, Riz got shot for several times and Coco got hit with a Molotov cocktail. Because of that incident, Coco had a serious right eye problem. Meanwhile, Riz was in critical condition because he got shot in the heart. Trank told Bishop that the kings were on their way to discuss about this problem. The Mayans then decided to have a meeting the next day to discuss about their next plan. The next day, Bishop had a meeting with the leaders of the Mayans. In that meeting, Bishop showed his frustration and anger because of the VM. Other leaders of the Mayans reminded him about the bigger picture of their plan and how they still needed the VM at the moment for helping the IRA's firearm business. They also said that the Mayans didn't suffer a loss if Riz recovered from his illness. But if Riz failed to recover, they would definitely do something to the VM. As a victim, Coco wouldn't accept it if the Mayans decided to forgive the VM. At home, Philip told Angel and Ezekiel a story about his childhood with the Galindo family in a slum. He said that when he was a child, his grandmother saved an illegitimate child who was being casted out from the church. That illegitimate child was Miguel's father, Joseph Galindo. Twenty years after that, Philip became an inspector for the Mexican Federals. But when he was working undercover, he accidentally killed two innocent people. Because of that, he almost lost his job as an inspector. But fortunately, Joe's Galindo, who had power that time, saved him from being fired from his job. After that, Philip started working as Philip and Dita's bodyguard. At home, Miguel showed Emily the picture of Sophia that Palomo gave to him. He said that Sophia was a key witness in a murder case that was handled by Lincoln. But Lincoln fell in love with her and even had a child together with her. Miguel said that what Lincoln was doing to Sophia could destroy his entire career if the court found out about it. So, he planned to use this information to save Adelita. After that, he told his wife that he was trying to be open with her, and he wanted her to be open with him back. He asked Emily again about what she actually did with the Agricultural Park project and what she knew about his mother's relationship with Felipe. Meanwhile, Ezekiel began to fall in love with Gabriella. He finally asked her to go on a date with him. In the meeting room, before discussing about what they were going to do with the VM, Bishop asked his cousin Marcus's opinion first. 
As the former president of the Mayans, Marcus let Bishop make the decision because his decision would influence majority of his crew. After Marcus left the meeting room, he asked Ezekiel if he ever saw Dida at Philip's butcher shop. Ezekiel said that he had never seen Dida's face before. When Marcus asked him if he helped Emily with the agricultural park project, Ezekiel refused to answer him. Ezekiel said that Emily was the one who could answer that question. In the meeting room, Bishop and his crew were discussing about whether they should take revenge on the VM or not. Trang thought that it was better if there was no revenge, but Angel, Gilly, and Coco said that they wanted to take revenge. Bishop himself said that he would take revenge on the VM if Riz or Coco didn't recover from their condition. He also said that it was important to see the bigger picture of their plan because it would affect the future of their club. Finally, he decided not to take any revenge on the VM. Coco was angry when he heard his decision and left that room immediately. At the hospital, Taza and Creeper, who were tasked to watch over their friend Riz, received information about Bishop's decision. At home, while Angel and Ezekiel were hanging out in the kitchen, they received a text message from Lincoln. In that text message, Lincoln asked them about their agreement. Meanwhile, Dita was taking Emily to a spa facility to deceive Miguel's subordinate who was following her. Turned out, she took her to meet Philip who had been waiting for them at the back of the spa facility. Data told Emily that Philip had something important to say to her and his sons. At home, Philip finally admitted that Joe's Galindo wanted to kill him and his wife because he had an affair with Dita. They began to have an affair after Dita's first child passed away. Realizing that what they were doing was wrong, Philip wanted to end their relationship, but Dita prevented him. After Philip found the love of his life, his late wife, he decided to bring his family to leave the cartel life behind. But he still didn't understand why Josie sent a hitman to kill him and his wife 20 years after he left the cartel. Whatever the reason was, it seemed that Ezekiel wanted to take revenge on Miguel. In the car, Ezekiel received another text message from Lincoln. He then told Emily that Lincoln threatened to deport his father if he didn't tell him about the truth. After Emily heard that, she said that she had information that Ezekiel could use to threaten Lincoln back. She would give that information to him if he promised that he wouldn't hurt Miguel. Suddenly, Dita appeared and interrupted them. When Ezekiel saw her face, he remembered the time when he was visiting a night market back then. At the hospital, Taza secretly removed the nasal cannula from Riz's face. He needed to do this so that Bishop wanted to take revenge on the VM. At home, Ezekiel went through the contents of Philip's box. When he saw Dita's picture there, he remembered that he saw Dita watching his parents together at a night market back then. Ezekiel realized that Dita was jealous, and she was the one who ordered the hitman to kill his mother. Philip admitted that all this tragedy happened because of him. He said that he would go see Dita that day to ask her about the truth. Not long after that, Angel received information that Riz had passed away. In another place, Adelita was giving birth to Angel's baby. The Mayans were deeply saddened by Riz's death. Unfortunately, they couldn't take Riz's dead body home for several days because the hospital needed to perform autopsy on him first. Before it began taking revenge on the VM, the Mayans decided to have a meeting to discuss about Ezekiel's membership first. They were going to discuss whether they accepted Ezekiel as the member of the club or not. In the meeting room, Bishop had a meeting with two presidents of the Mayans from other charters. Those two presidents tried to persuade Bishop not to take revenge on the VM because it would affect their business with Chibs and the IRA. They said that Chibs would choose another club to work with if the Mayans took revenge on the VM. Before leaving, they suggested Bishop to discuss about this problem with El Palo. While waiting for Bishop's meeting to end, Coco was worried if the two presidents of the Mayans persuaded Bishop to make peace with the VM. After that, Emily gave Ezekiel the pictures and documents of Sophia that could be used by Ezekiel to attack Lincoln and save Felipe. Shortly after giving those documents, Emily asked Ezekiel to promise her that he would never hurt Miguel. Ezekiel then gave those files to Angel. He let his brother decide if they wanted to use this information to save their father or Adelita. In another place, Lincoln and his assistant were watching Adelita and her baby in a special cell. Lincoln then ordered his assistant to take DNA paternity test 
to find out about the biological father of Adelita's baby. Meanwhile, Felipa was confronting Dida and asking her if she had hired a hitman to kill him and his wife. Dida didn't deny that she did it. She said that back then, she went to a night market and saw Felipe and his wife there. Because of her jealousy and hatred for Felipe's wife, she finally decided to kill Felipe's wife. She said that she was ready if Felipe wanted to punish her for what she did now. Bishop and Trank came to El Palo's grandmother's house to talk to El Palo. Angel told Ezekiel that he decided to save their father. He believed that Adelita also wanted him to make this decision too. Not long after that, Lincoln came to that place. Angel and Ezekiel gave him the files that contained Sophia's pictures and proof that Sophia was a key witness in a murder case. They said that Lincoln could be accused of manipulating the witness testimony because of what he did to Sophia. They threatened that if they sent that proof to Lincoln's superior in the Department of Justice, then Lincoln would lose his career. Lincoln was surprised and angry when he heard that. He couldn't believe that Angel and Ezekiel found out about this information and used it to threaten him. Ezekiel then asked Lincoln to clean his father's criminal record and give U.S. citizenship to his father. He gave him a chance to do what he asked until the next evening. At El Palo's grandmother's house, Bishop and El Palo finally came to an agreement. Before leaving, Trank told Bishop that El Palo's grandmother said that the VM would hold a party the next evening. When Angel and Ezekiel returned home, Philip told them that Dida had admitted that she committed the murder. Because of that, he planned to execute her just like what Dida asked. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop had a meeting with his crew to discuss about the decision that he had made. While they were having a meeting, two presidents of the Mayans were waiting outside. Bishop didn't invite them to hear about his decision. After the meeting ended, Coco went berserk and tried to attack the two presidents of the Mayans. But it seemed like he only pretended to do that to make it look like the Mayans decided to make peace with the VM. The next day, Dita ordered her bodyguards to go to the pharmacy and buy some medicines for her. When her bodyguards left, she took over the car and left that place immediately. Emily and Miguel visited the location where the agricultural park would be built to deliver a speech and lay the first stone of the project. The mayor Antonio also attended that ceremony. At the Mayans' headquarters, Angel and Ezekiel received a text message from Dida. Lincoln's assistant gave the result of the DNA paternity result for Adelita's baby to Lincoln. They found out that the biological father of that baby was from a prison in California. Angel and Ezekiel came to the mountain where Dida asked them to meet her. When they arrived there, they saw Dida and his father were already there. Dida asked them to execute her in that place. She said that it was her karma for murdering Felipe's wife. She also said that she had prepared a suicide letter in which she stated that she took her own life by burning herself alive. Ezekiel finally decided to kill Dida with his own hands. After he killed her, he poured gasoline all over her dead body and burnt her there. With that being done, Ezekiel finally took revenge for the death of his mother. After that, Angel and Ezekiel returned to the Mayans' headquarters. During the meeting, Angel gave his full support for his brother to become the member of the Mayans Motorcycle Club. Then, Bishop called Ezekiel to the meeting room. He asked him to take off his prospect vest. The Mayans gave him the official vest of the Mayans Charter Southern California and welcomed him to the club. Meanwhile, Miguel was worried because he couldn't find his mother. He ordered all his subordinates to find his mother soon. Suddenly, Emily found Dida's letter and gave it to him. After reading that letter, Miguel and his subordinates headed to the mountain. While looking around that place, Marcus saw tire tracks there. At home, Philip received a letter from Lincoln. Turned out, it was a certificate of naturalization for him. In the evening, the Mayans came to the place where the VM was holding a party. They raided the place and killed all members of the VM there. Unfortunately, they failed to kill El Palo because that man had run away. While looking for El Palo, Angel suddenly received a call from Lincoln. Lincoln told him that Adelita's baby was already born. He found out that Angel was the biological father of that baby, and he planned to use that fact to threaten him back. Then Bishop called the Mayans to a room. They were surprised when they found out that they had accidentally killed a member of the Sons of Anarchy there.
Mayans MC Season 3 began with Ezekiel beating a member of Dogwood Crew. In the cell, every day, Aunt Alita was being tortured by Lincoln's subordinates who were trying to make her open her mouth. Meanwhile, Coco had become a drug addict and Taza was haunted by his guilt for murdering Riz. Taza was also afraid if El Palo suddenly came back and took revenge on him and his club. After Data passed away, Philip spent most of his time in his room. He rarely got out of his house and refused to talk to Angel and Ezekiel. At home, Letitia asked her father about her iPad. She said that she had lost her iPad again. Coco was annoyed when he heard that. He said that he didn't know where her iPad was. It seemed that Coco was having financial problem. During his argument with his daughter, he told Letitia to find a job because he couldn't afford her college tuition anymore. Ezekiel visited his brother at his house. When he arrived there, he found out that Angel dated a woman named Nails. At Miguel's house, the mayor Antonia complained to Emily about the agricultural park project that was handled by the Galendo family. She said that the project didn't help to increase the economic growth in that city and destroyed their economy instead. Emily defended herself by saying that the problem was not caused by the Galindo company, but caused by the government who decided to close the Mexico-United States border. Before leaving, Antonia showed Emily the wicked plan that Emily had made to win the agricultural park project. Angel and Ezekiel carried two baby car seats and went to the tunnel. Turned out, the Mayans were smuggling heroin through that 12 kilometers long tunnel, but they didn't smuggle as many heroin as usual because the Mexico-United States border was closed. They hid the heroin that they smuggled inside the baby car seats that were carried by Angel and Ezekiel. Meanwhile, the officers from the United States Department of Justice were closing the tunnel to prevent drug and human smuggling. Ezekiel gave the heroin to a woman who was hired by the Mayans to transport their heroin. He told her to stay calm when she arrived at the security checkpoint. Angel assumed that Lincoln was the person behind the shutdown of the Mexico-United States border. He thought that Lincoln was angry because they threatened him. After that, the Mayans hanged out at a local pub. Coco, who was under the influence of the drug, suddenly insulted Gilly. Gilly was mad when he heard that. He and Coco then got into an argument. During their argument, Coco accidentally bumped into a soldier who was also hanging out in that pub. That soldier was mad because of that. He, Coco, and Gilly then got into a fight. Angel saw them and joined them. At the security checkpoint, the woman who transported the mines as heroin began to feel nervous. The security guard felt suspicious of her and told her to pull over. But instead of pulling over, that woman tried to run away by stepping right on the gas pedal. Another security officer immediately threw nails at her car to prevent her from running away when he saw that. The Mayans found out that their drug shipment had failed because their drug courier got arrested by the security guards. That woman received a 10 to 15 year prison sentence because of that. Since the Mexico-United States border got closed, it was hard for the Mayans to do their business. As the consequence, they began to struggle financially. Their relations with the Mayans from other charters had also become strained. The presidents of the Mayans from other charters were mad at them because they had ruined their firearms business with the S.A. and Ciaro after they attacked the VM that night. For that reason, Bishop planned to have a meeting with them. Taza said that he was worried because they didn't kill El Palo that night. Ezekiel asked Taza why they should worry about El Palo. Tasa told him that El Palo was a cold-blooded psychopath who slit his own brother's neck. In another place, El Palo talked to his cousin on the phone. He planned to cross the border to take revenge on the Mayans. Miguel visited his late mother's psychiatrist at the psychiatry clinic. He wanted to ask her about everything that his mother had said to her before she committed suicide. But that psychiatrist refused to tell him about what he asked. She said that the information from her patient needed to be kept private, even though the patient had passed away. After Miguel left that psychiatry clinic, Marcus informed him that the drug courier whom they sent had been arrested. Miguel was concerned when he heard that because he had been struggling with his business lately. In her office, Lincoln's assistant received an order to hand Adelita over to the Mexican police officers. She talked about it with her co-worker. 
They believed that those Mexican police officers would kill Adelita as soon as they got her. When Ezekiel was walking down the street, he noticed that there were American soldiers in every corner of the streets. Turned out, those soldiers were sent there to maintain the stability and security in that area. They needed to anticipate the crimes that might happen due to the shutdown of the Mexico-United States border. Ezekiel and Gabriela were going on a date until midnight. They weren't worried about the soldiers who were guarding that area in every corner of the streets. At midnight, the Mayans were heading to the meeting place where they met other Mayans from other charters. In that meeting, they discussed about their failed drug shipment. Other Mayans from other charters were still mad at Bishop and his crew for attacking the VM and ruining their firearms business with the SANMCRO. Ramos, the president of the Stockton Charter of the Mayans, and Kanchi, the president of the Yuma Charter of the Mayans, asked Bishop to send twice the heroin that they usually sent as compensation for their financial loss. Bishop rejected their request immediately. He said that he wasn't afraid of them and left with his crew. In another place, Nestor and Paco were ordered by Miguel to kill Data's psychiatrist. After they attacked her, they left that place by using a van. While Emily was feeling down in her room, Miguel was visiting her mistress at her house. After his vengeance was achieved by killing Dida, Ezekiel decided to burn the documents about his parents. While El Paolo was walking down the street, a patrol officer suddenly came to that place and told him to get down. When that patrol officer approached him, El Paolo suddenly attacked him and ran him over. In another place, two Mexican police officers were attacked by the rebels. Those members of Los Alvedados shot those police officers to death and took their dead bodies to the car. After that, they left that place by using the car. Turned out, Miguel's mistress was Palomo, the Mexican governor. The next day, Ezekiel took Gabriela to his father's house. When they arrived there, they found that house was very messy. Turned out, Philip had been feeling unwell these past few days that he couldn't take care of himself. Gabriela, who saw that helped him to clean the house. Then, Ezekiel said that he needed to go to the mines' headquarters soon. Gabriela didn't mind if Ezekiel left her there for a while. Before leaving, Ezekiel went to his father's room and took a gun from the drawer. He kept that gun in a safer place. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans had a meeting. They were discussing about their problem with the Mayan kings. Ezekiel tried to state his opinion about this matter, but Angel interrupted him right away. After a while, Bishop finally ended the meeting and decided to ignore their problem. As soon as the meeting ended, Coco left the room and rushed to his motorcycle. Creeper noticed that he was under the influence of the drug again. He asked him if he was all right and offered him a help, but Coco ignored him. At home, Philip finally woke up from his sleep. He was surprised when he saw a young woman cleaning his house. The United States Department of Justice came to the border to hand Adelita over to the Mexican police officers. But when they arrived there, they met a group of people in masks instead. That group told them that their middleman said that two agents without masks would take Adelita. Lincoln's assistant and her co-worker decided to ignore them and handed Adelita over to them. Turned out, that group was the members of Los Alvedados. They came to that border to rescue Adelita. But just like before, instead of being happy after being rescued, Adelita felt unhappy. It seemed that she was worried about her baby. At the Mayans' headquarters, Ezekiel told Bishop about his solution to their problem with the Mayan kings. Turned out, Coco came to see Louis. He needed to get another drug from him. It seemed that Coco's drug addiction was getting out of control that he even sold his car to buy drug. Louis said that he was running out of drug. He told Coco to go meet a man named Butterfly. Adelita finally arrived at Los Alvedados' headquarters. A member of Los Alvedados named Pablo greeted her when she arrived but Adelita was being cold to him. She didn't look happy at all to be in that place. She was even getting mad when she found out that Minnie had gone. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans had another meeting. In that meeting, they discussed about the drug supply for the prisons in Arizona. Those prisons were ones of the places that had a high demand for drug. The leader of the Mayans charter Tussin admitted that he had to kneel down in front of Kanchi to get the drug supply for his club.
After Bishop heard that, he decided that he would stand out against Ramos and Kanch instead of kneeling down in front of them. Ezekiel then stated his opinion about his matter. He suggested them to send all their drug supply to the Mayans' charter Tucson. He said that in order to destroy Kanchi, the Mayans from all charters had to stop sending drug to him. The strategy was to get rid of two other Mayan kings, Ramos and Kanch, so there would be only one Mayan king left, who was Bishop. Even though Marcus was the one who appointed them as the Mayan kings, they didn't have to worry about it because Marcus was no longer a member of the Mayans. The next scene revealed that Paco had a child with autism. When he was busy cleaning his house, Miguel suddenly asked him to meet him in the desert. Miguel accused him of killing his mother because he allowed his mother to steal the car and drove off to her demise. Because of that, he decided to shoot him to death. Nestor and Marcus, who were also there, were surprised when they saw that. At home, Emily complained to Miguel because he asked her sister Aaron to look after their son without talking to her about it first. When Ezekiel returned home, he saw his father willing to eat again and getting along with Gabriella. Ezekiel was happy when he saw that. Coco finally arrived at Butterfly's house. He wanted to buy drug from him with his daughter's iPad. Since Butterfly only gave him a very small amount of drug, Coco drew his gun and aimed it at him. Coco threatened him to shoot him if he didn't give all his drug to him. After he got the drug, he rushed to his car and tried to run away from that place. But turned out, Butterfly called his friends and asked them to get him. When Butterfly and his friends tried to execute him, a woman suddenly stopped them. That woman turned out to be Hope. Coco woke up and found himself laying in that place. It seemed that his condition would only get worse, because Hope had been injecting drug into his bloodstream. Meanwhile, Gabriella was enjoying her new daily life. Every day, while Ezekiel was not home, she helped him to take care of his father. At the Mayans' headquarters, Ezekiel suggested that the Mayans gave 120 kilograms drugged to the Mayans' charter Tosin. He said that they needed that much drug to destroy Ramos and Kanchi's business. Bishop thought that it was a good suggestion. He asked Ezekiel to meet Marcus afterward to get the drug. He said that Marcus still had no idea about their plan. Suddenly, a new prospect of the Mayans, Steve, dropped several glasses. He was known clumsy and often tripped and caused minor annoyances to the club. At the prison, a woman named Vicky met Alicia, the drug courier who had been caught by the police. Vicky suggested Alicia to tell the police about the motorcycle club who had sent her to transport the heroin so that she would get her prison sentence reduced. Bishop and Ezekiel finally arrived at Marcus's house. When they arrived there, Marcus and his wife greeted them. Marcus knew about the problem that Bishop was facing with other Mayan kings. Bishop said that he came there to ask for 250 kilograms drug to give to Ramos and Kanch. He didn't tell him about his actual plan to use that drug to destroy those two Mayan kings. Marcus granted his wish and told him to get the drug. With that being done, Bishop was determined to execute their plan that night. At Miguel's house, Erin was doing her job well to look after Cristobal, Miguel, and Emily's son. Even though Erin was an aimless drifter, she turned out to do the job better than Emily herself. After the effect of the drug that was injected into his bloodstream began to disappear, Coco planned to run away from that place. But suddenly, the leader of the community stopped him. Coco couldn't do anything when that man and his friends teased and harassed him. After a while, those men finally let him go. Meanwhile, Angel and Ezekiel were walking down the tunnel. After a while, they finally arrived at the end of the tunnel, which was a house that was owned by an old woman named Beatrice. At the Mayans' headquarters, Coco apologized to his fellow crew because he had been disappeared for two days. He asked Gilly to help him to quit drugs. Not long after that, Happy and Domingo arrived in that place. They came to give a warning to the Mayans. They told them to notify them first if they wanted to enter the territory of the Sons of Anarchy. Turned out, they gave this warning because of the attack that the Mayans did on the VM another day. After they left, Bishop called Domingo a sneaky little bastard. Even though not all his crew supported his plan, he decided to execute his plan. He didn't care about the consequence of the plan for the bigger picture. After that, Angel and Ezekiel went to a construction site.
They met an associate of the Galindo cartel named Juan Denver there. Juan destroyed a roadblock to get the drug that was hidden inside it. He then gave the drug to Angel and Ezekiel. Emily and Aaron planned to take Christobel for sightseeing, but when they were about to leave, a man suddenly approached them and threw a can of drink at their car. Aaron was angry because of that. She got out of the car and threatened that man. Emily was traumatized at first, but she finally laughed when she saw her sister and that man getting into an argument. The Mayans visited Vicky at her brothel. Bishop asked Vicky to give her girls a day off because he needed to use that place to execute his plan. Vicky was mad when she heard that, but she couldn't do anything to reject his request. Angel and Ezekiel transported the 250 kilograms drug by using a carriage, but suddenly the tire of that carriage got broken. Those Ray's brothers then decided to transport the drug by carrying them on the back. Not long after that, they finally arrived at the end of the tunnel. The Mayans quickly helped them to take the drug to the car. When Coco had the drug, he was attempted to keep it for himself. But suddenly, Gilly noticed that there were police cars approaching their location. The Mayans panicked when they saw them. They then decided to take the drug back to the tunnel. While the Mayans were taking the drug to the tunnel, Steve approached and stopped those police officers to buy some time for his club. The Mayans finally managed to avoid being raided. But because of those police officers, Bishop couldn't execute his plan that night. He was worried if Marcus and other Mayan kings found out about what he was actually doing. Even though Coco was trying to quit drugs, he finally came to see Hope again to receive another drug injection. Suddenly, the leader of the community came to that place and took a picture of Coco. He planned to use that picture to use and threaten him. After the failed execution of his plan, Bishop visited Antonia in her house. It seemed that two of them had a special relationship. Meanwhile, Ezekiel was taking Gabriella home. When Angel returned home, he was surprised to see Adelita there. He couldn't believe that he could see her again. He asked where their baby was, and Adelita said that their baby was dead. The next morning, the Mayans had a meeting. In that meeting, Bishop wondered about the person who had reported them to the police officers. Taza believed that Alicia was the one who did it. He thought that she was pressured by the police officers in the prison into opening her mouth. But Ezekiel thought that Vicky was the one who reported them to the police. His argument was that Vicky had been holding a grudge against them because they found the tunnel. And especially after Riz died, it was obvious that Vicky didn't like them even more. Gilly agreed with Ezekiel's opinion. He thought that Vicky was the one who would benefit the most from the Mayans' downfall. After Bishop heard their opinions, he ordered Ezekiel to go see Alicia and find information from her. Then he discussed about the 250 kilograms drug that they still hid in the tunnel. He planned to transport that drug through the bridge on the River Kwai. The Mayans were surprised when they heard his plan. Transporting drug through that bridge had full of the possibility of danger and failure because the soldiers and the government drones were everywhere. But Bishop decided to stick to his plan because they couldn't find another way to do it. Domingo came to an abandoned building. Turned out, he met with El Palo there. El Palo planned to take revenge for the death of his crew by pitting the Mayans against the Sons of Anarchy. He suggested Domingo to have a war on the Mayans, but Domingo disagreed with him because he thought that the war didn't make money. El Palo then said that he would call the Scottish if the Mayans managed to get away after killing a member of the Sons of Anarchy. Domingo admitted that he had prepared another plan for the Mayans. He said that he was working with the SAMD I know to watch the Mayans. When he tried to grab some money from his wallet, El Palo suddenly suffocated him with a plastic bag. Domingo died because of that. The governor Palomo and her bodyguards went to a location where three her employees were found hanged. They thought that the Lobos new generation was the one who did it. At the prison, while waiting for Alicia, Ezekiel had a flashback of the time when he was serving his sentence in the prison. Not long after that, Alicia came to meet him. Alicia told him that she didn't tell anyone about the Mayans even though that prison was held to her. She said that Vicky was the only person who knew that the Mayans were behind the drug smuggling. Before leaving, Ezekiel suggested Alicia to forget about her dreams and hopes while she was still in the prison to help her to get through her days. He said that nobody should be allowed to get her down. 
After Palomo found out about the horrible incident, she complained to Miguel. She said that Miguel was supposed to control the situation in that area. After Philip recovered from his illness, he went back to work at his butcher shop. He asked Gabriela to help him to work there. At the Mayans' headquarters, Coco was surprised when he saw Butterfly and the leader of his community there. They came to that place to force Coco to steal 14 kilograms drug from the Mayans. They threatened to send his picture to the Mayans if Coco refused to do what they asked. Ezekiel returned to the Mayans' headquarters and told Bishop that Alicia wasn't the one who betrayed them. He said that if Alicia reported them to the police, she would have been placed in an isolated cell and worn a uniform in a different color. At home, Miguel lashed out at Emily for packing his mother's things without his permission. Steve knocked at Vicky's door and asked her to go to the Mayans' headquarters with him. Vicky told him to wait and went to the tunnel instead. But turned out, Creeper and Taza were already in that place. Taza killed her immediately when he saw her there. Ezekiel took Gabriella to his trailer. While they were kissing, Ezekiel suddenly had another flashback of the time when he was serving his sentence in the prison. Meanwhile, Angel was sleeping with Adelita in his house. He asked Adelita about what their baby looked like. Gilly caught Coco trying to use drug again and scolded him for that. When Taza was hanging out at the porch, he suddenly noticed that there was a dead body on a motorcycle there. He was surprised when he found out that it was Domingo's dead body. After making sure that nobody had seen Domingo's dead body there, he took the body to the drum and covered it all with concrete. The next morning, Angel saw Adelita sleeping on the floor. He left Adelita there and went to Philip's house to get something. At the Mayans' headquarters, Ezekiel asked Bishop to be on the front line during this mission. He said that he was ready to receive the consequence that he might receive if he got caught, which was getting an indeterminate prison sentence. At home, when Miguel went through his late mother's belongings, he found an old picture there. At the Mayans' headquarters, Gilly refused to be sent on a mission with Coco. Ezekiel then stepped in and asked Bishop to send Coco with him. In her office, a lawyer named Laura was surprised when she saw Taza there. It had been years since they met each other. At Angel's house, Adelita finally woke up from her sleep. When she woke up, she saw Angel already sitting beside her. Angel showed her a ring and proposed to her. He asked her to stop doing what she was doing right now and start a new life with him. He gave her time to think about everything. Miguel came to Philippe's butcher shop and asked Felipe about the picture that he showed him. Felipe told him that he once fell in love with his mother. At Park, Laura showed the picture of her son, David, to Taza. She said that David looked like him. It wasn't revealed yet about what relationship that David and Laura had, but apparently, Laura was the sister of El Palo, but she hadn't seen El Palo for 20 years because she hated him for murdering their brother. At the butcher shop, Philip told Miguel about the story of his affair with Miguel's mother and the time where they were happy together. Not long after that, Gabriela came to that shop. Miguel then said that he needed to go. Before leaving, Philip hugged him tight, as if he wanted to tell him that he was his biological father. In another place, three members of the Lobos' new generation came to see Juan. They questioned him if the site belonged to Miguel, but as usual, Juan replied with some Denver lyrics. Tired of the confusing scenario, they finally executed him. At the border, some children were playing fireworks to distract the attention of the border guards. Those children were ordered by the Mayans because they needed to smuggle drug through the bridge. The Mayans arrived at the bridge and quickly set up the bridge so Ezekiel and Coco could use it to transport the drug. But suddenly, they had a problem. Turned out, the government had raised the level of the bridge so they couldn't get on the bridge easily. Ezekiel quickly grabbed the spare tire and used it to help their car to get on the bridge. Meanwhile, on another side, Steve was watching the border guards. He told his crew that they only got one minute left. Ezekiel's strategy finally worked. He managed to get his car on the bridge and take the drug to Mexico. Coco told Ezekiel that he would go to the back of the car to fix the tarpaulin that came loose, but turned out it was only his excuse to steal one kilogram drug, which he quickly hid under his shirt. After a while, Ezekiel and Coco finally arrived at the meeting place. Ezekiel handed the drug over to the president of the Mayans Charter Tuxen. 
At Angel's house, Adelita shaved her head until she was bald. She smiled when she saw the result on the mirror. As soon as Ezekiel and Coco returned to the Mayans' headquarters, Coco left the car and rushed to some place. Ezekiel joined other Mayans in the living room. Bishop was there and was very proud of him. At night, Marcus and Nestor arrived at the construction site. They were surprised when they found their drug shipment destroyed and Juan's burnt corpse there. They also noticed that there was LNG written on the wall. It meant that the Lobos Sonora cartel, or Lobos New Generation, was the one who did it. It was a warning message from them to the Galindo cartel. When the president of the Mayans charter Tuxin returned to his headquarters, he was surprised to see Ramos and Canchi's crew had been waiting for him there. In another place, Tassa came to see Laura again to ask her about El Palo's whereabouts. But Laura said that she totally had no idea about where her brother was. Ezekiel apologized to Gabriella because he hadn't made time for her. He said that he wanted to talk to her and offered her a ride home. Coco came to the Butterflies community and gave the leader of the community the one kilogram drug that he had stolen from the Mayans. At home, Angel looked for Adelita, but he couldn't find her anywhere. He only saw the ring that he gave to her earlier on the desk. He was angry and sad because of that. Gabriella finally agreed to be taken home by Ezekiel. On their way to her house, they stopped to buy some snacks. But suddenly, a man approached Ezekiel and tried to kill him. Ezekiel managed to attack him first, but unfortunately, he got shot in the stomach. Gabriella panicked when she saw that. She took Ezekiel to the hospital immediately so he could receive medical treatment before he lost so much blood. Bishop woke up and received a call from his crew. His crew informed him that a member of the Mayans charter Stockton had shot Ezekiel. After he heard that, he came to the hospital immediately. When he arrived there, he saw Angel trying to attack Flacco, a member of the Mayans charter Stockton who tried to kill Ezekiel. But his crew and the police officers there stopped him. Fortunately, Ezekiel managed to survive because he didn't get shot in a vital organ. His condition was also getting better day by day. Angel was still angry because of what Flacco did to his brother. He wanted to take revenge on him by shooting him to death. Bishop suggested Ezekiel to stay away from the club's life for a while. Meanwhile, he and his crew were going to think about their next plan. Ezekiel then asked Gabriella to leave the hospital with him. At Miguel's house, Marcus informed his boss about the attack that the Lobos New Generation did at their construction site. He said that the Lobos New Generation didn't steal anything, but they destroyed everything in that place and even killed a worker there. After Miguel heard that, he said that he would take care of this problem by himself. Then, Marcus received information about the internal conflict that happened within the Mayans. After he hanged up, he told Nestor that he needed his help. When Ezekiel prepared to leave the town, Emily suddenly came to his trailer and hugged him. Emily was worried about him after she heard about what happened to him. Then, she saw Gabriella in the trailer. She suddenly felt jealous and decided to leave that place. At the hospital, Angel drew his gun and headed to Flaco's room angrily. He wanted to shoot that man to death. But when he arrived at Flaco's room, he saw Nestor and his co-worker already guarding that place. Nestor told him that Marcus was the one who sent them there. Angel still insisted on entering Flaco's room, but Gilly and Creeper stopped him. They tried to calm him down and asked him to leave that place with them. Turned out, Adelita went to a camp where abandoned children usually gathered. She was looking for Minnie there. Marcus came to see Bishop to talk about their problem, but instead of finding the solution, they got into an argument and blamed each other. Bishop said that he had sacrificed everything for their club, but those two clowns, Ramos and Kanch, ruined everything by harassing him and his crew. Marcus warned him not to mess with them anymore, but Bishop wasn't afraid of his threat. Meanwhile, Coco was spending time with Hope and other drug addicts at Butterfly's community's camp. It seemed that it would be harder for him to quit drugs, especially to consider that he and Hope were getting closer to each other. On their way to another town, Ezekiel and Gabriella stopped to change Ezekiel's bandage. While Gabriella was helping Ezekiel to change his bandage, Ezekiel told her about his ex-girlfriend, Emily. 
but Gabriella didn't really care about her and said that the most important thing for her right now was Ezekiel's health condition. After looking for a while, Adelita finally managed to find Minnie. She saw that girl sleeping on a pickup truck with other children. Miguel came to see Palomo and accused her of working with the Lobos New Generation. Palomo denied his accusation and played along. They should keep pretending that they were a government official and a criminal because there were many people watching them. Gabriella felt touched when Ezekiel took her to a beach. She had been dreaming of visiting beach for a long time. Gabriella and Ezekiel then spent some time at that beach. Isaac, the leader of the community, approached Coco and forced him to steal three kilograms drug for him. He threatened that he would burn Hope alive if Coco refused to do what he asked. At the restaurant, Antonia met with Bishop. She told him that she planned to leave the town because she kept being haunted by their past. Then, she gave a letter to Bishop and asked him to sign the letter so she could get rid of Bishop's names from all her asset and property. Bishop was mad at her. He said that it was supposed to be her who died back then and not him. Turned out, Creeper was still at the hospital. He saw Flacco and his crew getting out of Flacco's room and informed Bishop about it immediately. After Bishop received that information, he called Angel and told him to take action now. Nestor and his co-worker were guarding the car that was used by Flacco and his friend. Not long after that, Angel and Gilly caught up with that convoy. Suddenly, Angel approached Flacco's car and killed Flacco and his friend with his gun. Nestor didn't do anything and let him go when he saw that. At the beach, Ezekiel received a text message from his brother. Angel informed him that the Mayans were going to war. A member of the Mayans charter Stockton named Geta visited Flaco's mother in her house. But suddenly, Angel and Gilly came to that place and attacked him. They forced him to tell him about Ramos's whereabouts. In another place, the Mayans from other charters were collecting money from a tattooist. But suddenly, Bishop and his crew came to that place and attacked them. Even though they had beaten them up and destroyed that place, those Mayans from other charters refused to tell them about Ramos's whereabouts. After Ezekiel recovered from his illness, he finally returned to his club. Bishop ordered Gilly to tell the Mayans charter Tuxen that they were going to have a meeting soon to discuss about their next plan. When Steve tried to join other Mayans in the meeting, a Mayan suddenly stopped him. As a prospect, they ordered him to wait outside and guard that place while they were having a meeting. Ezekiel approached him and encouraged him to stay strong. He said that he needed to get through all this to become an official member of the Mayans. Leticia was glad because Coco finally returned home, but she was soon worried about him because he seemed sick. Diaz and his crew from the Mayans charter Oakland came to see Bishop. Diaz told Bishop that Ramos called him and asked him for help. He also mentioned about how he and Marcus established the Mayans Motorcycle Club after the Sons of Anarchy and other racist motorcycle clubs refused to accept them as their members. He accused Bishop of creating the internal conflict within the Mayans because he and his crew ruined their firearm business with the SANCRO and killed the members of the VM. Bishop said that he didn't care about Ramos and Canch, who had harassed him and his crew. He didn't even care about the Galindo cartel and Marcus anymore. He then asked Diaz to make the Mayans Motorcycle Club great again. But he said that in order to do that, the first thing that they must do was destroying Ramos. He said that there was no other way to do that. After Diaz heard that, it seemed that he agreed to work with Bishop. At home, Leticia asked him to quit drugs but Coco said that he couldn't do that now. Leticia was mad and disappointed when she heard that. She hoped his father had an overdose and died because of it. Adelita returned to the Los Alvedados' headquarters. She took Minnie with her. Pablo was surprised but happy to see her there. Turned out, Adelita couldn't forgive Pablo for neglecting Minnie. She then stabbed Pablo in the stomach with a knife. Pablo died instantly because of that. After Pablo died, Adelita automatically took control of the Los Alvedados again. In another place, Diaz asked Bishop to wait for a while before they went to attack Ramos. Bishop and his crew had prepared the weapons and ammunition that they needed to attack Ramos. They had even loaded those weapons in the van. Before leaving, they gave a gun to Steve for the first time. 
When Angel was taking a piss, Ramos's crew suddenly came to that place and attacked them. Bishop's crew were surprised with that sudden attack. Turned out, Diaz had betrayed them by telling Ramos about their plan and trapping them there. Ramos' crew beat Steve up and tried to attack Ezekiel, but Ezekiel managed to attack them back. Not long after that, Angel and his crew returned to that place. They were surprised when they found out about what happened there and helped their fellow crew right away. Bishop was furious because Dias betrayed him. He took out his anger out on Dias and beat him up. While Steve was struggling because Ramos's crew kept beating him up, he suddenly attacked them with his gun. His abuser who got shot died instantly because of that. Not long after that, the police officers were approaching that place. All Mayans rushed to their motorcycle when they heard the police car siren. But Creeper decided to stay because he needed to rescue Pavia from Ramos' crew. Bishop and his crew finally managed to run away from the police officers. When they arrived in a safe place, Ezekiel said that he knew how to destroy Ramos. Meanwhile, the police officers managed to capture some Mayans, including Creeper and Pavia. Suddenly, the corrupt detective Grady showed up and took Ramos with him. Ramos was confident that Grady would help him to release him. At Coco's house, Coco received a visit from Hope. Hope said that Isaac didn't know that she came to his house. She and Coco then consumed drug together there. In the car, Ramos asked Grady to remove his handcuffs. Grady then stopped the car and jammed the music. But suddenly, Ezekiel came to that place and shot Ramos right in the head. Ramos died instantly because of that. Ezekiel decided to kill him because he had sent Flacco to kill him. After that, he left that place. Turned out, Grady was willing to help Ezekiel and his crew because he had owed them his life. When Letitia returned home, she was surprised to find her father lying unconscious on the couch. Turned out, Coco had an overdose. When Hope woke up from her sleep, she found out that Coco had an overdose. She quickly injected something into Coco's body to save his life. Fortunately, Coco managed to be saved. At the Mayans' headquarters, Nails told Trank that she was pregnant, but she didn't say who the father of her unborn baby was. Trank felt bad for her, so he said that he would help her. Gabriella told Ezekiel that she got into nursing school, which had been her dream for quite some time. But the problem was that nursing school was outside the town. It meant that it would be hard for Ezekiel to see Gabriella if she attended that school. At home, Angel was missing Adelita and their baby, but he finally decided to throw all Adelita's stuff in his house because he didn't want to have any hope for her anymore. Miguel and Emily's relationship was finally getting better after Miguel accepted his mother's death. At home, Coco promised his daughter that he would stop consuming drug, but he said that he couldn't do this by himself because he needed her and hope to support her. Letitia was mad when Coco mentioned Hope's name. She didn't like her because she almost lost her father because of that woman. At Philippe's house, the Reyes family and Gabriella had a lunch together. Everyone seemed happy and enjoyed their lunch except Angel. Angel, who was drunk, began to blabbered on and on and ruined their lunch. Philip tried to stop him, but he couldn't stop being a jerk. El Palo came to the Lobos New Generation's headquarters to offer a deal. He claimed that this deal would make El Banquero, the leader of the Lobos New Generation, become richer than his rival, Miguel Galindo. At home, Miguel received the call from the hospital. He was surprised when the hospital informed him about the result of the autopsy that had been performed on his mother. At the Mayans' headquarters, Bishop was mad at Angel for coming late to the meeting. He was even more mad at Coco, who was skipping the meeting again. He threatened to kick him out of the club if he skipped the next meeting. Tucson was invited to that meeting. They were discussing about their next target, Kanch, because of what happened to their club recently, from the internal conflict within the Mayans to the death of Ramos and his crew. Tucson told them Kanch was considered as the future of the Mayans. After Bishop and his crew heard that, they agreed to get rid of Kanch. They thought that there was only one Mayan king who deserved to lead the Mayans, who was Bishop. Laura came to the Mayans' headquarters to apologize to Taza for blaming him for the death of David, her brother. She realized that the blame was on her, as she was the one who told El Paolo about David's sexuality, which led to David being murdered by El Paolo.
Before leaving, Laura gave David's necklace to Taza. Miguel visited his former subordinate in her house. He went to that place to find more information about his mother, since that woman used to be very close to her mother. His former subordinate told him that Miguel's mother was afraid of Emily who got involved in Felipe's family's business. After that, Miguel came to Nestor's house. He told Nestor that his mother was most likely murdered because the autopsy result showed that there were strangulation injuries around his mother's neck. When Nestor heard that, he remembered that he saw tire tracks at the mountain where they found Dida's burnt body. At home, Angel received a visit from Nails. Nails came to his house to tell him that she was pregnant with his baby. Hope finally decided to leave Coco because she thought that she was unable to help him. At the Lobos New Generation's headquarters, El Banquero executed someone. El Palo was also there and watched the execution. He told El Banquero that he knew that the Galindo family had murdered his uncle. Because of that, he offered him a chance to take revenge on the Galindo family and to seize the Galindo family's territories. In the evening, Ezekiel and Gabriella were going on a date. They went to an ice cream shop. When Gabriella was trying to order an ice cream, two men suddenly harassed her. Because of that, Gabriella canceled her plan to get the ice cream. Ezekiel was angry at those two men when he found out that they had harassed his girlfriend. While he was beating those men up, he accidentally hit Gabriella, who tried to stop him. Not long after that, the police officers came to that place and arrested him. After that incident, Ezekiel had to spend his time in his cell. At home, Emily was treating the wound on her neck that she got after Miguel strangled her. She was happy to see that wound because she thought that her sexual relationship with her husband was getting better. After that, she took her sedative. Ezekiel was finally being released from the prison after Angel paid for his ransom. Turned out, Angel did that because he felt guilty for ruining their lunch with Gabriella another day. He said that he was not in his right mind that day because Adelita visited him in his house and told him that she lost their baby. He also said that he had proposed to her and asked her to live with him, but Adelita chose to leave him. Then he told Ezekiel that Nails was pregnant with his baby. He promised that he wouldn't waste his second chance to be a father. At home, Coco was struggling to fight the symptoms of his drug withdrawal. He covered his body with a blanket and sat beside his daughter. But when Letitia told him that Hope was gone, Coco suddenly got up and rushed to his car. He said that he needed to find Hope soon because he was afraid that Isaac and his crew killed her. In another place, Bishop promised Tucson that he would find and kill Kanch soon so their club could get back to normal. At the Lobos New Generation's headquarters, Kanch, El Palo, and the Lobos New Generation had a meeting. El Palo was the one who asked Kanchi to come to that place because he wanted to offer him a deal. He asked Kanchi to work with them to destroy their enemies and do drug business together. He said that they would use Yuma as their new route to smuggle drugs to the United States. At Miguel's house, Erin was surprised when she saw the wound on Emily's neck. She was mad at Miguel and called him tons of shit because she thought that Miguel had hurt her sister. Emily was mad at her for insulting her husband. She and Aaron then got into an argument. Aaron finally decided to storm off after Emily said that Aaron was only there for her money. Marcus finally arrived in a location where Miguel asked him to meet him. But before he got out of his car, he prepared his gun. He was afraid if Miguel would execute him there. But turned out, Miguel asked him to come to that place to give him an order to kill Ezekiel. He thought that his wife Emily had ordered Ezekiel to kill his mother. He said that if Marcus was really loyal to him, that he needed to kill Ezekiel for him. Ezekiel visited Gabriella in her house to apologize to her about the incident at the ice cream shop. He said that he had no intention of hurting her. Gabriella got out of her house and talked to him. She said that it was better for them to end their relationship because she would return to her family in Lodi. At the Los Alvedados headquarters, Adelita asked Minnie to become the new leader of the Los Alvedados to replace her when she was gone. She told her to destroy the people who had betrayed them, who were Miguel and the Governor Palomo. At the Mayans' headquarters, before the meeting began, Trank approached Nails and asked her to have a dinner with him at his house. Steve asked Ezekiel if he had time to talk. He told him that he kept thinking about the murder that he accidentally committed by shooting the Ramos' crew that night.
Ezekiel told him to forget about it because it was the world where they were living in. Afterward, the Mayans asked Steve to take off his vest. Turned out, they decided to welcome Steve to their club as the official member of the Mayans. But instead of being happy like he thought he would be, Steve was feeling empty. At Miguel's house, while Emily was taking a bath, Miguel poured a glass of wine for her. But apparently, he had mixed that wine with a large amount of sedative. At the Mayans' headquarters, while the Mayans were having a party, Angel suddenly announced that he had proposed to Nails. Trank was heartbroken when he heard that because he had a crush on Nails. After drinking a few glasses of wine, Emily finally fell to sleep. Miguel then used that chance to drown her in the bathtub. But after a while, he finally changed his mind and saved her by taking her to the bed. While Paloma was delivering a speech, a member of Los Alvedados suddenly tried to attack her with a knife. But Palomo's bodyguard managed to stop that boy before he had the chance to attack Palomo. After that, Palomo went to the restroom. She was surprised when she saw Adelita and Minnie in that place. Adelita aimed her gun at her and said that she couldn't let a traitor like her live anymore. After she said that, Minnie suddenly stabbed Palomo with a knife for several times. Palomo finally died because of that. In another place, Isaac held Coco captive and tortured him. He injected another drug into his bloodstream and damaged his brain with the drug so they could exploit him for their personal gain. When Laura returned home, she was surprised to see her brother El Paolo there. She couldn't believe that her brother found her and visited her after a long time. At the Mayans' headquarters, contrary to his fellow crew who enjoyed the party, Steve became more and more unhappy. Suddenly, he put his gun into his mouth and killed himself with it. All Mayans in that place were shocked and horrified when they saw that. Not long after the police officers arrived, Ezekiel decided to leave that place. In another place, Adelita said goodbye to Minnie. Ezekiel came to Gabriella's house and told Gabriella that he would come with her to Lodi. The next morning, he was spending his time with Gabriella in his trailer. He planned to go to the Mayans' headquarters afterward to take care of some business and say goodbye to the club. After that, he and Gabriella could leave the town together. At home, Miguel was surprised when he read the news about Palomo, who had been murdered. Not long after that, Emily woke up from her sleep. She suffered from great headache and didn't remember about what happened to her another night. When she tried to take her sedative, she noticed that she had lost a large amount of sedative. She then checked the wine glass that she used before and saw the medicine stain there. Emily realized that Miguel had mixed the wine with her sedative and tried to kill her. Before leaving, Marcus removed the ring of the Mayans from his finger. When he got out of his house, he saw Nestor had been waiting for him there. Then, two of them got into the car and left. It was a big day for them because they had an important job to do. At a car repair shop that was owned by the Mayans Charter Stockton, a beautiful young woman came to that place and asked them to repair her car. After that, that woman left that place. Turned out, she had planted a bomb in the trunk of that car. Bishop and his crew were the ones who ordered her to do that. Not far from that place, Ezekiel, Angel, and Gilly were waiting in their car and watching the situation there. They were waiting for Kanshi to come to the car repair shop and planning to denotate the bomb that they had planted as soon as he was there. At the Mayans' headquarters, Taza received a call from Laura. Laura asked him to give her a gun because she was afraid of her brother who visited her. Taza asked her to calm down and call him if El Palo came to her house again. At a restaurant, Lincoln's former assistant was surprised when Adelita suddenly showed up and sat in front of her. She was even more surprised when she noticed that Adelita had a gun with her. She knew that she couldn't do anything if Adelita did something to her. Adelita finally decided to give her a chance after she found out that she was a mother too, but she threatened to kill her if she didn't tell her about Lincoln's address. Lincoln's former assistant then grabbed a paper and a pen from her bag. She could have grabbed her gun instead, but she chose not to do it. After waiting for a while, Ezekiel Angel and Gilly finally saw Kanchi arriving at the car repair shop. But they had a problem because Kanchi went to that car repair shop with his child. Angel said that he didn't want to kill a child, so he suggested them to cancel their plan. Ezekiel suddenly had an idea. He asked Gilly to give him the phone, 
which was the remote control for detonating the bomb. Then he got out of the car and sneaked into the area. He peeked through the window to check on the child. But unfortunately, Kanchi saw him there. When Angel went check on his brother, that car repair shop suddenly exploded. Ezekiel, Angel, and Gilly then left that place immediately. When they returned to the Mayans' headquarters, other Mayans informed them about the condition of Kanchi and his child. They said that Kanchi's child suffered from many injuries, but he managed to survive. Meanwhile, their target, Kanchi, died in the explosion. The Mayans were so happy to know that Kanchi was dead. They soon celebrated their victory by sharing a drink. With Ramos and Kanch being dead, Bishop was the only Mayan king left now. After that, Ezekiel told his brother about his plan to quit the club because he wanted to leave the town with Gabriela. Suddenly, Letitia came to the Mayans' headquarters. She asked Gilly to help her to save her father. Even though Coco was a drug addict and no longer a member of the Mayans, Letitia knew that she could ask Gilly for help because Gilly was Coco's best friend. Meanwhile, Marcus and Nestor were waiting in the car that they parked in front of Philip's butcher shop. They waited for Ezekiel to arrive there. Suddenly, Nestor received a call from Miguel. Miguel reminded him again about what he needed to do if Marcus refused to kill Ezekiel. Emily came to Ezekiel's trailer to ask Ezekiel to help her with what she was going through. But when she found out that Ezekiel had packed his bags and planned to leave the town with Gabriella, she canceled her plan to ask for help. Gabriella came to Philippe's butcher shop to say goodbye to Felipe. Philippe gave her last salary and a necklace to her. That necklace was left by Ezekiel's mother. Then, Gabriella told him that Ezekiel would come with her to Lodi. Philip was surprised when he heard that. He disagreed with Ezekiel's decision because he was afraid if the same thing that happened to him and his late wife happened to Ezekiel and Gabriella. Back then, Philip's wife also did what Ezekiel wanted to do with Gabriella. But instead of being happy, she ended up being killed in a tragedy. Philip didn't want the same thing to happen to Gabriella, so he asked her to let Ezekiel go for their own happiness. In another place, Tucson had a meeting with the presidents of the Mayans from other charters, including Diaz, who was severely beat up after Bishop attacked him. In that meeting, they finally decided to recognize Bishop as the only Mayan king for the stability and the future of the Mayans. Then, Diaz got up and helped Tucson put his vest on. But when Tucson turned his back, Diaz suddenly shot him in the head. Tucson died instantly because of that. At home, Miguel suddenly received a call from Lincoln. Even though Lincoln was taking a long break from work, he said that he knew about everything that happened, including the conspiracy between the Lobos New Generation and Palomo to destroy the Galindo cartel and Miguel's betrayal of their agreement. Lincoln was angry when he found out about the latter. Because of that, he decided to confiscate all Miguel's property at the border. He also said that the federal agents were on their way to arrest Miguel. Miguel was surprised when he heard that. As soon as he hanged up, he called Emily and told her to pack her bags quickly. He also told her to go to their safe deposit box. Ezekiel finally arrived at Felipe's butcher shop. Marcus, who saw him there, asked Nestor to wait until Ezekiel got out of that butcher shop because he didn't want to kill Ezekiel in front of his father. At the butcher shop, Ezekiel asked his father about Gabriella. He was surprised when his father said that he had told Gabriella to leave by herself for their own happiness. Ezekiel then left the butcher shop and rode away. Nestor and Marcus followed him immediately. Marcus had prepared his gun to execute Ezekiel. But when he saw the vest of the Mayans that Ezekiel wore, he suddenly changed his mind and let Ezekiel go. Because of that, Nestor aimed his gun at him. Marcus said that it was up to Nestor to make the decision for himself whether Nestor wanted to keep becoming a subordinate or become a leader for himself. When Ezekiel arrived at Gabriella's house, he found out that Gabriella had left. There was only a letter in the door that Gabriella left for him there. Tassa came to Laura's house to give Laura a gun that she asked, but turned out El Paolo was already there aiming his gun at Taza. When El Paolo tried to execute Taza, Taza suddenly attacked him back. The two of them then got into a fight. Suddenly, Laura shot her own brother in the head. El Paolo died instantly because of that. Before leaving, Taza removed the vest of the Mayans from El Paolo's dead body.
While Lincoln was spending time with his wife and child, Adelita suddenly showed up in that place. Lincoln was surprised to see her there. Afraid that Adelita would take revenge on him by hurting his wife and child, he told Adelita that her baby was still alive. He said that his former assistant should have told her about this since she knew. He threatened that Adelita would never see her baby again if she hurt him and his family. In another place, Miguel tried to call Nestor and Marcus, but they didn't answer his call. Turned out, Marcus and Nestor decided to abort their mission. They refused to answer Miguel's call, especially after they found out that the federal agents were after Miguel. Not long after that, Miguel's subordinate came to see him. Miguel was surprised when he found out that Emily decided not to come with him. Instead of coming with her husband, Emily came to Aaron's house to ask for help. Meanwhile, Coco was still being held captive and tortured by Isaac. But suddenly, Gilly came to that place and began to blow up some trailers there. After Gilly saved him, Coco asked Hope to come with him. But Hope refused to do that because she didn't want to become a bad influence for him. Coco and Gilly then headed out of that place, but they soon came back and killed Isaac. After that, they left that place and took Hope with them. At the Mayans' headquarters, Ezekiel finally decided to return to the club because it was his home after all. Afterward, Taza had a private conversation with Bishop. Taza finally confessed to Bishop that he had killed Riz at the hospital so that the Mayans agreed to attack El Palo and his club, the VM. He then gave his gun to Bishop and asked him to execute him for his punishment. While Ezekiel was hanging out at the porch by himself, the Mayans from other charters suddenly arrived and attacked that place. Ezekiel was surprised when he saw that. Mayans MC Season 4 began with the Mayans from other charters attacking the clubhouse of the Sando Padre Charter. Angel saw his brother struggling alone outside the building. So, he quickly took him to the building before the enemies had the chance to kill him. In the meeting room, turned out, Bishop didn't execute Taza for his punishment. He just beat him up because he was furious after he found out about what Taza did to Riz. The situation in that place was so tense as hundreds of the Mayans from other charters raided that place. They were angry at Bishop and his crew for attacking Kanch. Ezekiel and Trank climbed the roof of the building and attacked them from there. But unluckily, Trank got shot in the leg. Another member of their club also got shot by that angry crowd and died because of that. The rest of their crew then built a defensive wall by using the objects that they could find in that room to strengthen their place against the enemy's attack. The situation in that place was getting more tense as the enemies kept firing their bullets at the building to kill Bishop and his crew. A worker in that clubhouse wanted to call the police, but Bishop prevented her from doing so. Since there was a power outage, Bishop and his crew could only use candles and flashlights to illuminate that place. They realized that they couldn't defeat the enemies with the weapons and ammunition that they had. Because of that, they made as many as Molotov cocktails that they could by using bottles and blankets to minimize the use of their ammunition. Creeper said that he would go to the warehouse to take some shooting lamps and the power generator. When Ezekiel climbed the roof of the building again, a member of the Mayans charter Yuma named Manny suddenly attacked him. He and Manny then got into a fight. Ezekiel finally managed to defeat him and push him off the roof. Meanwhile, Angel was attacking their enemies who tried to climb the gate. When Ezekiel ignited a Molotov cocktail, his sleeve suddenly caught on fire. In the warehouse, Creeper killed an enemy who entered that place. The fierce gun battle between the Mayans Charter South California and the Mayans from other charters was still going on until midnight. Creeper was even struggling to take the patrol can from the warehouse, but even though he got shot, he still managed to drive the pickup truck and use it to block the gate. After that, he returned to the main building and received treatment for his gunshot wound. After leaving Isaac's community, Coco asked Gilly to take him to the Mayans' headquarters because he wanted to talk to Bishop. When they arrived there, they were surprised to see what was going on in that place. After they watched the situation from the gate, Gilly asked Coco to help their fellow crew who got trapped in the main building. They then went to the van to take some weapons and ammunition. But before they managed to do so, the enemy saw them and blew up their van. In the main building, Bishop and his crew set up some shooting lamps to blind their enemies. 
Nails' friend decided to get out the main building and tried to run away from that place, but unluckily, she got shot by the enemies. While Bishop and his crew were busy attacking their enemies back, Taza was just sitting around and drinking by himself. Bishop was getting angrier at him when he saw that. Not long after that, they heard the sound of footsteps on the roof. They aimed their firearms at the roof hatch because they thought that it was their enemies, but turned out it was Gilly and Coco. Suddenly, dozens of enemies arrived at their porch and attacked them from there. Bishop and his crew attacked them back immediately. After a while, they finally managed to defeat them. The remained enemies decided to retreat and discuss about their next strategy at the gate. But Bishop and his crew got a problem because they ran out of their ammunition. As the leader of the club, Bishop admitted that he didn't have any plan to overcome this situation. His crew was surprised and scared when they heard that. They didn't want to die in vain. When the sun rose, they couldn't use the shooting lamps to distract the enemies anymore. Because of that, it was obvious that all of them would die if the enemies returned and attacked them again. Feeling frustrated of the situation, Bishop took out his anger on Coco and Gilly. He was mad at them because they came late to the headquarters. Coco said that he had a problem with his daughter and Gilly came to help him. Suddenly, their enemies gathered in front of the main building. They shouted Ezekiel's name and cheered for the Mayans. Angel was worried when he saw them. He asked Nails to kill herself if they managed to enter the main building because he didn't want to see them hurting her. Afraid that he might get killed that night, Trank called his mother to hear her voice for the last time. Bishop and his crew were feeling desperate because of the situation. It seemed that they didn't care if they died that night. Ezekiel asked Bishop again about his plan, and Bishop answered that they would fight them off until they died. But Ezekiel disagreed with his plan because there were many innocent people who got trapped in their headquarters. Then he suddenly got up and told the enemies that he would give himself to them if they let his crew go. He asked them to forgive his crew because they were the fellow members of the Mayans after all. After that, Ezekiel got out of the main building and gave himself to Kanchi who turned out to be alive. Not long after that, Angel and his crew followed him. They got out of the main building and gave themselves to the enemies. Kanchi and his crew then began to beat them up before executing them. Kanchi was furious at them because his child had to suffer greatly because of the attack that Ezekiel did on them back then. He was also mad because three members of his club died in that explosion. Because of that, he wanted to take revenge on Bishop and his crew. Kanchi and his crew then began to execute Bishop's crew. When they were about to execute Angel, Marcus suddenly came to that place. Marcus was furious at them, especially at his cousin Bishop, who had started the Civil War, to see what they were doing there. In anger and frustration, he shouted that the Mayans was his own club. Four months after the most crucial Civil War within the Mayans Motorcycle Club took place, the Mayans finally returned to their old life. Ezekiel was spending his time in his trailer, and Angel was expecting baby with his girlfriend Nails. Despite his new life with Nails, it seemed that Angel still couldn't forget about his firstborn baby and Adelita. Meanwhile, Coco returned to the Mayans and lived happily with his girlfriend, Hope. They both had quitted drugs. The clubhouse of the Santa Padre Charter was chosen as the central headquarters of the Mayans. Bishop was no longer the president of the Mayans since he had been demoted to vice president. Meanwhile, Marcus returned to the Mayans and reclaimed his position as president. That day, Bishop, Marcus, and the Mayans from other charters had a meeting. They were discussing about the new drug plan. Even though four months had passed since the civil war within the Mayans took place, it seemed that they still held a grudge against each other. Ezekiel then asked them about the Galindo cartel and Trank said that he presumed that they were dead. Marcus added that the Lobos New Generation or LNG was the cartel in power now. Because of that, he thought that Kanchi, the Yuma Pipeline, and the partnership with the LNG were the future of the club. Then, the club got into an argument again after Taza spoke up about the Santo Padre Charter. Marcus then kicked all of them out of the room before any physical fight could break out. After that, the Mayans hanged out at the bar. Kanchi's crew gave stink eye to Bishop, who was flirting with a woman named Trini, the widow of Geta, the Stockton Mayan who was killed by Bishop's crew. But their fellow member, a Yuma Mayan named Manny, 
who once got into a fight with Ezekiel on the roof, approached Ezekiel and asked him to make peace. He thought that there was no use for them to keep hating each other. Then Bishop sat with his crew and asked them to stand up to other charters if they messed with them. He asked his crew if they were with him, and Ezekiel said that he agreed if it was for the benefit of the club. Meanwhile, Coco was helping Gilly to repair the window of their clubhouse. It seemed that Coco had quit his role as the sniper of the club and started working as a repairman. While he and Gilly were repairing the clubhouse together, they had a little quarrel as usual. Felent came to Ezekiel's trailer to visit his son, but Ezekiel ignored him because he was still angry at him for telling Gabriella to leave him. In another place, the members of the Sons of Anarchy were having a meeting. They discussed about their fellow member, Domingo, who had been missing for months. They also discussed about the Mayans who trespassed their territory without their permission. They were mad at them because of that. They thought that the Mayans was on the brink of collapse because of the civil war within the Mayans. As their rival club, their job was only to pick up their bones after they finished killing each other. At the clubhouse, some members of the Oakland Charter harassed a worker named Jess. Jess became angry and stormed off because of that. While she was walking away from the clubhouse, she suddenly smelled something horrible in that place. She then walked toward the source of the smell, which was a black drum, and opened it. She was horrified when she saw the content of the drum. Ezekiel returned to his trailer with a dog that he had just adopted from an animal shelter. At the Mayans' headquarters, Taza still tried to apologize to Bishop for what he did to Riz. He said that he would always support Bishop no matter what, but Bishop harshly told him that he didn't need his help and asked him to stay away from him. Jess went to see her sister Jasmine. She showed her the vest of the Sons of Anarchy that she found inside the drum near the Mayans' headquarters. Trank visited Marcus at his house. He reported on the status of the club and told him that Bishop and some members of the club were still against peace. Because of that, he asked him to stay as the president. Ezekiel read the note that was brought by Angel. That note was left by Felib to him. While reading that note, Ezekiel suddenly had a flashback of his time in the prison. That time, after he spent some time in the solitary cell for stabbing a prisoner, a Mexican group took him and trained him to be ready for war at any time. Apparently, Emily was now working as a waitress at a restaurant. When she returned to her humble apartment, she counted every piece of money that she received as a tip. It seemed that she lived alone in that apartment. At night, Taza decided to cut his hair, the symbol of honor for his tribe. After Jess showed Jasmine the vest of the Sons of Anarchy that she found in the drum, Jasmine went to see her boyfriend, a member of the Sons of Anarchy. Jess and Jasmine then showed the vest to him. The leader of the LNG, Albanquero, took his employees hostages because he knew that one of them had stolen his watch. He finally found the perpetrator and executed him right away. After that, he talked to another hostage and said that he would raise his salary if he told him about the truth. When Ezekiel returned his trailer, he was surprised to see his dog messing up that place. Because of that, he returned to the animal shelter where he adopted that dog and asked an employee named Sophia to train his dog. After that, Ezekiel returned to the trailer with his dog. When he arrived there, he saw JJ, the gangster who trained him in the prison, waiting for him there. He asked him why he was there, and that gangster said that he just wanted to reconnect with Ezekiel and checked on him. At the Mayans' headquarters, Kalko lashed out at Angel because he didn't try to help him when he was struggling with his drug addiction. Not long after that, Kanchi and his crew arrived in that place. Meanwhile, El Banquero, or Ignacio, was discussing about his plan with his sister, Soldat. He said that he wanted to take their accountant, Randall, to Mexico because Randall was currently wanted by the American government. Soldat was mad when she heard that, she berated her brother for only having one accountant who was in charge of all LNG financials. El Banquero said that he would ask the Mayans to help him to smuggle Randall from the U.S. to Mexico. Apparently, after the disbandment of the Galindo cartel, many of Galindo's men joined the LNG. All asset and property that once belonged to the Galindo cartel were also taken over by El Banquero. At the Mayans' headquarters, Kanchi proposed the idea of working with El Banquero. He said that El Banquero asked them to smuggle the accountant of the LNG to Mexico, 
and would pay them a big amount of money for that. The Mayans were unsure about it because the American government would send the FBI to patrol the border if Randall got caught by the police. But suddenly, Ezekiel said that he and Angel would take the job. Manny said that he would join them. Then Bishop annoyed Marcus by accusing him of not being a leader. Because of that, Marcus forced him to cut off his Vice President Flash. After Bishop removed the Vice President Flash, Marcus passed it on to Ezekiel. Emily finally arrived at an apartment after she spent long time traveling by bus. Turned out, she came to that place to visit his son, who was being taken care by her sister Erin. In the meeting room, Marcus stated his likes of Ezekiel and Manny. He said that those young men were the future of their club. Apparently, after the disbandment of the Galindo cartel, Nestor was working as a security guard now. In another place, Adelita woke up in the back of a car parked under an overpass. It looked like she was looking for someone. It wasn't revealed yet if she was looking for her son or Miguel. She only had a notebook full of notations about a man's movements. When that man left, she followed him immediately. The accountant of the LNG, Randall, arrived at the Mayans' headquarters. Turned out he took his son, Noah, with him. Angel, Ezekiel, and Manny told him that they couldn't make the trip if he bought his son. But Kanchi soon arrived and assured them that Randall and his son would make the trip. Angel, Ezekiel, and Manny then began their journey to take Randall and Noah to Mexico. At home, Philip helped Nails to set up a baby crib for her unborn child. He was happy that he would have a grandchild soon. In the night, Ezekiel's team trekked through the desert. But suddenly, they saw a vehicle patrolling in that area. Because of that, they decided to stop and spend the night there. Before leaving Aaron's apartment, Emily reminded her sister about the emergency plan that they had made. She was worried if Miguel was still alive and would find them and take crystal ball from her. While resting in the desert, Angel, Ezekiel, and Manny talked about life before turned in for the night. Meanwhile, Marcus was visiting Nestor at his workplace. Adelita followed that man home. In her car, she watched him getting out of his car and went into his house. Back to the desert, when the teen fell asleep, Angel suddenly woke up because he heard some noise. He was horrified when he saw Randall trying to molest Noah. He drew his gun and shot Randall in the chest immediately. Manny and Ezekiel woke up when they heard the gunshot. Noah told the club that Randall was not his father, but only his friend. After Manny found out that Randall was molesting Noah, he fired another round into Randall's chest. Apparently, the former boss of the powerful Galindo cartel, Miguel, was still alive and well. He was working as a construction worker at a cemetery in an isolated place now. There was only a boy named Thomas who accompanied him there. At the Mayans' headquarters, Kenshi was angry when he found out that their mission to smuggle Randall to Mexico had failed. He asked the team about the person who had killed Randall. Ezekiel tried to take the fall for what happened in the desert, but Manny quickly admitted that he was responsible for the death of that child molester. Kanchi was furious because this incident ruined their relationship with the LNG. He said that all Ezekiel and his team had done was killing the LNG drug pipeline. But Marcus told him that the team did the right thing in killing a child molester like Randall. After the meeting, Marcus informed the club that they had a new prospect, who was his old friend Nestor. Meanwhile, Kanchi approached Manny and told him that it was the time for him to go home to the Yuma Charter. Marcus called Coco to the meeting room and asked him to go to the Oakland Charter to assist in repairing the rift between the charters. Before Kanchi left the clubhouse, Ezekiel approached him and said that he wanted to leave their past behind for the good of the club. But Kanchi said that he would never forgive him because he had hurt his child. Marcus called Ezekiel to the meeting room and showed him a book about the history and the laws of the Mayans. He believed that Ezekiel could bring the best out of the club, and that was why he chose him as the vice president, but he needed him to read the book. At the Mayans' headquarters, Jess received a call from Terry, a member of the Sons of Anarchy who was also her sister's boyfriend. It seemed that Terry had asked her to spy on the club and give him information that she could find about what happened to Domingo. Since Ezekiel was chosen as the vice president, he wanted to clear the air with Bishop. Bishop who got drunk didn't want to hear Ezekiel out and began to ridicule him instead. 
Ezekiel was mad when he heard that and punched him in the face. Turned out, Miguel had been hiding in a rural nunnery all this time. Miguel's Aunt Teresa, one of the nuns there, approached Miguel and asked him if he was ready to confess his sins. Ezekiel came to Philippe's butcher shop that had been closed since Gabriella quitted her job there. After he found the postcard that was sent by Gabriella to Philippe there, he quickly left that place. At a restaurant, Creeper was having a lunch with a woman named Cody. They were talking about their family and flirting. Gilly came to his friend Paul's house to attend the birthday party of Paul's son, Jacob. He was hanging out with his friends from when he was in the military and Paul's wife, Ray, there. Ray was also Gilly's captain of their old unit. Kanchi visited El Banquero and apologized to him because of what happened between the Mayans and his accountant, Randall. El Banquero didn't say anything and fired a few rounds into the TV instead. At the nunnery, the church bell suddenly rang. It meant that there was a danger nearby. Turned out, a group of armed men was approaching that place. After Teresa told him to hide, Miguel left his work and took Thomas with him to hide in the warehouse immediately. The group of armed men then arrived in that place. They revealed themselves as the members of the LNG, and they were looking for a man named Martin, Thomas's father. They believed that Martin and his son were hiding in that place, but Teresa and other nuns didn't allow them to enter the nunnery, and that group finally left. At Paul's house, Gilly and Ray were talking about their difficult life when they served in Mosul. Suddenly, Paul got into an argument with his neighbor. Gilly quickly got between them and helped Paul to calm down. Ezekiel visited Marcus at his house and told him that he had been reading the book that he asked him. He said that he wanted to reinstate the kill switch clause, which allowed the club to remove or overrule the president if the club unanimously voted against him. He didn't say why he wanted to add this rule back, but it seemed that he still wanted to get rid of Kanch. The president of the Sons of Anarchy gave Terry a green light to take revenge on the Mayans for what they did to their fellow member, Domingo. Lincoln's former assistant, Anna, was spending her time with her husband and child in their house. But suddenly, Adelita came to that place and attacked her. Anna was surprised and scared when she saw her there. She tried to get her gun, but Adelita managed to stab her first. After that, Adelita shot Anna and her husband to death. Turned out, Anna and her husband had been adopting Adelita's baby, and the man whom Adelita had been stalking was Anna's husband. Adelita came to that place to take her baby back. At the nunnery, Thomas came to the cemetery and approached Miguel, who was busy building a wall. But while they were talking, Matane suddenly arrived and called his son away. Turned out, Thomas was indeed hiding in that place because the LNG was hunting him after killing his wife. Miguel knew that the LNG would hunt him too if they found him there. Ezekiel returned to the animal shelter to talk to Sophia. While following her to a room, he saw a tattoo on her wrist and realized that Sophia was an ex-convict, too. Then, Ezekiel asked Sophia to have a dinner with him, but Sophia said that she had lost a daughter due to her negligence. There was nothing that Ezekiel could give her. Two private detectives came to see Emily. They said that they were hired by Marlin's family to investigate Marlin's death. Emily said that she knew Marlin, but she didn't know that he was working on the agricultural park project. Before leaving, those detectives asked Emily about who she hired to kill Marlin. Ezekiel visited JJ in his house. He showed him his gun as if he told him not to mess with him. JJ said that they had something to discuss, and Ezekiel agreed. But before they managed to do so, JJ's wife suddenly interrupted them. JJ went into his house and told Ezekiel that he would reach out to him. At Paul's house, Gilly picked Jacob up after seeing Paul holding a knife and trying to convince his son to stab him. It seemed that Paul suffered from PTSD due to the war. At a supermarket, Hope was working as a cashier. But it seemed that she began to feel uncomfortable with her job, especially after she received a complaint from a customer. Suddenly, she had a breakdown and decided to quit her job. Diaz and his crew arrived at the Mayans' headquarters. Then, Diaz and Kanch pulled Marcus aside and told him that El Banquero was furious at them because of the death of Randall. Because of that, he had cut off their drug shipment. Bishop still held a grudge against other charters. He was sick of seeing them in that place and decided to head to the bar. 
Meanwhile, El Banquero was receiving a lecture from Soledad, who seemed to be much more level-headed than him. He was mad because his sister controlled his life. The LNG returned to the nunnery where Martin and Miguel were hiding. They threw away Thomas's dead body there. Martin came out of his hiding place and ran toward his son's dead body when he saw that. The cartel then took him with them and left that place. Miguel was devastated when he saw that scene. The brutality that the LNG did reminded him of the time when he was still working as a cartel boss. At the Mayans' headquarters, the Mayans were holding a ceremony for those who died during the Civil War. After that, in the meeting room, Diaz informed Marcus that the Sons of Anarchy had taken over their territories because of Bishop. For that reason, he demanded him to cut out the Santo Padre Charter for the good of the club. Suddenly, another mass fight between the Mayans broke out at the bar. Marcus quickly stopped them by firing his gun for several times. In the car, Terry and his friends were waiting outside the clubhouse of the Oakland Charter. At the nunnery, Miguel told his aunt that he was ready to confess his sins. At Paul's house, Ray thanked Gilly for helping to break up the fight between her husband and her neighbor. In the middle of the road, Adelita got out of her car and screamed in frustration. She was sick and tired of everything that had happened to her. Sophia visited Ezekiel in his trailer. While they were making out, Ezekiel's phone suddenly rang. Turned out, Emily was the one who made that call. At the clubhouse of the Oakland Charter, Coco and other Mayans were hanging out together in an attempt to heal the rift between the charters. When he watched the firework, he called his girlfriend and said that he loved her. But suddenly, Terry and his gang came to that place and began to brutally shoot their weapons at the Mayans. They wounded and killed many Mayans in that attack, including Coco. In the middle of the night, Marcus was awoken by a phone call. He was surprised when he heard the harrowing news from the clubhouse of the Oakland Charter. When he arrived at the clubhouse, he saw Ezekiel and his crew already gathering there. They found out that five Mayans died in that attack, and one of them was their friend Coco. Gilly was shocked and angry when he heard that. In the meeting room, the Mayans discussed about that attack. Kanch believed that El Banquero was behind this, but Trank believed that the Sons of Anarchy was the one responsible for that attack since they held a grudge against them. Then, Kanchi and Ezekiel got into an argument. Marcus interrupted them and asked them to wait before they managed to find the perpetrator. In the morning, Nails was busy painting the room for her unborn baby. Suddenly, she noticed that she was bleeding. Teresa told Miguel that he needed to leave that place soon because she was afraid if Martin told the LNG that he was hiding there and the cartel returned to capture him. Miguel then called someone and asked him to pick him up. In the meeting room, Trank reported to Marcus that the Sons of Anarchy was in fact responsible for the attack on the clubhouse of the Oakland Charter. Despite that, Marcus still didn't want to do anything about it and asked Trank about their motivation for that attack. Philip came to Angel's house and saw Nails walking with a stagger outside. He also noticed that she was bleeding and quickly helped her. At the clubhouse of the Santa Padre Charter, Marcus told Ezekiel that he understood that the Mayans wanted to take revenge on the Sons of Anarchy for what they did to them. But he said that he was tired of the wars and didn't want to see any unnecessary bloodshed anymore. Angel came to Coco's house to check on Letitia. When he arrived there, he saw that place had been trashed by her. While Angel was comforting her, Letitia began to cry and hug him. Angel and Letitia then made love in that place. At the hospital, Philip found out that Nails failed to save her unborn baby because she suffered a hemorrhage. He stared sadly at her and comforted her. At the clubhouse, Ezekiel received a call from an unknown number. He answered it and got shocked when he found out that it was Emily. Emily warned him to be careful because he was being chased by some people. Ezekiel asked her where she was but Emily refused to tell him as she implied that people were listening. Not long after that, Manny arrived at the clubhouse. He said that he came there to kill the Sons of Anarchy after he heard about what happened at the Oakland Charter. Turned out, it was Louis whom Miguel asked to pick him up. Louis was the only man whom he could trust right now. Letitia came to Coco's room to check on Hope. She saw her sobbing on the bed and comforted her. 
At the clubhouse, Angel was feeling guilty for what he did with Letitia earlier. He felt ashamed because Letitia was his friend's daughter, and that friend had just died. In the meeting room, Ezekiel, Gilly, and Angel told Marcus that they weren't waiting and would act to fight the Sons of Anarchy now. Taza reminded them that it was a suicide mission, and Ezekiel agreed, saying that they would take the responsibility for their action. Trank disagreed that Gilly went with them because Gilly needed to stay and defend the Sando Padre Charter. Manny then said that he would take Gilly's place and the club agreed. Since the Sons of Anarchy was the most powerful motorcycle club in that area, then it would mean victory for the Mayans if they managed to defeat them in this mission. There would be no more people who looked at them and messed with them anymore. Before ending the meeting, Marcus reminded Ezekiel again about how dangerous this mission was but finally agreed to start the war. On their way back to the United States, Luis stopped the car and woke Miguel up when he saw a car parked with the door opened in the middle of the road. Miguel then got out of his car and approached that car to check it, but while he was walking toward that car, that car suddenly exploded. Not long after Miguel returned to his car, a motorcyclist appeared and speeded toward him. Turned out, she was sent by the LNG to kill him. In the car, Ezekiel, Angel, and Manny were waiting outside a hospital that was guarded by many members of the Sons of Anarchy. They planned to kill as many high-ranking members of the Sons of Anarchy as possible and run away after that. Their targets included Leth Packer, the president of the SAMDINO, and Chibs, the president of the SAMCRO. They received information that Packer was in the oncology ward since he was undergoing chemotherapy. So, they would head to that room. Angel then entered the hospital and disguised himself as a visitor. After asking around about the oncology ward, he finally found the floor. He then told Manny and Ezekiel to come to the hospital. After they reunited, they headed to the seventh floor together. Suddenly, when the elevator arrived and opened, they saw Terry and other members of the Sons of Anarchy inside. They attacked them immediately and managed to kill them. After that, they tried to run away from that place, but other members of the Sons of Anarchy there began to hunt and attack them. Manny then decided to split off and distract them so that Angel and Ezekiel could find a way to escape. When Angel and Ezekiel continued to run, Angel shot the security guard who shot them first. That security guard died because of that. Angel was surprised when he realized that the nurse who attended to that security guard was Gabriella. He then grabbed her and took her with him because he didn't want her to report him to the police. Angel and Ezekiel finally managed to run away from that place. Later that night, they were still waiting for Manny in the woods. They were glad when they found out that Manny managed to escape from the hospital and arrive safely at the Mayans' headquarters. Then, Ezekiel talked to Gabriella and asked her not to tell anything about this to the police. But Gabriella said that she was going to tell the police because Angel had killed an innocent man. She also told Ezekiel that she missed and loved him, but she wanted Angel to be responsible for what he had done. Suddenly, Ezekiel fired his gun at her. Gabriella collapsed onto the grass and died instantly because of that. After that, Angel returned home. He was surprised when he found out that Nails had a miscarriage. He tried to apologize to Nails for his absence, but Nails said that she was leaving him. After Nails left, Philip came to that place and tried to comfort Angel. But Angel was angry at him and blamed him for everything that happened to their family. He also told his father to get out of his house. Then, the frustrated and drunk Angel went to Letitia's house and told Letitia that he couldn't stop thinking about what happened to them another day. Turned out, Gilly was in that place too. He was angry when he found out about what Angel had done to Letitia. He punched Angel in the face because of that and Letitia quickly broke up their fight. After that, Angel returned home and laughed as he saw Adelita there. Adelita tried to speak to him, but Angel was too angry and tired to listen to her. But suddenly, he heard a baby crying. He rushed to another room to see that baby and realized that it was his and Adelita's baby. His anger and frustration soon changed into tears as he carried his baby. The war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy continued. When a Mayan was riding away on the open road, the members of Sons of Anarchy suddenly attacked and killed him.
In his trailer, Ezekiel woke up after he had a nightmare about Gabriella. It seemed that he was being haunted by his guilt for murdering the woman he loved for protecting his family. In his house, Angel enjoyed spending his time with his son. He and Adelita then got into an argument about caring for their baby because Adelita was unable to breastfeed their baby. Meanwhile, Gilly welcomed Ray and Jacob to his house. Ray decided to stay there for a while because she wanted to give her husband some space. Ezekiel visited Felipe at his butcher shop for the first time after a long time. He confessed to his father that he had murdered Gabriella. Felipe was very disappointed when he heard that. In another place, El Banquero's sister, Soledad, was crying over the death of her mother. In the meeting room, Marcus announced that the war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy was still going on and he wanted the club to be ready for war at any time. That day, they were going to have a big war as they decided to attack the SAMD I know. Marcus wanted to go to this SAMD I know's clubhouse to fight alongside his club, but Diaz and Kanchi disagreed. Kanchi said that he would take his place to attack the SAMD I know with his club. Meanwhile, Diaz told him to let Ezekiel and their club take care of the war. At work, Emily found out that a man was asking for her there. She then took her passport and money and quickly left that place by using a bus. Jasmine berated Jess and blamed her for the attack on the Sons of Anarchy that happened at the hospital. She was angry because her boyfriend Terry was in a critical condition in the ICU after the Mayans shot him in that attack. She believed that Jess was the one who informed the Mayans about the Sons of Anarchy's activity at that hospital. But Jess swore that she didn't do it. Jasmine got frustrated and threatened that she would tell the Mayans about her betrayal if Jess didn't tell her about the Mayans' next plan. In another place, the Mayans continued to attack the members of the Sons of Anarchy, whom they met anywhere at any time. Ezekiel and his team hijacked a van that belonged to the SAMD Ineno and threatened the SAMD Ineno's prospect to take them to their clubhouse. When they arrived there, the prospect tried to warn his fellow crew about the Mayans, but Ezekiel and his crew killed him right away. Then he got out of the van and began to brutally shoot their weapons at the members of the SAMDINO in that place. The members of the SAMDINO were unprepared for that attack, so it was easy for the Mayans to defeat them. Bishop raided the warehouse, but an enemy caught him and tried to kill him. But fortunately, Tassa came at the right time and managed to save him. Ezekiel went to the meeting room and killed a high-ranking member of the SAMDINO there. Not long after that, Kanchi also went to that room to check the situation. But suddenly, Ezekiel shot him in the head. Kanchi died instantly because of that. Angel went to the room when he heard the gunshot and was horrified when he found out about what his brother was doing there. He was the only person who knew that Ezekiel had killed Kanchi. After successfully attacking the SAMD Ineno, Ezekiel and his team returned to their clubhouse. Manny was saddened by the death of his president, Kanch. Ezekiel sat with him and tried to comfort him. He suggested him to try to become the new vice president of the Yuma Charter. Meanwhile, Taza sat with Bishop and told him that he didn't owe him anything anymore since he had saved Bishop at the SAMDINO's clubhouse. Not long after that, Marcus arrived there. He then led a toast to pay their last respect to Kanchi and to celebrate their victory. At Angel's house, Adelita felt frustrated and called herself a monster because of all bad things that she had done and had happened to her. Angel tried to comfort her by saying that their job as parents was to protect their child and make sure that their child didn't end up like them. At home, Gilly was angry at Ray for mentioning the horrible event that happened in Mosul. Turned out, that event was about an accidental shooting of a child that they committed at a mall. For the first time in his life, Creeper took his girlfriend Cody to the clubhouse. He introduced her to his fellow crew. Apparently, the LNG managed to capture Miguel. They were holding him captive at their headquarters. El Banquero's sister, Soledad, came to his room and talked to him. The next day, Miguel was watching Marcus's house from his car. Marcus caught him and put his gun on his neck. Miguel said that he didn't come to that place to kill him, but to offer him a deal. JJ visited Ezekiel at his trailer again. Ezekiel grabbed his gun immediately when he saw him there. 
Turned out, JJ came to that place to threaten Ezekiel that he would tell the Mayans that Ezekiel was an FBI informant. Ezekiel was annoyed when he heard that. He aimed his gun at him and wanted to kill him. JJ asked him to give him a job with a proper salary if he didn't want him to tell the Mayans about the truth. After saying that, he left that place. Emily came to Aaron's apartment and asked her sister to look after Cristobal for a few more days before they moved. She said that she had to make sure that nobody was following her. Apparently, Creeper's girlfriend, Cody, was a police officer who was working undercover. She was sent on a mission to reveal about all crimes that the Mayans committed. That afternoon, her superiors came to Creeper's house and installed many security cameras there because they thought that she was being too slow to accomplish her mission. In another place, Marcus took Ezekiel to meet Miguel and the leader of the LNG, Soledad. Ezekiel was surprised when he found out that Miguel was alive and well. Not only that, he was also working with the LNG. In that meeting, Soledad asked them to work together with the LNG to reopen their drug pipeline. Miguel supported what she said by saying that all parties would benefit from this negotiation. To show that she was serious with this business, Soledad ordered her subordinate to show their drug supply to Marcus and Ezekiel. Marcus was interested when he saw that great amount of drug in that place. Miguel said that if they agreed to do this business, he would become their lyallison at the north of the border. Marcus asked them to give him some time because he needed to talk about this important deal with his club first. Before Marcus and Ezekiel left, Soledad reminded them that she would offer this deal to their rival club if they rejected this offer. At Angel's house, Adelita was surprised by Lincoln's presence there. She was worried to see Lincoln carrying her baby. Turned out, Lincoln came to that place to threaten Adelita. He said that he knew that Adelita had murdered his former assistant Anna and her husband, and he would use that information to take her baby back. It wasn't revealed yet about what Lincoln wanted from Adelita by threatening her. In the clubhouse of the Sando Padre Charter, Marcus and his club had a meeting to discuss about the deal that was offered by El Banquero's sister, Soledad. Ezekiel believed that this deal would put the Sando Padre Charter back on top. They would be able to control the drug pipelines and have enough money to continue the war. But Marcus disagreed with him. He thought that this deal would start another war, which meant that there would be more unnecessary bloodsheds. He just wanted to end the wars and make peace with other motorcycle clubs. Gilly, Bishop, and Trank also stated their opinions about this deal, but Marcus didn't care. He insisted on rejecting the offer. Taza was tired of seeing them having an argument, so he decided to quit the charter. Before he left the clubhouse, Creeper, Angel, and Gilly said goodbye to him. Letitia returned home after she visited the hospital to see her father's dead body. But when she arrived there, she couldn't find Hope anywhere. She checked Coco's room and didn't find her there neither. She only saw that room had been tidied up. Then, she saw the picture of her when she was a child in Coco's wallet. She cried when she saw it. At Angel's house, Aunt Alita began to enjoy living her life again after a long time. She was happy to see Angel taking good care of their baby. Turned out, Miguel sent his subordinate to find Emily and her son. His subordinate managed to find Aaron's apartment. Ezekiel returned to his trailer and got surprised when he saw his father there. Philip took his gun and mentioned Gabriella's name when Ezekiel showed up as if he wanted to kill his son for murdering Gabriella. Ezekiel approached him and guided him to put his gun on his head, but Philip pulled the gun away from his head and left the trailer. At home, Creeper was spending time with Cody. Cody felt like she couldn't lie to her boyfriend anymore. So she took Creeper to the bathroom, turned on the water, and whispered to his ear, revealing her real identity as a police officer to him. The next day, the Mayans from various charters attended Coco's funeral. Angel also attended the funeral, but he watched it from a distance because he felt guilty for what he had done with Letitia back then. At the hospital, the vice president of the SAMCRO, Tig, visited Terry who seemed to be recovering. Tig blamed Terry for the attack at the SAMDINO's clubhouse. He knew that it was a retaliation from the Mayans for the attack that Terry and his gang did at the Oakland's clubhouse. At the clubhouse, the club found out that Yuma, Stockton, and Oakland charters were making a move to attack the Sons of Anarchy without them.
Jess listened to their conversation secretly and called her sister right away to tell her about the Mayan's plan. In the car, Ezekiel met with JJ. Ezekiel said that he would give $80,000 to his family if he killed himself with a gun that he had prepared. JJ was angry when he heard that. He claimed that he was the one who made him who he was and trained him to be the man he was today. But Ezekiel didn't care about that. JJ then took the gun and put it on his chin. But suddenly, he aimed it at Ezekiel and Ezekiel killed him right away. At a restaurant, the leaders of the Oakland, Stockton, and Yuma Charters were discussing about their strategy to attack the Sons of Anarchy. Suddenly, the members of the Sons of Anarchy came to that place and attacked them. Marcus came to Los Angeles to meet with his old friend, Tig. They were talking about the ongoing war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy. Tig told Marcus about how the war started. He said that it was because of a member of the Sons of Anarchy, Domingo, was found dead in the Mayans' clubhouse. Marcus said that he had no idea about that. Creeper met with Cody in a place where there was no security camera or listening device. Cody gave further information about her mission as an undercover agent to Creeper, but Creeper was mad when he heard it. He was disappointed because Cody had been lying to him all this time. Cody assured him that not everything that she had done to him was a lie, such as her love to him. She said that she could have just arrested him for the crimes and murders that he admitted that he had committed since she remembered the details of those stories. She also told Creeper that there was a rat in his club who worked as an FBI informant, but she didn't know who he was. She then asked Creeper turn on the club and give them up if he wanted to survive. Louis came to Letitia's house to express his condolence for the death of Coco. He also wanted to return Letitia's car that had been sold to him by Coco in order to buy some drug. That car now had been repainted with green. Marcus returned to the clubhouse and told Ezekiel that he wanted to end the war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy. But Ezekiel disagreed with him and still wanted revenge, especially for the death of Coco. He wanted to continue their war with the Sons of Anarchy, even though the members of the Sons of Anarchy outnumbered the Mayans. He also tried to persuade Marcus to take the drug deal with Miguel and the LNG, but Marcus refused by saying it would keep them all from dying. Ezekiel was mad at Marcus because of his decisions. He then came to see Bishop and asked him to kick Marcus out of their club. Adelita approached El Banquero in the pool and slashed his throat. El Banquero died shortly after that. Turned out, Soledad was the one who sent Adelita to kill her brother. In another place, Emily received a call from Miguel. She was shocked when she found out that Miguel was with their son. Miguel asked her to return home. Emily realized that Miguel had killed her sister, and she couldn't keep running away from him anymore. While Ezekiel and Sophia were riding away, a car full of the members of the Sons of Anarchy suddenly approached and attacked them. Fortunately, Ezekiel managed to kill them before they had the chance to end him. Unfortunately, in another place, the members of the Sons of Anarchy managed to capture Manny and some Mayans. They took them to a field and executed them by burning them alive. Manny died in that execution. The members of the Sons of Anarchy spared a hostage his life so that he could send their message to the Mayans. After looking for her everywhere, Letitia finally found hope in a dark alleyway. She saw her trying to inject herself with a drug again and quickly stopped her. At the butcher shop, Philip received a sudden visit from Miguel. He was surprised to see him there. Turned out, Miguel came to that place to kill him. He wanted to take revenge on him for the death of his mother. He also knew that Ezekiel, Angel, and Emily got involved in this murder. Philip told him that he was the only one who killed Dita by strangling her and setting her body on fire. He said that Miguel could kill him, but he begged him not to kill Ezekiel and Angel because after all they were his family. In the meeting room, the club was horrified when they found out that some Mayans, including their friend Manny, had been burned alive by the Sons of Anarchy. Despite that, Marcus still decided to choose peace over revenge, but Ezekiel disagreed with him. He then brought up the kill switch clause, which allowed the club to remove or overrule the president if the club unanimously voted against him. Since the club chose war over peace, Marcus had been officially removed from the club. Marcus was angry at them and stormed off. Before leaving, 
He reminded them that it was his club, and he had made many sacrifices for them. With Marcus being removed from the club, Ezekiel automatically became the new president of the Mayans Motorcycle Club. As the new president, Ezekiel demanded his club to come together for the good of the club. He didn't want the club to be divided again with the existence of the charters. He encouraged them to build the club together with the drug business, and therefore he would take the drug deal from Miguel and the LNG. He promised that he would put the Mayans back on top. When Marcus returned home, he removed the vest of the Mayans from his body and stared sadly at it. After everyone left, Angel asked Ezekiel about his purpose in doing all this. He seemed disappointed with his brother. Ezekiel said that he just wanted to do what everyone else couldn't do. He promised that he was doing everything for the club and would put them back on top. Then, in a serious manner, he gave Angel an option. To follow and support him or to get out of that place. Angel was sad when he realized that his brother had turned into a monster. At the police station, Creeper made confession about all crimes and murders that he had committed, but he didn't mention anything about his club. Cody, who was watching him outside, was surprised when she heard about his confession. She was sad because Creeper decided to sacrifice himself instead of giving his club to the police. In the night, someone sneaked into the LNG's warehouse and destroyed all drug supply in that place by burning them. It wasn't revealed yet about the person who did it. Mayans MC Season 5 began with Isaac Packer, the president of the SAMD I know, who was also the leader of an addict community who had tortured and exploited Coco, leading his group SAMD I know to beat some Mayans. Isaac didn't take part in beating them up, he was just watching them. But then, he pissed on a Mayan named Tito. At the clubhouse of the Sando Patra Charter, Ezekiel was waiting for Angel to arrive. A new prospect, Bottles, was passing him by. When Angel arrived, Ezekiel told him that something was happening that day, but Angel didn't seem to remember about anything special that day. When they entered the clubhouse together, they were greeted by the club, who said happy birthday to Ezekiel. Angel realized that his brother was trying to remind him that it was his birthday. Nestor gave a book to Ezekiel as his birthday present because he knew that his president was fond of reading. After that, Ezekiel and his crew had a meeting. They discussed about the attack that SAMNDINO did on the Orange County Charter another day. Otero informed the club that Isaac pissed on Tito when Tito was severely wounded and lying unconscious on the ground. Ezekiel knew that Isaac led the SAMDINO to beat the Orange County Charter. He also knew that Isaac and his group did that attack without confirmation from Charming, the main headquarters of the Sons of Anarchy. The club then had an argument after they heard that. They argued whether they should only attack Isaac and SAMDINO or the entire of the Sons of Anarchy. If they attacked the Sons of Anarchy, they should consider about the fact that the Mayans were outnumbered by them. Ezekiel didn't decide anything and said that meeting by saying that the war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy hadn't ended yet. In another place, the members of the Sons of Anarchy were escorting a box truck. While they were waiting at a traffic congestion, a group of armed Mayans in masks and black costumes suddenly came to that place and attacked them. After wounding and killing the members of the Sons of Anarchy, the Mayans stole the truck box and burned another car there. Hope went to see a drug dealer, Louis, and sold the stock to him. Louis paid her with a small amount of money and said that there was another way to pay. Turned out, Letitia was waiting outside. She quickly barged in and saved Hope before Louis had the chance to hurt her. At the clubhouse of the San Padre Charter, the Mayans were unloading the boxes from the truck box that they stole from the Sons of Anarchy. Turned out, those boxes contained weapons. Gilly and Angel laughed when they saw Gero and Downer squabbling as they unloaded those boxes. Not long after that, Ezekiel arrived at the clubhouse. He was surprised when he saw so many boxes of weapons inside that truck box. He ordered his crew to load those boxes back to the truck and leave only three boxes for them. Letitia returned to Coco's house and got mad when she found out that the landlord had kicked her out of the house for not paying the rent. She tried to attack him, but Hope stopped her. Ezekiel and his crew then went to see Miguel and the LNG cartel boss, Soledad. They took the weapons that they had stolen from the Sons of Anarchy to that place. 
Apparently, Soledad blamed the Mayans for 40,000 of her heroin that got burned in the warehouse. Because of that, Ezekiel tried to make peace with her by giving those weapons to her. Soledad was unimpressed by his attempt to apologize to her because those weapons were nothing to compare with the latest military-grade weapons that she used to arm her subordinates. She refused to accept Ezekiel's present and left that place. Miguel was furious at the club for embarrassing him after he convinced Soldad to listen to them. Hope and Leticia went to see Louis again and asked him to lend them $13,000, but Louis said that he didn't have that much money to give to them. In another place, Isaac and his crew had a meeting. Terry told Isaac that the Mayans attacked the Sons of Anarchy's truck box that carried weapons that could arm all charters of the Sons of Anarchy in California. They also killed three members of the Sons of Anarchy in that attack. Isaac seemed amazed when he heard that. He said that their enemies showed that life was exciting. Ezekiel and his club visited Louis and asked him about the LNG's new heroin supplier. Louis told them that he heard rumor that a club named Broken Saints Motorcycle Club ran heroin in the Salton Sea. Ezekiel and his club then headed to their headquarters after they heard that. When they arrived there, they were attacked by dogs and surrounded by armed members of the Broken Saints. Ezekiel raised his hands and said that they came in peace. He apologized for trespassing and said that he just wanted to talk to the president of their club. Turned out, one of the members of the Broken Saints who surrounded them was Johnny Panic, the president of the club herself. Ezekiel then sat with Johnny. It wasn't revealed yet about why Ezekiel approached the Broken Saints. Johnny told Ezekiel that her club was at war with the Iron War Motorcycle Club. Ezekiel offered her a help because he knew that the Iron War would be back, but Johnny refused his help right away. In the night, Angel visited Ezekiel at his trailer. Ezekiel was surprised to see him there. He was getting even more surprised when he found out that Adelita had returned to Angel's house. Not only that, Angel also came to that place with his son, Maverick. A woman was sent to smuggle drug into the prison. When she visited the prison, she talked to Creeper. After the visitation time ended, Creeper talked to another Mayan in that place. A prison officer with a scar on his face approached them and told them to shut up. While Creeper was returning to his cell, a prisoner suddenly attacked him. That prisoner said that it was a message from Smokey. In the meeting room, the club discussed about the attack that happened to Creeper in the prison. They found out that the Iron War was behind that attack. Creeper managed to survive in that attack, but he needed to receive medical treatment at the hospital. Cody came to the hospital to visit him and offer him help, but Creeper coldly refused her help. He was still feeling mad and disappointed at her for setting him up. Creeper said that if Cody really wanted to help him, then she had to find the rat in his club who was working as a DEA informant. Just like Miguel, Adelita was now working for the LNG. But it seemed that she didn't like her co-worker, Soledad's right-hand woman. It was revealed that many prison officers in Creeper's prison were the members of the Iron War. One of them was Stone, the prison officer with the scar on his face who told Creeper to shut up another day. Not long after that, Ezekiel and his crew arrived in that place. They confronted the Iron War about what they had done to Creeper. The situation was getting tense when more members of the Iron War arrived and outnumbered the Mayans there. Ezekiel finally left that place after he threatened the president of the Iron War, Mackenzie. At a restaurant, Miguel and Soledad had a meeting with a cartel leader named Eduardo to discuss about their partnership. They hoped that Eduardo wanted to work with the LNG, so they all could be free from Lincoln and the U.S. government. Suddenly, Miguel noticed that there was Alejandro, the LNG enforcer who killed Thomas in the nunnery where he was hiding. When Alejandro went to the restroom, Miguel followed him immediately and attacked him there. He killed him to take revenge for the death of Thomas, the young boy whom he befriended with. While Gero was driving around and looking for the members of the Iron War, he stopped at the traffic light and saw Stone there. He quickly grabbed his baseball bat and attacked Stone with it. After that, he took him to the clubhouse. Ezekiel beat Stone Black and Blue when he saw him there. He said that it was for Creeper. Bishop tried to stop him and said that he was going to kill him, but Ezekiel got mad at him and tried to beat him up too. 
Emily finally lived with Miguel and Crystal Ball in their house again, but she seemed very unhappy with her life as Miguel began to control her life and treat her like a prisoner. Isaac led his crew to attack the Mayans again. This time, they attacked the house of Hector, the president of the Inland Empire Charter. They held Hector, his family, and a Mayan captive there. Isaac threatened Hector to choose between his family or his fellow crew. Under such pressure, Hector finally chose his fellow crew to be executed. After Isaac and his crew killed that Mayan, they left that place. In the middle of the road, the Mayans stopped their van and threw the severely wounded stone out of the van. Feeling frustrated with the never-ending problems that happened to the Mayans, Ezekiel finally decided to come to Marcus's house to talk to Marcus. He apologized to Marcus for removing him from the club. He said that the club was suffering, but Marcus said that it was not his club anymore. Marcus then said that he really liked Ezekiel, but he would shoot him if he ever came to his property again. At home, Angel was shocked when he saw Cole, a mercenary whom the club was dealing with years ago there. Cole and his man came to his house to warn him to stop looking into the heroin pipeline for the LNG. They threatened to hurt him and his family if he didn't listen to them. After giving that warning, they left that place. In another place, two DEA agents found important information from a sequence of numbers. They immediately showed what they found to their superior, Patricia. After checking that document, Patricia asked them if anybody else had seen it. In the meeting room, Angel told the club that Cole came to his house and threatened him and his family. He said that he warned the club to stop looking into the heroin pipeline for the LNG. The club was surprised when they heard that. They then assumed that the LNG had made the switch from heroin to fentanyl and Cole was the one who supplied the LNG with fentanyl and military-grade weapons. They also believed that Cole sold drug to the Iron War, who distributed it throughout the prisons. Ezekiel smiled, believing that all they needed to do to take it down was to figure out the pipeline. Bishop and Angel disagreed with him because this mission was unnecessary and dangerous, but Angel said that they weren't going after Cole, they were going after the cartel. In the night, Ezekiel and his crew raided a drug manufacturing house. They killed all inhabitants in that house and took a cook named Elia with them. While shopping at a supermarket, Emily couldn't stop looking at the exit door. She really wanted to run away through that door, but Louis was always watching and following her around. The next morning, Ezekiel interrogated Elio and threatened that he would kill him and his family if he didn't want to cook for the club. Turned out, Elio was a drug cook. Ezekiel said that their new prospect, Bottles, would do anything that he needed to help him cook. After that, Ezekiel and his crew left them there to cook. Creeper finally returned to the prison after he recovered from his condition. He walked to the prison yard and stood alone by a fence. Philet came to Miguel's house to give Miguel the letters that were written by Dida. He wanted Miguel to know his family better by reading those letters. Miguel threatened that he would kill Felipe if he ever came to his house again. Philip put the letters on the table and then left that place. At the clubhouse, Elio meditated before beginning to cook with Bottles. While they were working, Bottles accidentally dropped a tub full of the mix on the floor. He wanted to clean it, but Elio stopped him and said that he would die if he touched it. Patricia introduced herself as the Deputy Assistant Inspector General of the Division of Investigation to Lincoln. Turned out, the document that was given by her subordinates another day showed serious irregularities in Lincoln's accounting. Because of that, Patricia wanted Lincoln to explain his numbers. While drinking his milk, Lincoln threatened Patricia in his usual unique way. Patricia asked him to get to the point and asked if he had just threatened her. Lincoln apologized for the way he met her and asked for more clarification on his missing receipts. In her office, Cody's superior Melissa berated Cody for visiting Creeper. As an ADF agent, she wasn't allowed to visit any prisoner without her superior's permission. Melissa then told Cody to give her badge and gun. While she was taking a phone call, Cody stole her access card and used it to access the evidence room. Meanwhile, Leticia and Hope were sent by Louis on a dangerous mission to steal some money from a drug house. After they killed a gangster and stole a duffel bag full of cash, they ran away from that place immediately. When they counted the money that they got, Hope was worried with Butterfly, 
whom she saw in the drug house earlier. At the clubhouse, Angel told Bishop that he wanted to separate his home life and his club life, but he didn't know how to. He said that he wanted to protect his family from this dirty and dangerous life. Bishop said that he would do anything to be with his son if he was still around. He began to cry as he said that the only reason he was still in the club was because he didn't have anything else. At the park, Emily met with Ezekiel. She told him that she was going to ask him for one more thing. She said that she needed an unregistered and untraceable car parked outside the back of a supermarket. In his house, Marcus received a visit from Dias. They were talking about their old days in the club together. Then, Marcus mentioned about the war. Dias told him not to worry about it and said that he could leave the dying to the rest of the club. At home, Egil finally read Dida's letters that Philip gave to him. He also found a picture of three young boys among those letters. One of those young boys was him when he was a child. From those memorabilia, he found out that Ezekiel and Angel were his half-brothers and Philip was his biological father. At the clubhouse, Elio showed a package of fentanyl that he had produced to the club. Bottles said that it was worth $100,000. The club was excited when they heard that. Ezekiel was confident that he could put the club back on top with their new drug business. While Cody was going through the archives that she got from the evidence room, she found the name Kevin Jimenez there. Jimenez was the DEA agent who made a deal with Ezekiel. In another place, Terry forced Jess to tell him about where the Mayans kept the weapons that they stole from the Sons of Anarchy. Jess refused to answer him, so Terry grabbed her by the neck and shocked her. Afraid that her sister might die, Jasmine hit her boyfriend's head with a bottle. Terry then began to cry and said that Isaac threatened him to get information about the Mayans. He said that they had no idea about what Isaac would do to him if he didn't do what he asked. Ezekiel and Angel went to see Cole to ask him to work with them. They gave him one kilogram fentanyl that they produced and asked him to give them the prisons in return. Cole said that they had the deal if they could give him ten times of what he just got in a few days. Even though they had no idea how to get what Cole asked, Ezekiel agreed as long as Cole stopped working with the LNG and started working with his club. When Cole left, Angel criticized Ezekiel and said that it was a bad idea. In the prison, Creeper called Trank and told him that there was a rat in their club who was working as a DEA informant. Ezekiel, Bishop, Trank, and Angel met with a Chinese gangster named Yang Soon. They wanted to buy chemicals from Yang's criminal organization so they could continue to produce fentanyl. Yang gave Ezekiel's note to his superior, but his superior wasn't interested in what Ezekiel was offering. Ezekiel finally agreed to pay them with 12 boxes of weapons. After that, Trank told Ezekiel that he received a call from Creeper. He said that Creeper told him that there was a rat in their club who was working for the DEA. At home, when Miguel was about to leave for work, Emily said goodbye to him. At the clubhouse, Elio and Bottles were working together to cook drug. In the afternoon, they took a break and hanged out outside the laboratory. They asked Lobo to watch the laboratory and make sure that nobody went in. When Logo was there, he tried the mix that Elio and Bottles made. Suddenly, he had an overdose and writhed on the floor. Elio and Bottles panicked when they returned and found him on the floor. Bottles asked Sophia for help, but since Sophia was a vet, she couldn't do much to help Lobo. Lobo finally died not long after that. Sophia was mad and disappointed at everyone there because nobody did anything to help Lobo, including Ezekiel. Soledad and Miguel visited a drug house owned by the LNG. They found out that there were dead men inside and their drug cook, Elio, was missing. They thought that Eduardo was behind this attack. Miguel then interrogated a young boy whom he found there. That young boy told him about the characteristics of people who had attacked that place. Ezekiel returned to the Broken Saints clubhouse to offer a deal to Johnny. He told Johnny that he could take care of the Iron War, supply their club with weapons, and make them earn a lot of money. But in return, he asked her to allow his club to produce and store the fentanyl at her headquarters. Cody came to Jimenez's house and met Claudia, Jimenez's wife, there. She asked her about Jimenez, but Claudia told her that she had no idea where her husband was. Claudia began to sob as she said that Jimenez had been missing for three years. 
Cody told her that she was with the ATF and offered her help. While shopping at the supermarket, Emily asked Louis and Maria to get her some kitchen supplies. After Louis and Maria left, Emily tried to escape from that place with her son. But suddenly, an old woman yelled at her and called her a murderer. Louis returned to check on Emily and her son when he heard that. Because of that, Emily had to forget about her plan to run away that day. At the clubhouse, a man came to meet Sophia, but Sophia refused to talk to her. Turned out, Sophia and that man had a history together. Bottles approached that man and told him to leave when he saw that. As usual, Adelita gave a duffel bag full of cash to Soledad's right-hand woman. But after she did her job, that woman said that they needed one more thing from her. Meanwhile, Ezekiel and his crew were escorting the truck that carried weapons and materials that they needed to produce fentanyl to the headquarters of the Broken Saints. Suddenly, Trank pulled Ezekiel and Bishop aside and told them that S.A.M.D.I.N.O. had attacked all charters around them. It meant that Isaac and his crew would target their charter next. Bishop was worried when he heard that. He was mad at Ezekiel for giving their last three boxes of weapons to Johnny and her women. Ezekiel said that they would get ten times of those weapons back after they finished producing fentanyl in that place. In another place, Eduardo received uninvited visit from Adelita. Adelita was sent there by Soldad to kill him. Adelita executed that man by slitting his throat. In the evening, Bottles and other Mayans were burying Lobo's dead body. Cody finally managed to get a large amount of intelligence from Claudia. While she was listening to a tape recording made by Jimenez, she heard the name EZ or Ezekiel. In the midnight, Angel, Trank, Bishop, and Nestor were approaching a group of SAMDINO members. As they were getting closer to them, Trank loaded a shotgun and gave it to Angel. Angel attacked that group with the gun and managed to kill some members of SAMDINO. After that, he and his crew fled from the scene. The next day, the Grim Bastards came to the Santo Padre clubhouse to talk to Ezekiel. Ezekiel greeted them and invited them to the clubhouse. Lucky, the president of the Grim Bastards' Southgate Charter, said that the war between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy began to bring harm to other motorcycle clubs. Because of that, he offered to hold peace talks between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy to try and make peace. While Angel was riding away, Miguel suddenly approached him and asked him to have a talk with him. When they arrived in a secluded area, Miguel told Angel that he knew that the Mayans had raided the LNG's drug house and kidnapped their drug cook. He also knew that Angel was the one who burned the LNG's warehouse and destroyed all heroin there. He threatened to tell the club about what he did if he didn't stop Ezekiel with the fentanyl production. Angel told him that Ezekiel didn't listen to him anymore, but Miguel believed that there must be someone whom he listened to. Miguel asked him to think about it seriously, because he didn't want him to get killed. In the meeting room, Angel demanded the club to stop their fentanyl business. Ezekiel responded to him by showing a bag full of cash, dividing it up between the others at the table, and asked his crew if they wanted to continue their fentanyl business or not. Then he asked their opinions about the offer from the Grim Bastards and decided to attend the peace talks after everyone agreed. Ezekiel and his crew were going to Los Angeles to meet the Sons of Anarchy that night. After the meeting, Ezekiel asked Trank about Creeper and Trank said that Creeper was close to finding out who the rat was. Ezekiel was nervous when he heard that and noticed that Angel didn't take his money with him. Cody visited Creeper in the prison and told him that the rat in his club who was working for the DEA was in fact Ezekiel. Creeper laughed at her when he heard that. He didn't believe her. Cody said that she had the evidence, which was the intelligence made by a DEA agent Jimenez. She was angry at Creeper for dismissing her and said that she even lost her job to do what he asked her. While Creeper was returning to his cell, he told the prison officer that he wanted to meet Smokey. Angel came to see Sophia and asked her to tell Ezekiel to stop with the fentanyl business because he didn't want everyone to get hurt. Sophia asked him to leave and Angel said that he should have just burned everything down. Lincoln sent a man to negotiate with Patricia about the problem in his accounting. Patricia laughed as she realized that Lincoln was afraid and trying to stop her from investigating him by sending a man to her office. 
The next scene revealed that Soledad and Miguel had been working for Lincoln. Lincoln met them and berated them for having Eduardo murdered after he told them to start a partnership with him. He threatened Miguel to do everything he asked him because he owned him and could take everything from him again. In the prison, Creeper asked Smokey about the rat in his club and Smokey told him that it was Ezekiel. Creeper was speechless when he heard that. Afterward, he received a visit from Ezekiel. He became angry as he told him that he knew that he was the rat in their club. Ezekiel tried to convince him that he was going to put the club back on top, and if he stopped now, then all the death and sacrifice would mean nothing. But Creeper said that his life was over and a rat was still a rat. Ezekiel then stood up, pulled him to the floor, and made it look like Creeper was attacking him. The prison officers rushed to them and began to violently beat Creeper up with their batons. Patricia came to Miguel's house and talked to Emily while waiting for Miguel to arrive. She asked if Emily regretted having a child and Emily said maybe. Not long after that, Miguel arrived and took over the conversation. Patricia offered him a deal to expose Lincoln, the man he had been working for, or he might end up in the prison since Lincoln could take everything from him again. Before leaving, she said that he had to decide where he wanted to end up. The Mayans from various charters arrived at the meeting place, where they would have peace talks with the Grim Bastards and the Sons of Anarchy. As they entered the warehouse, the Grim Bastards took their weapons away. Ezekiel and his crew then headed inside and found Isaac and an army of the Sons of Anarchy there. Isaac asked where Coco was and Bishop said that he was killed. Ezekiel then stated his terms. The Sons of Anarchy would surrender, the Mayans would continue to wear the California rocker, and S.A. and D.I.N.O. would be shut down. Isaac said that it was useless if Coco wasn't here anymore and threw his chair. As tensions between the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy began to rise, the Grim Bastards jumped in and fired their gun into the air. Isaac then said that he and Ezekiel were going to appoint someone to fight until only one was standing. Isaac chose the biggest man he could find in his club, Travis. Meanwhile, Ezekiel chose himself to fight. Ezekiel told his club that he meant it when he said he would bleed for them. The fight between Ezekiel and Travis then began. At first, Ezekiel was struggling to fight Travis as Travis kept knocking him to the floor. But when Travis punched him in the face, Ezekiel managed to attack him back and begin to smash his head repeatedly until he died. The members of the Sons of Anarchy were silent when they saw that and began to leave the warehouse. After that, Ezekiel and his crew headed back to the clubhouse. When they arrived there, Sophia quickly helped the badly injured Ezekiel to walk to the clubhouse. When they entered the clubhouse, the club began to pound their fists on the tables and cheered for Ezekiel for their victory. In the midnight, Letitia was awoken by a hand covering her mouth. She was terrified when she saw Isaac standing over her there. Isaac threatened that he would take hope from her unless Letitia did something for him. The next morning, Ezekiel came to Angel's house and asked his brother to have a talk in some place. Angel asked him where they were going to but Ezekiel didn't tell him and said that he wanted to talk about their family. Angel was worried if Ezekiel found out that he was the one who burned the warehouse, so before leaving, he took his gun with him. At home, Louis was worried because Emily had been isolating herself in her room for days, so he tried to cheer her up by taking her to a recreational shooting. Emily thanked him and said that it made her relax. Turned out, Louis knew that Emily tried to run away from Miguel, but he didn't tell Miguel about it. Angel and Ezekiel finally arrived at a house in a desert. Before getting out of his car, Ezekiel took his gun with him. He had also prepared a shovel in the back of his car and planned to use it to bury someone. Angel was terrified when he found out about that. He was afraid if his brother was going to kill him and bury him there. Then, Ezekiel told Angel to walk to the back of the house. When Angel arrived at the door, Ezekiel aimed his gun at his head. But once the door opened, they found Happy and a woman inside. Apparently, Ezekiel asked Angel to come there to kill Happy. He wanted to take revenge on Happy for the death of his mother. Happy couldn't do anything when Ezekiel barged in and aimed his gun at him. Ezekiel asked him about the person who gave him the job and Happy said that it was Packer. Then, Ezekiel told Angel to kill Happy, but Angel was hesitant. 
Ezekiel finally did the job himself by shooting Happy in the chest. The next scene revealed that Sophia and the man who talked to her at the Santa Padre clubhouse once had a daughter together. But Sophia couldn't raise her properly back then because she was imprisoned. Now Sophia was missing her daughter, but she couldn't see her since she had passed away. At the park, while Emily was talking to Louis, she suddenly panicked as she realized that her son was not around. She was afraid if someone had kidnapped Cristobal. After Angel and Ezekiel buried Happy outside the house, Angel asked his brother if their mother would really have wanted all this. Ezekiel said that it was in the Reyes' blood to be a killer. After hearing that, Angel ran off to take a moment for himself. Even though Adelita was working for Soldadad now, she and the members of Los Olvidados were still preparing themselves to kill their enemies. Adelita asked her fellow crew to be patient and promised him that they would destroy them at the right time. After that, Adelita returned to the LNG's headquarters. Soldad said that she understood that Adelita was working for her because Lincoln made her too, and that was why Adelita was not really happy to be around. Because of that, she promised that she would set her free, but she would need her to do one more job for her, which was killing one more person. She asked her to accomplish her mission by midnight, and after that she was free. At home, Emily received a package that was delivered for her son. There was a doll inside that package. Emily didn't know who sent that package since she couldn't find any information about the sender. She even destroyed the doll to see if there was anything dangerous inside. In the evening, Ezekiel went to a church and lit a candle for his mother. He took a seat and saw Philip sitting opposite him. At home, while Angel and Maverick were sleeping, Adelita cleaned and prepared her gun. From the picture that she was looking at, it was revealed that her next target was Ezekiel. While riding away, two members of the Broken Saints suddenly stopped as they saw a woman lying unconscious on the street. Turned out, that woman was Letitia. They took Letitia to their headquarters. When Letitia woke up from her faint, Johnny asked her to join them. She promised that nobody would put their hands on her again. Letitia agreed, and Johnny began to tell her about their club. She said that Letitia should forget her life outside the club so she could build trust with each other. She also said that the Broken Saints would kill her if she broke any rules. The next morning, Angel was awoken by his son's cry. He was looking for Adelita, but he couldn't find her anywhere. When he cleaned Maverick's crib, he was surprised to see stacks of cash hidden underneath the mattress. He tried to call Adelita, but Adelita didn't answer him. He was worried if Adelita left him again. Apparently, Adelita didn't do the job that Soledad gave her last night. She came to see the farmers instead. She told them that Adelita had returned, and it was the time for them to fight. Ezekiel, Trank, Garrow, Gilly, and Bottles met with Cole. Cole was very impressed with the level of drugs that the Mayans had been producing and told them that he wanted them to meet someone. He took them to the gym where they saw a man named Gretton fighting another man in jiu-jitsu match. Gretton told Ezekiel that the Mayans could have all prisons in California now. It meant that the gangsters who used to control the prisons, such as the Iron War and Stone 88, would listen to the Mayans now. Ezekiel asked what the stake was and Gretton said that it was half. In another place, Emily came to see an old woman named Charlotte. Turned out, Charlotte was the one who sent the mysterious package to her son another day. She did that because she was angry at Emily for murdering her son, Marlon, an employee at the office of the mayor. She threatened that she would go to the district attorney and report Emily to them. Emily was sick and tired of all this terror, so she finally decided to kill Charlotte. At the clubhouse, Nestor asked Jess to go on a date once he was accepted as the official member of the Mayans. But for the meantime, he asked her to be friends and Jess said that she was interested. On her first day as a member of the Broken Saints, Letitia was taught by other members to earn money from mining electronics waste. Not long after that, the Mayans arrived in that place to deliver more materials for cooking. Letitia panicked and hid as soon as she saw them there. Elio was very happy to see Bottles again. He greeted and hugged him. Ezekiel approached Johnny and delivered the money to her. Before leaving, Ezekiel noticed that Letitia was there. Meanwhile, Bottles was flirting with a member of the Broken Saints there. When they got in the van, Garrow teased him. 
After murdering Charlottel, Emily asked Louis to help her to clean the crime scene and get rid of her trace from that place. They agreed to make it look like Charlotte had an accident when she was taking a shower. Adelita went to the LNG's headquarters and began to kill all LNG's enforcers in that place. She got shot during that attack, but eventually managed to grab all the bags of cash and run away from that place. Angel came to Philip's house with Maverick. Philip asked if Angel had heard anything from Adelita, and Angel said that he hadn't and he had been calling her all day. Angel mentioned about the money he found under Maverick's mattress and asked Felipe if Adelita had left them and Philip said he didn't know. After attacking the LNG's headquarters and stealing some bags of cash, Adelita headed to Los Alvedados' headquarters. She came there to hand the cash over to Minnie so Los Alvedados could use it to help the farmers. But suddenly, Minnie stabbed her multiple times in the stomach until she finally died. She killed her because she was disappointed at her for working for the cartel. Jess was happy because Nestor took her to a hill with a nice view. While she was telling a story to him, Nestor suddenly pulled out his gun and shot her in the head. Turned out, the club found out that she was a rat and ordered Nestor to kill her. Not long after that, Trank walked over and doused the car with gasoline to get rid of Nestor's trace. In the prison, Creeper was finally released from solitary confinement. As soon as he got out of his cell, he headed to the telephone and called Trank. But before he managed to say what he wanted to say to him, two prisoners suddenly attacked him and repeatedly stabbed him in the stomach. Creeper died slowly on the floor because of that. It seemed that Ezekiel was the one who ordered those prisoners to attack him so that Creeper wouldn't be able to tell the Mayans that he was the DEA informant. In the meeting room, Trank believed that the rat in the club was Jess and explained that Nestor had taken care of her. Ezekiel then announced that he had taken Gretton's deal. The club was worried when they heard that and asked why Ezekiel didn't ask them about it first. Ezekiel said that they were so close and this was the final thing they needed to win the war. He also said that they needed to control the prisons so they could protect their brothers there. He believed that the deal was going to end the war with the Sons of Anarchy and stop the bloodshed. Angel returned home and hoped that Adelita was there but the house was empty. He was really worried if she had left him and their son. In the night, Letitia sneaked around the fentanyl laboratory where Elio cooked the drug for the Mayans. That laboratory was heavily guarded by the members of the Broken Saints. Diaz and his vice president, Jinx, suddenly entered the clubhouse and yelled at Ezekiel and his crew. They were angry because Ezekiel had killed a member of SAMCRO. Ezekiel invited them to the meeting room and explained that Happy was on their territory and he had it coming. He also said that the Mayans had made a deal and owned the pipeline in California now. Trank gave some money to them and Ezekiel said that it was the future. While Diaz was heading out of that place, Garo suddenly walked toward him and shot him in the head. He did that to take revenge for the death of his father. Shortly after that, Bishop also shot Jinx in the head. After that, Garo and Otero dumped the bodies of Diaz and Jinx outside the Grim Bastards clubhouse. They were wearing the vests of the Sons of Anarchy, while doing that so that the security cameras in that area would show that it was the Sons of Anarchy who dumped the bodies. They also wanted to make it look like the Sons of Anarchy broke the peace treaty between them and the Mayans. The next morning, Letitia sneaked around the Broken Saints clubhouse and stole a truck there. At home, Philip received unexpected visit from Miguel. He was surprised to see him there. Miguel came to that place to show him something. While cooking breakfast for his family, Marcus suddenly received a call. He was shocked when he heard that Dias had been killed. Lucky came to Ezekiel's trailer and showed two vests of the Sons of Anarchy to Ezekiel. He said that the Grim Bastards were part of the war now, and they would help the Mayans to fight the Sons of Anarchy. Letitia came to see Isaac and reported to him about what she saw at the Broken Saints clubhouse. Now that she did what he asked him, she demanded him to let Hope go. But Isaac refused and slammed the gate on her instead. In the SAMDI and NO clubhouse, Hope begged Terry to release her, but Terry refused because he was afraid of Isaac. In another place, Gilly beat Paul up after he found out that he had been driving drunk with Jacob. From that fight, 
It was revealed that Gilly was actually Jacob's biological father, but he gave up his right to be his father and allowed Paul to raise Jacob. At Philip's house, Miguel showed a picture of him and Jose Galindo to Felipe. He said that even though Jose was not his biological father, he still chose him over Philip because Jose was raising him properly as his own son and not abandoning him, unlike Felipe. Marcus came to S.A.M. Suaro's clubhouse and aimed a gun at a member of S.A.M. Suaro named Rain. He wanted to take revenge on the Sons of Anarchy for murdering Dias, his best friend. He asked Rain who killed Dias, but Rain claimed that he didn't know anything about Dias. Rain also informed him that the Reyes brothers murdered Happy a few weeks ago. He believed that it was also the Mayans who had murdered Dias and told Marcus to look to his club to find the murderer. Gilly took Paul to the police station and asked him to turn himself in for driving drunk with Jacob. He was worried if Paul would harm his son and raid again. The next morning, the club took Creeper's casket to the clubhouse. In the car, Letitia saw Isaac and his crew leaving the SAMDINO clubhouse. She used that chance to sneak into the clubhouse to save Hope. When she entered the clubhouse, she found Terry and Hope there. Terry finally told Letitia and Hope to go. After he shot a hostage there, he shot himself in the shoulder. He wanted to make it look like that place had been attacked. At the Santo Padre clubhouse, the club was listening to a eulogy by Creeper's sister. Taza, who had left the charter, also came to that place to pay his last respect to Creeper. Ezekiel apologized to everybody there because he had failed to protect Creeper. Coney also came to the clubhouse to see the man she loved for the last time. While Letitia and Hope were speeding away from SAMDI now on the highway, Hope suddenly asked Letitia to pull over. Hope believed that Isaac would never stop looking for her and Letitia would end up hurt. Because of that, she decided to end their suffering now by taking her own life. She walked backward into the traffic and got instantly killed by a truck. Letitia screamed in horror when she saw that. In the night, Garrow and Bottles were heading to the Broken Saints clubhouse to see the member of the Broken Saints whom Bottles was flirting with. When Gilly returned home, he found out that Ray had packed her things. Ray told him that she and Jacob were leaving him for their own good. Angel came to Philip's house with Maverick. He told his father that he couldn't live in his house anymore without Adelita. On their way to the Broken Saints clubhouse, Garo teased Bottles again for going on a date with the woman from the Broken Saints, but they soon argued who should get out to fill the truck. When they arrived at the Broken Saints clubhouse, they were shocked to see the fentanyl laboratory was on fire. The members of the Broken Saints were trying to save their fellow crew who got trapped inside. Bottles was afraid if his friend Elia was there too. Since their truck was running out of gas, Garrow and Bottles returned to Santa Padra by hitching a ride. Bottles was sad because Elio was among those who got trapped inside the fentanyl laboratory. When they arrived at Santa Padre, they told Ezekiel immediately about what happened at the Broken Saints clubhouse. Felip told Angel that he had cleaned the house so Angel would have more space for him and Maverick. Angel was sad for his son for growing up without a mother and Philip said that what important was that Maverick knew his mother loved him. Ezekiel arrived at the Broken Saints clubhouse and slowly examined the burnt remained of the fentanyl laboratory to see if there was anything that could be saved. He saw Elio and a cook's dead bodies in that place. Suddenly, the member of the Broken Saints surrounded him. They were angry at him and blamed him for that incident. Chip, the vice president of the Broken Saints, tried to shoot him but Johnny stopped her right away. While Ezekiel was walking away, Johnny turned around and was struck across the face by Chip. At the SAMDINO clubhouse, Isaac cried alone when he received news that his brother, Let Packer, had finally succumbed to cancer. In the meeting room, Terry told the club about the attack that happened in that place, but it seemed that the club didn't buy his story. Suddenly, Isaac entered the room and said that he wanted the Mayans to know the pain of losing a brother. At home, Emily was installing security cameras because she didn't feel safe there. She adjusted the positions of those cameras as she liked. Miguel came to see Patricia and told her that he accepted her offer to destroy Lincoln together. He said that he would give her anything she wanted on Lincoln, but she had to give a signed deal of immunity for him and Emily in return. 
As the first step, he gave the evidence that he had about Lincoln to Patricia and gave her information about Lincoln's wife and son. While riding back to Santo Padre, Ezekiel fell from his motorcycle as he tried to avoid a coyote that was standing in the middle of the road. He didn't notice that there was a coyote there because he was having a million thoughts. Suddenly, a car arrived in that place. It was Wendy, Jax Teller's ex-wife. She quickly helped Ezekiel to get back to his feet. Wendy said that Ezekiel reminded her of a president of SAMCRO who died just when he was at his peak of his life. That man was Jax Teller himself. After investigating the information that Miguel gave her, Patricia approached Lincoln's wife, a key witness in a murder case, who was shopping at a market. Lincoln was surprised and angry when he saw Patricia there. He didn't like that Patricia interfered with his personal life. Wendy gave Ezekiel a ride and dropped him off at a garage. She said that the mechanic would repair his motorcycle and give him a ride back. In the night, Isaac and his crew broke into Angel's house, but they didn't find anyone there. In another place, Lincoln had an urgent meeting with Cody. Lincoln knew that Cody hated the Mayans because they had made her lose her job with the ATF and a man she loved. Because of that, he asked her to help him to take down the Mayans. Cody was interested when she heard that. She said that Ezekiel must die if she joined him and Lincoln agreed. After putting Maverick to bed, Felic went to set the table as he waited for Angel to return home. But suddenly, Isaac and his crew showed up in that place and opened fire. Felic rushed to the bedroom to take a gun from his drawer. After that, he attacked them back and managed to kill an attacker. Isaac and his crew then scrambled for cover and shot him in the stomach. Terry told Isaac that Angel was not there and they should leave. Isaac and his crew finally fled, leaving Felipe for dead when they heard the sirens. When Angel turned the corner to the street, he was confused and surprised to see many police officers and bystanders surrounding Felipe's house. He quickly got out of the car and took his son from a police officer. He was horrified when he saw some police officers carrying a body bag from Felipe's house. The next day, Angel, Ezekiel, and the Mayans were attending the funeral for Felipe. Surprisingly, Miguel also attended that funeral and offered his condolences to the Reyes brothers. Angel and Ezekiel were surprised to see him there and said that the funeral was only for friends and family. It seemed that they still had no idea that Miguel was their half-brother and Felipe was Miguel's biological father. Outside the church, Ezekiel was getting more surprised when he saw Lincoln there. In his usual bizarre way, Lincoln told Ezekiel that he thought that it was appropriate for him to come since he made Felipe a legal citizen of the U.S. But he summed up what he said by saying that no matter what we did in this life, one day we would be gone and forgotten. After that, Ezekiel returned to the clubhouse. He found Terry there and asked what he wanted from him. Terry said that he would tell them about what happened to Felipe. Then, Ezekiel stepped outside and greeted an army of Mayans, Grim Bastards, and Iron War who had been waiting for him. Turned out, they were going to have a final war on SAM and Dino that day. Ezekiel delivered a rousing speech to them before they headed to San Bernardino to finish them off for good. The three clubs finally arrived at San Bernardino and began to attack the building where SAM and Dino was attending a concert. They wounded and killed the members of the Sons of Anarchy in that place and forced some to quit the building. While the clubs were busy attacking the crowd, Ezekiel was looking for Isaac because he wanted to take revenge for the death of his friends and family. He finally found him at the back of the room and captured him. After beating him up and torturing him for a while, Ezekiel finally finished him off by shooting him in the head. After that attack, the clubs returned to the Santo Padre clubhouse. They burned the vests of the Sons of Anarchy and celebrated their victory. Despite successfully killing Isaac and attacking S.A.M. and D.I.N.O., Sando Pedro Charter thought that they still had one more problem. Trank and Gilly ordered Otero to kill a worker at their clubhouse who witnessed the murders of Diaz and Jinx that were committed by their fellow crew. That worker was named Cielo. At Ezekiel's trailer, Sophia took a pregnancy test. The results showed that she was pregnant with Ezekiel's baby. At the hospital, Marcus accompanied his wife during labor. He was happy when his son was born. In her office, Patricia was confident that she could destroy Lincoln because Miguel was with him. 
She said that Miguel would give his testimony that could destroy Lincoln's life and career. In the night, Otero came to the Cielo's house. Cielo was surprised to see him there. She somehow knew that Otero was there to kill her, so she stamped him with a knife first. Leticia came to see Louis and asked him to give her a gun. She said that she would use that gun to kill any Mayan whom she encountered. She was angry at the Mayans because they killed everyone she loved. Before leaving, Miguel told Emily that he would attend the court to give his testimony and said goodbye to her. Emily didn't care about him as she still held a grudge against him for murdering her sister. In his house, Bishop received a visit from Cody. Cody said that she wanted talk about Creeper's death. Ezekiel went for a ride with Angel. They cruised through the familiar streets of Santa Padre, past Philippe's butcher shop. Then, they went to an abandoned railroad bridge. In that place, Angel told Ezekiel that Adelita had left him and now he had to raise Maverick by himself. For that reason, he wanted to leave the club. He didn't want to end up dead in an alleyway or the freeway because he needed to live for his son. Ezekiel was speechless when he heard that, but he understood and said that he would take it to the table that night. Lincoln and Cody came to see Cielo, a woman who worked at Santo Padre Clubhouse. Cody said that Cielo was going to give testimony against the Mayans. At home, Emily asked Louis to put her son to bed upstairs. Before Louis took Cristobal from her arms, he left his gun on the table. After he left, Emily quickly grabbed his gun. Not long after that, Miguel returned home. Emily greeted him by aiming Louis's gun at him and shooting him in the chest. Miguel collapsed and died instantly because of that. Louis rushed downstairs when he heard the gunshot. He was shocked to see what happened and Emily suddenly killed him too. After that, she put the gun by Louis's hand and screamed as loud as she could. She wanted to make it look like Louis was the one who murdered Miguel and took his own life afterward. Apparently, it was the reason why she installed the security camera in that place. In her office, Patricia was angry when she found out that Miguel had been murdered. She threw her documents away and left the meeting room. At Santa Padre Clubhouse, Ezekiel and his crew had a meeting. Everybody attended that meeting except Otero. None of them knew where he was after Gilly and Trank sent him to take care of Cielo. Angel then told them that he needed to leave the club because he didn't want his son to lose him. He said that the club had been the best experience of his life. After that, Trank proposed that they invited Nestor to the club as the official member of the Mayans. Everyone agreed and called Nestor to the meeting room. Trank gave the flashes and rockers to Nestor and everyone rose to welcome and hug Nestor. But while Ezekiel was walking back to the chair, Gilly suddenly grabbed him from behind. Angel was also restrained as Bishop took out his gun and aimed it at Ezekiel's head. Turned out, the club had found out that Ezekiel was the rat who was working for the DEA. They also knew that Ezekiel killed Creeper. Bishop then aimed his gun at Angel for conspiring with Ezekiel, but Ezekiel said that Angel didn't know when he bought him into the club. Bishop told Angel that if he was really loyal to the club, then he needed to kill his brother. Ezekiel knew that his time had come. He told Angel that his son was waiting for him, and it was the only chance for him to be with him. He assured him that it was fine to kill him. Angel then cried as he stabbed his brother in the stomach. After that, the club took turn to stab Ezekiel until he dropped to the floor with his blood pouring onto the floor. He finally died after Nestor stamped him in the heart. Meanwhile, Bottles came to Ezekiel's trailer and shot Sophia to death. Afterward, Letitia came to Ezekiel's trailer and saw a blood trail there. She saw Ezekiel's dog and took it with her. After Ezekiel died, Bishop reclaimed his position as the president. He and his crew had a meeting to discuss about their business. Angel wasn't seen there since he decided to quit the club. Suddenly, the sirens were heard approaching that place. The heavily armed ATF agents attacked the clubhouse and killed all members of Santo Padre in the meeting room. Lincoln and Cody were waiting outside as they heard the barrage of gunshots echo throughout the clubhouse. Letitia finally decided to return to the Broken Saints. This time, she volunteered herself to join them, unlike the last time when she was sent by Isaac. At a beach, Angel was staring at the sea with his son. It appeared that he had the Mayans' tattoo on his back blacked out.